how the fuck did this happen? How did this average shy dude, arguably below average shy dude, get to this level? So we're going to go through my whole story, my whole journey, where I struggled, lessons learned throughout my journey, epiphanies I had. And um, first, I wanted to start with a little bit of background of me before I got into game. Probably like the first third of the lecture is just going to be from me, I guess, like since birth up until I got in the game. And then the two thirds or like second half of the lecture is going to be my journey through game exactly. So it's just going to be like my whole life experience to give you an idea of where I started from and everything I've encountered and lessons, struggles. Check your DM. Yeah, I heard that before. All right. So starting off, uh, born and raised in New Jersey. I'm 29. So I was born in 1990. Um, had a mother and dad and a younger sister growing up. Everything was pretty good in the household. My mom and dad fought a lot and my dad was an alcoholic. And then towards the age of like nine or 10, they split up. Up until 10 years old, I was, I was pretty normal through pre-K, first grade, all that shit. Um, pretty normal, fun, athletic kid. Um, uh, so I don't have too much memory of like ages one to 10, but pretty, pretty normal kid for the most part. And I was just like into sports and cartoons and shit and drawing. That was what I was into. And then basketball and baseball as well. And I trained a lot with my dad. He was the coach. He was the head coach for all my basketball teams and all my baseball teams. And he was like my best friend growing up. My, my role model, my best friend, my coach, pretty much everything. So at 12, uh, no, at 10, my mom and dad started really fighting a lot as my dad's alcohol and drug problems started getting worse and worse. He eventually moved out of the house. And after like getting several DUIs and like, getting arrested he was ended up in like a halfway house so from like 10 to age 12 he was no longer living in the house and like my idea of my parents marriage was kind of they fought they fought a lot you know if I think back to that age all I really I don't have too many memories of them actually being together too much and I'm telling you guys this because every person has their own experience of what uh their relationships with their parents were growing up or their guardian was. And that's very important because at a young age, you're so exposed to subconsciously what your own definition of what love is. For me, it, that's what it was. It was um, a, fa a mother and a father who fought a lot, screamed a lot. And half of the time, my dad was not there. And this is also important when you're talking to girls, you know, um, find out what their stories are, find out what their childhood was like, they're essentially going to tell you what their blueprint is of how they receive love. Because at such a young age, it is instilled in deep into your subconscious of this is what love is from your parent or your guardian. It's a huge part of the puzzle when you're trying to win over a girl. I can give you a couple of different examples. Girls that grew up that really uh, had a great, uh, their parents had a great marriage. They're typically going to be more good girl they're typically going to be um I, I guess normal if you would say i don't even know if that's the word like what, what the fuck is normal anyway at this point but like your standard good girl is what th that would be and but but to be honest that's actually less likely to happen because the, the divorce rate is so high and all of this other shit the majority of of women i end up hooking up with or dating long term uh actually i i don't think i'm i don't think i've ever dated somebody that was had like an amazing parent mother mother father relationship you know it's almost like at some point it either ended in a divorce or the girl is not living with them anymore she's living on her own um you know she, or or they just had a she was abused at a young age or she was abused by a relative or she was harassed by some other dude so the whole point that i'm trying to get here is when you're talking to a girl or even for yourself if you're trying to find out in yourself like Figure out what the, the mother-father relationship was, whether it's within yourself or if it's the girl that you were talking to and figure out what the childhood was like. And that's going to tell you a lot about how she, what her views are on what the ideal relationship is and how she receives love. All right. And then, so as the, the relationship between my mom and dad worsened and my dad's drug and alcohol problem got worse and worse, I started seeing him less. And then at age 12, 
while he was living in a halfway house, he actually passed away due to drug and alcohol overdose. I was young as fuck at the time. I don't know exactly what it was. I remember reading the toxicology report, not knowing what the fuck was, uh, like I was reading like the fucking medical names for all of this shit and there wasn't Google around or anything at the time. So I didn't even know what the fuck he was on, you know, like a bunch of different shit. And he was, he was a big time alcoholic. So it was a sudden death. It was very unexpected, pretty much lost the person that was the closest to me. I was, I was cool with my mom, but like my dad, you know, was my best friend and my coach. And I only really interacted with her, uh, you know, like in combination with my dad, obviously, you know, me and my mom didn't hang out too much just by ourselves. So when I lost my dad, it was like, we lost the centerpiece to the family. His side of the family had a shitload of uncles, uh, brothers and sisters. So all of my aunts and uncles, I instantly became disconnected from my mom's side of the family, very quiet and reserved. So I, not only did I lose my best friend and my father, I pretty much lost my intermediate family as well. I, I lost contact with all of my cousins. Um, essentially what happened is my dad's mom, my grandma started a war with my mother because they were trying to blame the, the death of my dad on my mom because she kicked him out of the house once the drug and alcohol problem got really bad. They had no one else to blame this and that. I don't want to bore you with all these details, but so I lost the person that was closest to me. I shut down emotionally, lost all my confidence. Um, up until that point, I was pretty decent looking in school. You know, like I, don't, I wasn't like the most popular kid in school. I was just like an average social athletic dude growing up. Um, but once that happened, I really, really, really closed down and I didn't go to therapy. I didn't talk to my mom about the death. I didn't talk to anybody about the death. I didn't go to school for a month. Um, I was, I really just shut down. And the way I, the way I fucking handled the death was I'm going to bury this pain so far down that I no longer have to deal with the pain. Cause when I'm young, I didn't know any better. So that was the way I handled it. I never went back to the graveyard. At that point, I didn't go back to the graveyard for like over a decade. Didn't talk to anybody about it. Just shut down. Didn't, didn't do anything about the death. Right. And then the next couple of years moving forward, my, I mean, naturally your confidence is going to go down. Naturally, you're not going to want to open up to anybody because think about it, the, the one person I opened up to the most I lost. So I was almost like punished for opening up and getting such a connection with somebody. Right. So I think on a deep level, I just, I really shut down and, and I lost a lot of my confidence after that. I stopped playing baseball because my dad, that was like my dad's favorite thing. So I stopped doing all of these things anyway. Um, so that brought me through middle school, started off in high school. I played one year of, of sports. I played one year of basketball freshman year. I was still somewhat social, but not really. I was starting to get more into video games. I was always into video games, but now I was starting to get into video games like even more. And like Halo came out and I think the first Call of Duty came out and I was just like, uh, Xbox Live just came out. So like after school, me and my friends would just go home and play Halo and I was just on Halo until like fucking bedtime. And then I would just go, go to sleep, wake up, go to school, come home, play Halo, bed. And it was like a cycle. So I wasn't really getting any social circle development at a young age I wasn't um I was very shy and unconfident and the reasons were you know I lost a very big part of me at a young age that I was still insecure about you know I, I think it took me a year after the death of my dad like I think for a, almost a year straight I think I cried every every day almost a year I, I think like I remember thinking like I wonder if there's ever going to be a day where I don't where I can think about the shit and stop crying and I'm pretty sure it took like about a fucking year um which is crazy to think about. But anyway, um, so all of that happened. High school started. And then it, it was as if like the video game addiction just started getting worse and worse and worse. Not that at the time it wasn't like a bad thing because I was really into it. But pretty much with me, guys, anything I've ever been into, anything I've ever been passionate about, I've done until I fucking dominated that thing. It's just like I get into something and I just push it and push it and push it and push it and just keep doing it until like it's completed, you know? And as you can see, it's kind of like that with game as well. Um, but point being is like, I've always had a passion. I, since, since my dad died and I didn't have a father figure, I learned at a young age how to teach myself everything. I didn't have a father figure. I didn't have a, a I, I wasn't in that strong of communication with my mom. So I learned 
I became a master student, self-taught master student. And that's what all of you guys need to do with this as well. If you're trying to get good at this, yes, I'm here to coach you. But at the end of the day, it's really on you to like internalize all of this stuff. You know, I can only do so much for you. It's really on yourself. Nobody brought me to this level of international dating coach. I put myself into this position. Okay, so at the end of the day, you could turn to me for all your questions and stuff, as I did with other guys as well. But at the end of the day, it is still on you, you know, and don't ever try to give yourself some fucking pass of like, well, you know, I'm just going to keep going to the lectures and naturally my game's going to get better. It's not like that. Like you do need to go out. Uh, Wilson's usually on these fucking lectures. And every time I talk to him, he's got some new uh, story of that, that went on in the last week. He's got some, like last week, he brought his fucking recorded uh, audio interaction of him trying to pick up this girl in the mall. And we broke down the, the interaction on the lecture after the recording was done. It's, it's shit like that that's going to get you to the next level, honestly. If you can't, and I'm not saying you need to go out and record yourself, but it's like, do you see that kind of drive that he has? That's the same kind of drive that I had and I still have. And if you, you got to be able to put that into your, into yourself, nobody's going to be able to instill that into you. The only person is me telling you right now that you need to instill it in yourself. Nobody even told me that it was naturally done due to not having a father figure. So, um, try, try to figure out where your own flaws are in pushing yourself. There, there's a certain point where that it comes down to figure out where your own flaw is and find a way to get past that. Or if you, at least if you know where it is, you could talk to me about it and we could kind of make a route of how to kind of like beat that down and, and surpass that, that surpass that aspect. Okay. So, um, video kept getting bigger and bigger into video games. Didn't talk to girls. My acne started getting bad, started eating junk food and I was starting to get a little I wouldn't say chubby, but I was not, I wasn't comfortable with my shirt off. I had no muscle I, throughout high school. I was like five, five, maybe, you know, freshman, sophomore, I was like five, five and like 160 pounds, 170 pounds, which is kind of chubby, not fat, but like, you know, not in a good athletic build either. Um, a little bit of attention from girls. And I, there was one girl that really liked me. That was like, I asked her out. I think this is freshman year before I started getting even bigger into video games and she agreed. And all that meant was like, we would go home from school and like talk on AOL instant messenger. Like we never went on a date, nothing happened from it. You know, um, <laughs> it was more just like, it wasn't even a girlfriend. Like I wouldn't even, I don't count that as a girlfriend. Honestly, it was, it was nothing. And, and after that, I just got bigger and bigger into the video games. And then I got huge into fucking world of Warcraft. And once that happened, I was like absolutely addicted, didn't leave the house. I don't know if you've ever seen that South Park episode where they make fun of like the World of Warcraft shit. But uh, if you have seen that, that was me. Exactly. Like literally fucking in my room 24 seven. And my acne got really bad to the point where like, I didn't even feel comfortable going to school. I was like, it was horrible. It was horrible. Thank God. After like two years towards the beginning of my senior year, World of Warcraft released an expansion. So everybody that had everything that I was working for was pretty much lost and everybody's like, uh, character got reset. Oh yeah. I do have a transformation big. I was supposed to gra uh, grab it. It's it. I'll go get it uh, later on. It's upstairs. Um, I got a picture of my senior year in high school. It's fucking, <laughs> I mean, I'm not fat, but like you could tell, I just look super beta and soft. Uh, remind me to go grab that in a little bit. Um, so yeah. Wow, World of Warcraft released this expansion, and in the process, I pretty much lost my character, and everything that I had been doing was lost. I spent like over 50 days played on this game. It might have even been 100 days played, um, and by days played, I mean 24 hours. So like 100 times 24 hours is like 2,400 hours, if you think about it, playing this game. Um, so lost all of that. And I was kind of forced to quit after that point because I was not about to reset all of that. Thank God, honestly. So I stopped playing that. Reconnected with a childhood friend who we separated at the beginning of high school. I reconnected with him senior year and he was the most popular dude at his high school. And this was my childhood best friend. So I started hanging out with him and he was super successful with women. I think at this point, he was like 17. He already fucked like 30 or 40 women. Um, he was six foot great athletic build, like the jock, Mr. Popular at his high school. 
And me, the only thing I had going for me was like, I was best friends with him from first grade to seventh grade. And now we're reconnecting senior year. But he's like on a, he's like on a fucking whole nother level. And I'm like the complete opposite dude. But we do have this friendship from way, way back. So we, we started hanging out. He started bringing me out. You know, he's telling me, he's like, dude, why? He's like, stop wearing fucking PJs to school, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like this and that, like, you know, giving me some, some tips on my style, giving me some like hand-me-down clothes, giving me like a little bit of presentable swag and starting to bring me out to parties and stuff. Up until this point, I had never drank. I had never gone out. I had never partied, never been social outside of, of school or sports or friends. So I, at this point, I was kind of being pushed into a social circle, uh, a little bit of pressure. You know, I remember him telling me like, oh, there's a house party tonight. It's Friday night. My boy's throwing a house party. And I would feel that fucking anxiety of like, I don't even want to go to this shit. I don't want to go to this fucking house party. I don't know anybody here. Like, what the fuck am I going to do here? I remember thinking that. And ah, oh, it's kind of like a horrible feeling in, in hindsight. But when you don't understand how social dynamics work and you don't understand male to female attraction and you don't understand any of this like i get why people don't want to go out you know i i get it i wouldn't want to go out either i didn't want to go out i really didn't um but i had a couple friends that were going out so i would just go out with them and kind of rely on them and stay social with them and through my best friend's popularity and through a couple other people i knew i would just slowly start to meet people you know because it's high school parties it's all it's all the same faces at these parties. So over time, I started to at least um, be n not popular, but I was like, you know, I was like a normal guy at a house party. Wasn't super social, wasn't successful with women, but I was like able to go out and just socialize when talked to. You know, I wasn't, I was not opening anybody. I was not, you know, close. I definitely wasn't closing anybody, um, but I was at least going out to a house party feeling nervous, getting drunk, and then, you know, talking a little bit, maybe grinding on a girl. If it was like a, a basement party where it's pitch black and everybody's just dancing and grinding, I, maybe I would do that. Um, so that's kind of how the beginning of my social transformation started a little bit. At this point, I'm like 18 years old. High school finishes. Um, oh, through, throughout senior year, I started to get a little bit more social. I'm not going to go super in depth with all this because I want to get more into the game stuff. But throughout senior year, I <clears throat> throughout senior year, I started to become more social. Started to become more social. Started working out too, which was a huge part of my development uh, in my confidence and my social skills. Um, and it's it's so much more than just getting muscle, dude. It, it's it's the point of following a uh, a routine, telling yourself you're going to do something, putting yourself in in an uncomfortable situation repeatedly until it is no longer uncomfortable. It's, it's actually very similar to game in a sense that you're going into an uncomfortable situation repeatedly until it's no longer uncomfortable and you're breaking down a muscle and that over time that muscle will build. And as it strengthens, your confidence in that situation will, will grow and grow and grow. If, you've, if anybody in here has become successful at going to the gym and you know what that process is like, learning game and getting good at game is very similar to that process. And ideally, you combine them into one. And if you watched my previous lecture on pickup at the gym, I literally combined them into one. So um, it, it all, for me, it all started out with fitness. I started going to the gym. I got into the gym because one of my biggest insecurities was like, I couldn't take my shirt off. I was still chubby. Um, and as I started to see self-improvement, that was really what sparked my interest in developing myself. I realized I can change my look. You know, I didn't, at this point, I didn't really know I could change my social skills, but I knew I could change my look. So I started working out. I always had this urge to want to get better. I just, I really never knew how, and I had no guidance on any of it, you know? So it was always self-taught through trial and error. And it started out at the gym. So if everybody here is struggling. Like if you're at an absolute beginner level with pickup and, and all of these things, I strongly suggest you also combine going to the gym and working out because it's more than just putting on muscle. Although, you know, muscle will lead to more confidence. It'll ultimately lead to more, more physical attraction from women, which will also boost your confidence. It'll also teach you um, the, the, the discipline, which is also required to learn game. Game takes a lot of discipline. It takes putting yourself, you know, it's those days where you don't want to fucking go and you're tired 
and you're antisocial and you got no energy, but you know that you still need to fucking go, you know, and it's the same shit with game. It's really the same exact thing with game. So if you're, if you're starting to learn game, I would also encourage you guys to go to the gym as well. <clears throat> so I started going to the gym, started becoming decently attractive. Um, I wasn't a stud, but I, it was the first time in my life I had started getting noticed by women, if that makes sense. Not that I, not that I had girls like crushing on me crazy or anything like that, but it was the first time I ever, it was the first time in my life where I walked around and actually was like, wait, what the fuck was that? Like a girl gave me some kind of indicator of interest, whether it was just eye contact or like a smile or whatever. I had never seen that before. I didn't know what the fuck it was, you know? So that was, um, it was exciting. It was exciting to see that. And it's addicting when you get that, just like how Brennan was saying, I think before, right before I started recording this lecture, how he was saying that he went out and he had this good vibe and he noticed that the world was starting to treat him somewhat differently. And he liked that feeling. It's an addictive feeling, especially once you realize you can keep increasing that feeling and you start to see that feeling increasing, it gets addicting to the point where it's like, I want more of that. It's almost like validation in a sense, you know? Um, and, and it just keeps going and keeps going and you want more and more and more. Um, I'm not saying you're gonna develop some like validation addiction, because that's not what it is. It's more of like a healthy addiction. It's, it's in the same sense of like, if you were to eat healthy and go to the gym and now you're feeling great, it's like you want that good feeling to, to intensify even more and you want to keep it there. And anytime you stray from it, although you may, you know, occasionally I eat bad food. Of course I eat bad food. You know, I was out last night. I probably had one too many drinks. I wasn't blacked out drunk, but I probably had, you know, I woke up this morning. I was like a little, I was a little out of it. And, you know, I'll, I'll do that from time to time. But, you know, 80%, 90% of my, my lifestyle is very on point because I like feeling fucking awesome. I love feeling awesome. I love feeling social. I love just walking around, even if I haven't approached anybody for the day, and I'm just walking around with like, I'm the fucking man, and I know I'm the fucking man. It's a great, it's a great feeling to have. Um, and like I said, it is addicting to the point where when you're out and you're no longer feeling that, it's like you want to do what it takes to get back to that point. And not only do you want to get back to that point, you want to get past that point. You're like, who is somebody that's at a slightly higher point than me? And how can I get like that? And you'll notice that the people you start hanging out with are either of your caliber or on that caliber. And it's, it's almost like the friends that I grew up with weren't going in that direction. And I started to disconnect from my social circle growing up. The, the kids that I were in high school with and um, you know that I grew up with from middle school to high school, it's almost like I slowly started disconnecting from them because they weren't on the same path as me they weren't it, it, here's the thing guys if you guys are getting in a game there's only gonna be like maybe five percent of guys out there that you're really really gonna connect with on a deep level i'm not saying i only hang out with five percent of guys in reality i probably connect with like 20 percent of dudes you know but like that's only because the, that 20 percent brings me benefits in the long term you know like they like to go out and be social maybe they but they really just like to go out and party and get drunk you know but that means that they really like to go out and go to these venues so i like to go out and go to these venues too do i get as drunk as these guys no do i do cocaine no you know but it's better than me just going out alone because i won't have the desire i i it's not sustainable long term like I'm, I'm not just gonna go out alone every night you know it's not it's not fun it's, it's like fucking training and over time you're going to burn out. So find people that you have fun with. You don't need to agree with every decision that they're doing, but you have their interests are aligned with your goals. They may not have the same goal, but their interests are aligned with your goals. You know, that could mean they like to go out. It doesn't matter what they do when they're out, but if they like to go out and you like to go out, you know, these are people that I would hang out with as long as, as long as they're not pissing me off, you know, and as long as they're not getting me in trouble and they're attractive and, you know, they're either, they're willing to learn game or they're already decent looking. I'll go out with them, you know, cause there's a benefit to, to that. Or 
I meet people at the gym. The kid, uh, just before the, and I went to work today and then my friend took me, uh, we went to go get food. This is a kid that I met at the gym. So college circle, uh, Nick says, yeah, my college circle is so lazy and unmotivated and I've been aware of it, except they all have game. Um, they all have game, but they're lazy and unmotivated. So they're probably just like naturally social and they probably just have like some clout at the college. I'm thinking is, is probably what it is. They're probably just connected maybe via frats or they're just good looking dudes and that'll happen. But like he said, they're all, unmo he said they're all unmotivated and he's been aware of it. So it's like, you're aware of the fact that you get, your goals aren't necessarily aligned. However, their interests are aligned with your goals at certain times, you don't need to be with them all the time, but you know, when Friday night comes around, Saturday night comes around, give them a call, you know, during the week or, or, you know, if they like, if you know, a lot of these college kids are fucking alcoholics. So like, if you know, they typically know what the fuck's going on Wednesday night, Thursday night, if you want to go out and game those nights as well, or you want to go out and be social and start working on your social circle through these kids, you can meet more people and ultimately you'll meet more women as well. So all good things to, to incorporate. However, again, like he said, he's aware of it, meaning he knows that there's a certain time and place to be with these kids and he's not going to spend all his time with them. The only people I'm chilling with right now is I'm chilling with them when it's aligned with my goal. I'm very rarely, I would say this throughout high school and college, I would hang out with friends that we would just hang out and do nothing. Like literally we would chill on the couch, smoke weed, play video games or smoke weed, watch YouTube. And it, it brings no fucking benefit, you know, at, at least if you're going to do that, watch some, some pickup, you know, or, or, or watch something where you're learning from at the very least. But, you know, like, especially in college, it's common to just get high and, uh, you know, play video games or, or really just do nothing social media. You know, um, I noticed that, as I've gotten older and older, my, my unproductive time is very low. It's like, it's almost like my unproductive time is when I'm literally just chilling, watching lectures and, and like, you know, my bullshit time is now me studying pickup and theory and game and social dynamics and female psychology, or me studying branding and business and advertising and marketing or whatever, whatever it is that like, that's my downtime now, you know? I'm never just bullshitting at my boy's house. So if you're bullshitting at your boy's house and you absolutely, you know, every, every now and then you want to do that, still align it with your goal. Do it with somebody where you could talk to about your goals, you know, somebody that's also in a game as well. Anyway, it's a little off topic, but um, I guess it's kind of relevant. So started going to college. Uh, my first year of college, I commuted at this point. Oh, okay. So throughout senior year, uh, became a little bit more social, especially towards the end of the year. Once my fitness was really starting to get better as I graduated, I was in pretty good. Uh, I was actually at a pretty good physique and it was to the point where I had made enough friends at these other parties that I threw like two house parties of my own. And I didn't really know that many people, but my friends were super social and they filled up the house for me. So I remember I threw a really big party, but it was actually unintentionally like my friends filled up the fucking house and my house got trashed but I kind of slowly started to become the man at, at that point like I remember walking into school the next week and like I was getting attention that I had never gotten before and that was like my first glimpse of like social circle and even though at the time I didn't even think it was necessarily a good thing in hindsight like there was such a, a lane that could have been developed from that that I never really exploited um but from that, I probably gained a little bit of interest from a couple of women and I hooked up with the, I ended up fucking the first girl I ever fucked like the end of my senior year. And it was one time in the backseat of my Jeep at the time that I was driving. It was like my mom's Jeep, but it was also my Jeep. Um, picked her up one night from a party and like just parked in a fucking parking lot somewhere and like put the backseat down in the fucking Jeep and fucked her for like one minute, <laughs> literally like one minute nutted she left the car and then like i never even hooked up with her again and that was like how i lost my virginity but i remember being so excited i fucking called my boy uh ended up driving his house because it was so late i couldn't go back home i told my mom i was staying out go end up staying at my boy's house i got there i was like dude i fucked i fucked blah 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 and uh and then from there 
I think I hooked up with like one other girl that year. I didn't fuck, I didn't fuck anybody else that year. Um, senior summer came around and then I went away for my first year of college. Started off at the new college and my roommates were stoners and I kind of just fell into the same frame as them. Started getting, started smoking a stupid amount of weed high all day, every day. Um, the entire fall semester and spring semester and didn't, I think I went to like two house parties. There was kids down the hall of my dorm that were so social and fucking cool. And I remember them in, I remember it was like the first day of, um, of college or like second day right after moving day they knocked on our door and like they opened us and they came into our dorm and were super social and they were like yo we're going to this party tonight you guys should come by to our dorm we went over there they they poured us shots like dude they were playing the social circle like perfectly i don't know who the fuck they were watching <laughs> but uh well i guess they weren't watching anybody because youtube wasn't even out yet but um they had it on point and it showed and it showed because there was a girl in the dorm that I really liked, this girl, Skylar. And I remember this dude ended up fucking her like two months later. And I was like, damn, bro, how the fuck did he, like, how did he pull that off? This bitch is so hot. But in hindsight, like, he was the fucking man. He had the whole dorm building in his control. And if I was his age right now with my mind, that's who I would be. And it, it like, it goes, it all just goes back to my, the video about how to game at college. He literally did everything I explained to a T, like perfectly. I mean, maybe not perfectly, but uh, for a 19 year old at college, yes, he, he did it very well. And, and, and the results spoke for themselves. Meanwhile, I was like down the hall with two stoners and we made friends with the other stoners on the floor. And I had a lot of fun. I made, you know, friends with these guys. But in terms of self-development, personal growth, and success with, success with women, pretty much non-existent. Pretty much non-existent. I didn't fuck anybody while I was away at college. Yeah, I didn't fuck anybody while I was away at college. The, the entire year. Probably went to three or four house parties throughout the course of fall and spring semester. And I spent a lot of time commuting back home and staying home, partying with my friends, going to house parties and stuff was getting very big into the gym while I was away at college was starting to put on some muscle, but I was also starting to get a little chubby. Like I almost in hindsight, I wish I would have just stayed as lean as I was when I graduated, which is almost as lean as I am now. And even though I would have been kind of scrawnier, I would have just gradually put on muscle. Right. So women aren't a tr guys. Like everybody goes to the gym because they think women are attracted to muscle, but guys, they're not. There are like, look at models. Models are not jacked. Women are not obsessed with Jay Cutler and Phil Heath and Kai Green. Like I've never heard a girl told me she's into these guys. Not one woman has ever told me she, she's like, oh my God, like Kai Green. Like he's got like seven muscles on his tricep. It's just, I, I, I get so wet when I look at him. It, they, uh, you know who they obsess over? Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber is who keeps them up at night or Brad Pitt in fight club who weighed 150 pounds, but he was, a, he was 5% body fat in that movie. If you look at him, like he was lean as fuck. That is what is attracted. That's what girls get attracted to. So like right now, my goal is like, I'm just getting as lean as possible. If you look at some of my older videos, maybe not on the lectures, but if you look at like my first my weight kind of fluctuates, but I'm down. I'm at the lightest I've ever been since like I was maybe 13. Literally, I'm at the lightest I've ever been. I'm at like 162 pounds and I have more muscle than I've ever had. But what's more important to me right now is just being as lean as possible. And why is that dude? It's all about like the jawline, the facial structure, um, like, like this shit, bro. Like you want to be able to wear like a low cut V and like a V neck and like show this shit like it, this is what is attractive to women honestly when you when you can be well presented it's not that i'm so fucking jacked it's more about the leanness and that was something i didn't start to realize until like three four years ago so in my early college days i was just so focused on just being buff as fuck and i was like dude once i'm jacked i'm gonna be so masculine every bitch is gonna want me and in hindsight it's just it's not true it's not true at all um colin says when you spit game to guys and girls, is it usually calibrated and just subconsciously used towards your benefit? 
For example, when you try to open up a girl, do you have those thoughts in the back of your mind about what to do kind of like your infields or is it just natural for you to understand her interest level and what to do to escalate to her? Um, it's kind of a weird question. Um, it's not weird. Uh, when you try to open a girl, do you have those thoughts in the back of your mind about what to, okay. So it all goes, yeah. What, I mean, dude, watch the infield. I just dropped today as well. And, and, and watch all the infields. You'll see, I, I kind of explained my, my mindset, but my mindset wasn't always like that. When I was learning game, I don't even want to jump into this yet. Cause I'm about to get into like my learn, my learning process of game and where I struggle. This is all, this is all like, my life before game just to show you guys where I'm coming from you know and once you can see where my mindset was going into game it'll give you uh, it's all going to come together as the lecture keeps progressing so Colin I'm actually going to hold off on your question um but let's just keep going because we're almost at the point where I start getting into game <sighs> finished college was was the bulkiest I've ever been I was 198 pounds I've been trying to find a picture of myself I can't find a fucking picture of myself but dude I was big and I was a little chubby. I still looked like jacked, but I was so fat. I was like me right now with 30, an extra 35 pounds of fat, you know? So like, it's not sexy. It's not sexy. So look guys, I mean, if you want to get stronger, I understand that. But, but honestly, what's, if your main goal is to attract women and you're trying to look, work on your look, like being lean and having like a low body fat percentage, like a movie star body fat percentage, is a great goal to, to, to strive for if you're trying to like work on your body towards attracting women. Okay. And, and then a little bit of muscle as well. But, but like I said, dude, these girls are obsessing over fucking Justin Bieber and Tyga and Lil, not, not so much Lil Wayne anymore, but you know, there's always that next dude, whoever the fuck it is right now. I, I, don't, I don't know who's hot at the moment, but you know, anyway. Um, so that, that was me. In, <laughs> so that was me in college. And then that was my first year of college. I dropped out of the school I was, I was going away to because I was doing shit. I was smoking a lot of weed. Ended up coming back to community college. Got my grades together. Stopped smoking. And I was still smoking a lot, actually. But um, I was becoming a little bit more social. Not successful with women yet, but I was becoming a little bit more social. So uh, I, I started commuting to my community college. And at the same time, I started going out a lot more with my social circle, who it was regular. At this point, we were 20, 21. So we were going to a lot of house parties, and then we started going to the bars when we were 21. So it was regular that Friday and Saturday night, we would get drunk at a pregame with like 10 of us guys, and you know, a couple guys would bring their girlfriends, and we would just go out as a group of like 10 people to the bars, and we would socialize between our group. And then everybody's drunk. So you got 10 drunk people, guys and girls. Naturally, there's going to be more people drawn into the crowd throughout the course of the night. And you end up meeting random people and reconnecting with old friends from your town. You know, so I, I started becoming a little bit social through alcohol. Yes, through alcohol. Some people, so a lot of these dating coaches are like, don't drink. You know, RSD is very big into like sober lifestyle, completely sober. Don't ever eat a fucking potato chip. You know, like all of this shit. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that because like, I mean, look, it's good. If you're, if you're going out to do a day game session, I'm not encouraging you to drink beforehand. I'm really not, but I'm just saying alcohol was honestly a step in the process. Like I wouldn't have been able to, to take that initial step had I not have had a little bit of liquid courage in my system sometimes, you know, honestly, that, that's the honest truth. You know, I, like, had I not have gone to those pregames and gotten drunk with my friends, I would have never gone out. I would have never gone out. Um, that doesn't mean I wouldn't have ever been successful with women, but the way I learned, I'm just saying from my experience, and I'm just telling you guys my experience, I learned through drinking a little bit and going out. And that's how, this is before I was learning anything about game. This is just how I was um, becoming social and how I ended up attracting my first girlfriend. I went out with these guys and a couple girls, and like I said, my one friend, the social kid that started bringing me out, his name was Justin. He started bringing me out a lot. Every Memorial Day weekend, he would book. He was like the alpha of the group. He was the leader of the group. He would always plan the, the weekend. He would always plan the, the party coming up for Memorial Day. He would tell us like what we're going to do for New Year's. He was the leader. So uh, Ben, 
your initial question before we started recording was how do you become more masculine? And I told you it goes back to incorporating it into your entire life. It is not only when you just flip a switch when you're with these girls, it's your entire life. I don't just, how, how do I lead girls so well? And how do I become like so suggestive with pulling and stuff? Like, dude, that's what I do with my friends too because I've embodied those characteristics into my entire lifestyle. It's like, you just become all around masculine. It's not like, again, you just don't flip the switch when the girl's there. It's like, you gotta learn to just take the lead and start becoming suggestive about doing an activity. Stop waiting on other people, stop following other people, start learning to take the lead. And because here's the thing, dude, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. If you're studying game, you will at least know you'll know more than more than everybody. Isaac, what's good, homie? Welcome to the, welcome to the lecture. Um, so yeah, here's the thing. If you're just fucking, if you're just so passive and you're not following anybody uh, and you're following people, you're never going to be that dominant guy. Like Ben, start being the leader in your friend group. Start being the leader in your friend group. Every, everybody here that chills with friends, like there's, there comes a time when the group, uh, like, unites to figure out what's going to go on for the evening or like you know if you guys are in a group chat with a couple of your buddies or something like yo what's the wave for friday dude you fucking take the lead and tell the group what's going to happen that night you you like get it ready figure out through uh social media through like a couple girls you met beforehand like have something lined up and just be su suggestive and act like it's going to be a good time because because here's the thing nobody fucking knows what really is the wave for the weekend, you know? So like, but if everyone's asking what's the wave and you're the dude that's like, yo, I know four girls that are already going to, um, to Iron Bar and, and, and like three of them are cute. We should, you know, I'm feeling the one, we should go there, let's go there. Or I'm gonna go there, you guys should come. You see how like suggestive that is? If they don't have other plans, which most of them don't, if they're reaching out, asking what's going on and you're already the leader, they're gonna follow. They're going to follow. Anytime I go out, I'm the fucking leader. I mean, now it's just stupid because of my channel. You know, it's like, obviously, everybody's looking towards me about what to do. But even before the channel, um, it's like, just, you got to just start becoming the fucking leader in all. Or how do you become masculine? You start living a masculine lifestyle. Like, it's like, uh, your, your real question is, how do I give myself permission to always be masculine? That's really what the question is. And what I'm telling you is, you don't need to seek permission from me. You seek permission from within. So it starts with you tonight or tomorrow morning saying like, look, I'm going to make an active, a proactive decision to live a dominant masculine lifestyle. As soon as you start acting like that towards the world, the world will start treating you differently. That's all it is. Yeah, everyone thinks like, everyone's like waiting for something to happen for them to to do it. It's like, oh, well, once I have 100,000 subscribers, I'll officially have arrived as a pickup coach, you know, or like, it's like, at what point have, am I a pickup coach? You know, like I started the YouTube or like, if you looked at me six months ago and I had 150 subscribers, what was really that much different than me right now? Why do I have like, like, at what point did I become a fucking dating coach? Nobody gave me the fucking permission. There was no milestone that was hit where I was like, I've arrived. I'm officially a dating coach. I am from this moment forward. I am now masculine. You know, it was never like that. It was, it, it just started with my day to day decisions. Okay. So this, to, to go back to your question, it, it start. it wasn't 150 subs. It was just me with dummy accounts. <laughs> Actually, yo, my first 100 were dummy. They weren't dummy accounts, but they weren't true fans actually um but that's a whole side story um i'm not gonna jump into that too much but um okay so let's get back on track graduate college uh started commuting to college started going out with my friends socially becoming social drinking on the weekends um developing a decent little friend group you know um developing a, a decent little friend group Mouth dry as fuck. Um, okay, so what happened from there? So we started going out. Oh yeah, my my best friend Justin was was 
the leader of the group. So Memorial Day weekend comes around. He says, I, I booked a fucking, I booked an Airbnb. It wasn't even Airbnb. Yet. It wasn't around yet, but essentially he booked an Airbnb for 10 people, guys and girls to, to party Memorial Day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday down the shore. And he had already had three girls that were going to go. He invited like six or seven guys, our, our close group of guys. And then, you know, anybody else that wanted to come was allowed to come as long as they pitched in. This is something you can do. This is something that can easily be done. As long as you're going out and approaching people, like you should be at meeting at least a couple new people a week. And I'm not saying that they're going to be your best friends, but like if you're out, if you're going out once, twice a week and you're social those nights and you're, you're exchanging Instagrams and, and you follow up message these people, even if it's not romantically, like, there's no reason why you can't have a little bit of a following. And then anytime that there's a little event, it shouldn't be that hard to just send a mass DM inviting a bunch of people that you've been friends with, offering some value and, and suggesting that they come to this place. You know, that's something that can be done for you guys. You can incorporate that into your own life. Okay. So he did that. Um, we went out two weeks before that. I ended up seeing this girl that had a crush on me and I hadn't seen her in like five years. And now, I was starting to become confident. I was really starting to become a little confident. And she had a crush on me in like fifth grade, right? She wasn't attractive at the time, but we already graduated high school. I haven't seen her in five, six years. This girl got hot, you know? And, and since she wasn't attractive in like fifth or sixth grade, like I never showed her interest either. So I was always like out of her reach through like middle school and shit. And now we're 19, now we're like 20 years old. And we reconnect. And honestly, at the time, like, she's actually arguably out of my range at this point, in my opinion. Um, but I saw her. We, we kind of vibed for, like, five minutes. I was drunk, so, like, I was just talking to her socially. And at the end of it, I, I met her and her friend. I was like, you guys should come to Justin's uh, Memorial Day weekend house this weekend, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I, I took some initiative and invited her to come to the Memorial Day weekend house. We exchanged phone numbers. She decided she was going to come. She showed up with her friend. And the second night we were there, we started making out at the end of the night. We all got drunk at the end of the house party. And I don't remember what happened, but we ended up starting making out. And I had my own room in the, the Airbnb. So she spent the night with me in, the Airbnb, in that bedroom. And we did not fuck. And sex was totally there in hindsight. I just never escalated. Like, we literally just made out for like an hour and a half with her like on top of me, dry humping me. And I didn't have the balls to like, or knowledge to escalate to sex. So I just had this girl on top of me making out with me. And at one, at no point did I ever try to like take off her shirt, take off her pants, do anything like that. Cause in my mind, I had never even really been in that position. The only time I had sex was like with this one girl and Honestly, like she was more down for it than I was. So like we just got into the back seat and she just got naked and like, you know, I'm fucking 18 at the time. I just put a condom on and put it in, you know. And she was like soaking wet. So like I didn't I didn't really learn anything from that, you know. It was just like I just lost my virginity to lose my virginity. Um so now I have this girl that I'm actually into and we're making out in my bed. I don't know how to escalate. I'm like nervous. I'm going to try to take off her bra and not know what the fuck to do. Actually, I had no idea how a bra even worked, so I didn't even try to take off the bra. I didn't even try to take off the shirt. I didn't even take off her pants, nothing. You know, we ended up just making out and making out and eventually we passed out. And then the last night we were there, she stayed in my bed and the same thing happened. Never escalated it past making out and dry humping. Weekend ends, we exchanged phone numbers. We had a really good connection too. It wasn't like I knew game or anything. We just had to, there will be women that you will meet that you just naturally have a good connection with from time to time. So, uh, we hooked up, exchanged phone numbers. The next week, we texted a couple. Probably we, we probably texted a lot. I don't I don't remember honestly. This is like almost nine years ago. Um, but I set up a date for us to go out to eat the the following Saturday, and I remember I was so fucking nervous because I had never been on a date. I was like, I don't know what the fuck a date even entails. Like, where do I go? What do we do? This and that. Blah 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 blah. Like. I, I knew nothing about it. She lived in my town. She lived like five minutes away from me. I didn't know what the fuck to do, but I, I suggested we go to eat at this spot that I knew that was like, ironically, it was actually really close to both of us. So the logistics just 
happened happened to work themselves out. She agreed. So this is like Tuesday. And there was this chubby girl. Up until this point, there was this chubby girl that was really into me um, that we that I had been making out with before any anything happened that past weekend. There was this chubby girl that I made out with a, a bunch of times. Um, like probably like in the month before that. But since I had this date lined up for Saturday, I was so nervous about it that I invited the chubby girl to hang out with me at my house the night before. Cause I was like, I want to fuck this chubby girl the night before to like have sex again before I meet the girl that I'm like really wanting to see. Right. So Friday night comes uh, chubby girl comes through. We start making out. We lead up to sex. We actually have sex. And it was actually, we fucked like three times. It was actually pretty good sex. So at that point, it was like, well, it was only like my second or third lay. Uh, probably like my, I don't even know. Honestly. It was probably like my second or third lay at this point. But it was like the best sex I had up until that point. Prior to that, everything was just like one minute lay and then never talked to the girl again. This girl like stayed over and we had like three, four rounds and I actually like got an understanding of what it's like to like kind of fuck a girl. And this was the day before me meeting up with this girl for the date. So I actually had a little bit of momentum going into the date, ironically. Even though I knew nothing about game, I was somewhat smart enough to think about, like, let me build a little bit of social momentum. You know, I guess it was just because I was so fucking nervous going to the date. Like, I wouldn't have been able to face her had I not have done this, like, right before. You know, and if that's how you guys feel, too, by all means, do that, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I've, I've fucked a... Sh- I have fucked a lot of girls that are not as attractive as me. I am, I will be the first one to admit that. And that is, I, I see no shame in that because honestly, who the fuck is laughing now? Who is laughing now? Motherfucker, right? <laughs> Nobody. So in those moments, you could be like, oh dude, he's leaving with this fucking chubby bitch. Whatever, bro. Like I'm thinking long-term perspective. If I want to, if I, me personally, I was not in a position where I felt comfortable approaching or fucking a hotter girl. And for me to gain my confidence and to truly build up that confidence, I did it through a shitload of reference experiences. Okay. So even before I knew anything about game, this was instinctually in my mind. So fuck the fat girl, pick up uh, the girl that I'm into. We go on a date. Um, yeah. So we go on a date. I pick her up. We go out to eat. Vibe was really good. And we ended up going back to my house. I don't know how or why it wasn't for drinks. I like, I really don't remember what it was, but cause I wasn't 21. I couldn't, I couldn't buy alcohol. I think I was still 20. Maybe I was 21. I don't know. Um, we ended up back at my house and now this time I told you we had been making out for hours the, the, the previous weekend for two nights in a row. So this time now we're in my bed, we're making out and I had just fucked the night before I had enough confidence I, I, while we were making out, I fucking took off her shirt, took off her pants, pulled down her panties, went down on her, put on a condom, fucked her, had sex with her, laid in bed with her, vibed with her. I told you, we already had a really good connection at this point. So we hung out, we had sex again, and then I dropped her off. I then proceeded to hang out with this girl the next 28 days in a row, which is kind of crazy if you fucking think about it. Talk about clingy. (laughs) I mean, she was down too. And like, she was a really cute girl. Actually, I can actually, you want to see what she looks like now? I think honestly, I don't even think she's as attractive uh, right now as she was. Um, Me personally, I think she peaked at around, I don't know. I'd probably say she peaked at like 24, 25. Um, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. <laughs> Let me see if I can find a good shot. There was one shot in particular I really liked. What the fuck is it? Um, uh, I don't know if I want to put this girl on the, on the fucking Patreon. Actually, I don't give a fuck. Um. <laughs> so i haven't seen this going along i actually haven't gone on her page in a long time so i'm like kind of fucking um okay this is her right now i think she actually looked better um when i was with her but this is her right now this is her right now i, I think she's about to turn 30 so that's her right now um actually do i have any pictures of her when she was with me i don't fucking know 
Actually, let me go back to my Facebook. I'll check the fucking 6.5 to 7 somewhere in there. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if she was done up, I'd probably say she's like a 7.5. That was, I, was, I wouldn't say that was like her best pick. Let me see if I have a picture of us from like back in the day. Um, I'm, going through, I'm going through my Facebook from like fucking 2009 right now. Actually, you guys want to see me from fucking 2009? This is me. Actually, yeah, I should have been showing this the whole time, actually. Um, okay, so this is, this is, I mean, this is, this is pictures are from 2009. So fucking, uh, it's going to be a little bit blurry, but like, this is me, 2009. You can see I look a little bit chubbier. I'm chilling with Brandon Jacobs from the Giants, the running back. Um, and you can see, you can see, you can see in my face, I look a little bit chubbier, but you can also see my arms and shit. I look, I look pretty built. You know, I'm looking like a young Brandon Jacobs right there. Um, let me see as I got a little bit older. Here's me Here's me with some girl that, uh, this is me in 2009. You can see my hair is already starting to fucking go, you know. This is me 10 years ago. Uh, so there's that. I'll show you. I'll show you. I want to I go get you guys my high school pick because that's really like some embarrassing shit. These are the kids I fucking partied with. This is like us at like a fucking, this is, this is literally a decade ago. That's me right there. So this is us when we were going out. I was starting to get into fitness at this point. You could tell, uh, look, we're just a bunch of fucking regular ass dudes getting drunk and going out, you know, like fucking nothing, uh, nothing crazy here. Um, yeah, I don't have too many. I, I don't, I guess I don't have any pictures of it. Are we, oh, oh, here we go. This is her. This is us. This is 2013, so this is probably towards the end of the relationship. Um, she looks better. I think she looks better here. That's us. This is like, you know. So, like I said, I, arguably, I thought she was out of my league for like me not knowing like shit about game. This is me as I'm starting to get like better looks and stuff. How old am I now? I'm 29. I'll be 30 in April. Um, so this is 2013. So I was 23. Yeah, this is this is me at. Like I said, that's me at 23. That's her at 23 as well. She looks good here. Honestly, like I was walking out with this girl and I was like, I'm out with one of the hottest girls, you know, and, and I had an amazing connection with her. Like I was, I was happy. I was like showing her off type shit. I was on some like ego trip. When does the lecture end? Got to go to sleep. Omed, um, lecture is not ending for at least an hour, probably later. I, yeah, it'll, it'll be on. The lecture will be up. When you wake up, just go to Patreon. The lecture will be uploaded up there. How tall am I? I am five nine. I'm like, I would say five eight and a half if I'm completely barefoot. Maybe five. I honestly I haven't measured myself. I would have shown her off too. Um, yeah, she wasn't that attractive when we first started hooking up at like twenty, and then throughout the next couple of years, I got really big into fitness. She, I kind of started getting her to work out a lot, and then we both kind of went up like a point or two, and now. Um, well, let's just take it from there. So we started hooking up. We hooked up 28 days in a row. Something something stupid like that. Um, yeah, and I, to your comment, Isaac is, Isaac is jacked, and he does need to put his shirt on. Um, <laughs> I'm getting distracted over here. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> uh, no wonder that bitch wants you at your job, bro. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me just read the comments real quick. You were sprung 28 days. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, dude, it wasn't that I was, like, so horny. It was more like this was the first girl I actually had a connection with ever. You know what I'm saying? Um, Brandon says 6.5 to 7. I think when we first started hooking up 7, I'd say at her peak, like, which was probably around those pictures, probably she probably even looked a little bit higher than that. At some point, maybe, like, 8.5. And in my mind, at that time, personality was close to a 10 because we had already been dating for four years, uh, three three years, actually. Personality was very, very like I for at that time, personality was like maxed out. Looks were very high. Um, I was super satisfied, and thus that's why I was in a relationship with her still. Isaac Big uh, Nick says Isaac's big as shit. I agree. Kyle says, Oh Lord, that beard doing you favors. What beard? Oh, now maybe? I don't know. I, I didn't have a beard up until like 26. Look like a totally different dude now. Yeah, I want to go get my high school pick. I I should have brought it down here, bro. I was thinking about that before the lecture. Uh, Matthew said, how old am I? Lecture yeah, so Omed, lecture ends. He'll already be off already. 
I'll tell him, uh, yeah, five eight and a half, maybe five nine. And then when I go out, I wear like these Chelsea boots that add another like inch and a half. So like in the club, I'm like five ten and a half, maybe. Isaac's blaming it on the pump. And now he's showing us his fucking protein meal, bro. We don't give a fuck. I'm trying to lecture over here, bro. <laughs> This is the part where everyone that's watching the recording is going to complain that the playback isn't at, like, 1.5 speed. So let's get back into it. Um, we start hooking up 28 days in a row. What happens after that? Over the course of the next two years, it gets pretty stagnant. I, I, you know, after six months, I made her my girlfriend. I was never in a rush to make her my girlfriend. And it wasn't that I wasn't, like, obsessed with her. And it wasn't that I was hooking up with other girls. And I was like watching alpha male strategies and you know not fucking avoiding over pursuing or anything like that i dude i was pursuing the fuck out of this girl she was equally pursuing me though it was just like we were in love you know um i guess the reason i didn't ask her out though was because i had no fucking confidence to i couldn't ask her to be my girlfriend literally i could not ask this girl to be my girlfriend could not admit to her that I loved her, could not do anything like that for six months. And then finally, the way I did it was on her birthday. Her birthday was six months later. And in the birthday card that I wrote her, at the end of it, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And I said, I love you. In the birthday card. Because I literally couldn't say it myself. I had to write it in the fucking card. And not only that, I had to get drunk as fuck on her birthday with her to even give her the card and read her the card. You know what I'm saying? And, and even before that happened, some kind of, I remember some kind of like fight broke out that night between us, like an argument, uh, happened, some kind of argument happened or some shit, you know? And, but anyway, it ended up like, we got really emotional. We were both drunk as fuck. I was crying. She was crying. I don't even know why, but you know, like, like I said, dude, I was like, I, don't know, I was like 21 at this point, maybe 20. I don't know. I think I was 20 at this point. Um, yeah, ended up asking her. She ended up being my girlfriend. And we then, for the next, like, I'd say the next two years, we were just pretty good. Um, I was not going, and, and I liked it, honestly. I didn't have to go out. I stopped going out. And when I went out, I brought my girlfriend, you know? So it was like, it was an easy fallback, you know? Like, there's not, so, there's like, think about it. If you're walking into the club and you got a hot girl with you and she's, you know, committed to you, what is the social pressure? There's, there's really no social pressure if you think about it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, let's go out. I'm going to fucking go out, get drunk, chill with my friends, and I got this girl here that, you know, and at the end of the night, you know, we're going to fuck. Cool. I'm cool with it, you know? Um, so we were doing that. I was doing that for like two years. The only thing was I wasn't ever – I wasn't pushing myself at all. It was a comfort zone, dude. It was straight comfort zone. I was smoking every day. I was at a delivery job and I was commuting to, to college. So that's how it started. And after about a year and a half, two years, we were hanging out so much and she was at my house. She was at my house so much. Her family lived in Florida, by the way. I'm in New Jersey. She was living, she was renting out a room in a house. And so she was at my house all the time. So it was my mom, my sister. My younger sister, it was my mom, her, my girlfriend, and my younger sister. And prior to my girlfriend coming into the picture, my family was kind of broken. My family was kind of broken. And, and actually, to this day, no one has even said that statement. I almost want to, like, call up my – or text my family and show them this clip right now, honestly, because it has not been spoken about still, that the fact that, like, once my dad passed away, the family kind of, like, broke apart. and then. For like eight years, I'm, and I'm not blaming my mom. I'm really not. You know, I'm not pointing fingers here. Um, it, you know, I, I guess what it was is there was just no masculine energy in the household. You know, that, that's what it was. Um, and my dad was the party social guy. You know, he was the one that was the hub. He had all the family. He was the, the party, the alcohol, the drug dude. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he was naturally social. But... Um, once he passed, the family broke down. Eventually, once my girlfriend started coming into the picture, she kind of bridged the gap and was like the missing piece. Because my girlfriend, she was Colombian, that girl. She's Colombian. She was extremely extroverted. And since her mom was in Florida, 
literally every evening she would talk to her mom on the phone for like at least an hour and she was able to express every, like they were fucking best friends best 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 friends me on the other hand i've been completely emotionally shut down for the last decade not telling anybody about my pain never have gone back to the graveyard have never thought about my dad um everybody in my middle school by the way signed this poster like when my dad died the whole school wrote this like we're sorry for your loss, Kyle. Like everybody that, that knew me wrote a little couple sentences to me in this huge poster, right? And then like my one, the one kid at school dropped it off to me. Like he, he rang the doorbell and gave it to my mom like four days after the, after the funeral. And I was so, I, I didn't even open that thing. I couldn't even open the fucking, I was afraid to read what the fuck was on the, the, the poster, <laughs> right? So I was like, I was even afraid to read what was on the poster. Um, so point being is like, I was so out of touch with my emotion. Everything was just so buried, which is why I, I couldn't talk to my mom about the fact that I loved, or I couldn't talk to my girlfriend about the fact that I loved her. I had to write it on the card. I had to get drunk as fuck to even like hand her the card. Um, and then I grow So fast forward, my girlfriend is now at my house consistently. She starts to become the missing piece to the family. She's extremely extroverted. She's a complete opposite of me. And she's, she's capable of speaking every emotion that she's ever felt and putting it into words. And she always wants to talk about her fucking feelings. And I'm like, I, don't, I can't do that. And I'm getting fucking pissed off when you keep asking me to talk about how I feel. So, you know, stop doing that, you know? And I was to the point where I was literally like, I, I was getting pissed off at her because she kept pushing on this part of me that was so uncomfortable, you know? And I'm just trying to stay in my comfort zone. Just trying to stay in this little bubble of get high, fuck your girlfriend, go to college, don't talk to anybody, come home. And like, I was cool with all of that. You know, I was cool with all of that. And I mean, dude, where the fuck would that have gotten me in hindsight? You know, like I was going for criminal justice. I guess at the time my mindset was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to make good money and I'm going to have a hot girl that loves me. And I, honestly, I, I think that's the average American mindset, you know, and, and, and dude, even as I say that right now, it doesn't sound bad on paper. It really doesn't. If I told you like, yo, you'd be a lawyer, you got a hot girl that loves you, you're going to make good money. You'd be like, I hope so. <laughs> right? Like that, you know, like happy, everybody that's watching this is probably thinking that they're like, thinking like, shit, like, I hope so. Like, that sounds good. Hopefully like, you know, okay, I'm 21, I'm going to school. So by the time I'm like 28, 29, I'll already be like established as a lawyer you know, I'll already be making good money. My college loans will be paid off. Me and my girl will be married. She'll probably already have, I'll probably have at least one or two kids by then. And hopefully we'll be, you know, living in our own house and uh, yeah, happily ever after, you know, but dude, yeah, it, it's a fucking bullshit dream that society brainwashes you into thinking. Society brainwashes you into thinking that bullshit, man. That is not the reality. The real reality is um, I'm not even going to read the chat yet. Cause I'm, I'm in a good flow at the moment. So the real reality is dude, have I had that path of continued eventually the attraction between us would have, would have started falling and falling and falling and falling. As I started to see it happen over the next couple of years, I will get into that, but I promise you, dude, I did not know enough about how to keep the attraction alive. And ultimately my desire to fuck other girls continue to increase over the next couple of years as I remain monogamous with this woman. And eventually it was starting to get to the point where I was resenting her. And ultimately, I don't want to get too far ahead about it yet. Um, but, but just, I guess I'm just, the point I'm just trying to say is that, that although me saying that idea of being successful, being with that girl that loves you and making good money, it sounds great on paper. However, if you don't, if you haven't already had a lot of sexual experiences, if you haven't done a lot of crazy shit, in your life, you later on, those lack of experiences will lead to regret, resentment, hatred for your significant others, almost as if they're stopping you from doing those things. It sounds weird. It sounds really weird. It's like, well, they're not stopping you if you think about it. But in high, in reality, in that moment, that's how I saw it. It wasn't like, it was like, fuck, if I stay with this girl, like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do any of this shit. You know, I'm never going to be able to do this or this or this. I'm never going to be able to fuck another girl because I'm not a cheater. I'm not, I'm not. I never cheated on this girl, by the way. Um, 
and I started as the years progressed with this girl, two, three, three years in, my look is getting better and better. I've been living with this girl. I've been fucking this girl every day for years. My, my sex game is, is on point. I was, dude, I was probably laying pipe better then than I am now because I was fucking three times a day, every single day, you know, honestly, like now I, I really, I mean, yes, I can attract a lot of women, but dude, when you're trying to run a, a business and you're working for two companies and you're trying to go to the gym and you're trying to go out and game two nights a week and you're trying to have decent amount of sleep, like it's not really convenient to fuck every single day unless it's a girl that like lives with you. Like it's convenient when, when you have a girlfriend that lives with you, it's convenient because it's like, come home from work, fuck real quick. And then I'm off to the gym. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. I mean, okay. There's probably like one girl I know that like will come through to get smashed, but I don't even want to fuck her, you know? Cause like the connection isn't really there. So point being though, like having a girlfriend gives you the luxury. I, get, I forgot what the main point of this was. I think it was just, I was having a lot more sex then. Than, than I am now. I mean, obviously now I'm fucking way more women, but in reality, I was having, I was, I was fucking like an hour or two out of my day back then, you know, but it gets, it, it gets a little vanilla. Like it, it, it becomes routine. And right now, if you're not having a lot of sex or any sex, if I told you like, dude, you could be having sex one to two hours every day with the same girl, you would be like, fuck yeah. If she's hot, fuck yeah. But dude, if, if, Two years later, you will not be thinking, fuck yeah, I promise you. I promise you. Just the same way as like if you've been on a diet and you take a bite of pizza, you know, Isaac's eating this fucking 93% lean ground beef right now with this fresh pump. And, and he's like, yeah, man, I, I've got these abs. I'm showing them off on the lecture. What's up, motherfucker? You know, and then he's been eating really healthy and he, he eats that one bite of pizza and the pizza tastes really good in that moment. And, I was, and if I told him, <laughs> I'm going to try not to comment on that grotesque looking meal um <laughs> in the same sense though if he were to keep eating the pizza and ice cream every day eventually it wouldn't taste that good to him anymore you can't eat ice cream every fucking day for two three years because eventually you're gonna hate the ice cream and you're gonna be like fucking ice cream i don't want you anymore like i want to try a hamburger i want a bacon egg and cheese motherfucker like fuck this ice cream you know although it's the same ice cream that you were initially drooling over right? It's kind of fucking weird how it works. It's, but it's like, once you have it in abundance, you no longer fucking crave it. So enough with this dumbass analogy and Isaac's garbage food. Um, three years later. Oh, actually one other, one other moment I'd like to point out. My girlfriend was bugging me that I was never going out with her friends. So one day she invited me to go out on this double date and I really didn't want to go because I was still very socially awkward. I was cool and social with my friends. I was awkward as fuck with people I didn't know. I had no cold approach. I had no social, uh, I had social skills with, I had no, uh, damn, what's the word? Like I had social skills with my social circle, but strangers, it was like, what the, like I, I didn't know how to talk. You know, like I didn't understand it. It was almost like, the comfort needed to be in place for me to be myself. And without that there, I'm super awkward. I didn't know the fundamentals of communication with a stranger. I was not, it, was something, it wasn't something I was comfortable with. My girlfriend had to beg me for like two months for me to even go out on a double date. But finally, after she bitched long enough and it was like her birthday was coming up, I was like, fine, we'll go on the double date. But by the way, later on in the night, I'm going over to Sean's house to smoke. You know, I was like, all right, cool, I'll go. But like later on, I'm fucking going out with my boy. We go on this date. By the way, to this day, I still joke with my girlfriend and her female friend about how fucking awkward I was on that date. Like, we still joke about it to this day because now when they see me out, like, every now and then, it, it's brought up. It's like, you guys remember, like, how I was on that fucking – point being, though, dude, like, we went on this double date, and I was so socially awkward. Like, in my tonality, everybody at the dinner table could tell – I was nervous. Like, like, and when you can, and when you're talking in a way and you consciously know that the other people can tell your voice sounds nervous, it even puts you into like an even more stifled state. You know, it's almost like, as if like, you know, to go up and talk to a girl is one thing, but if you're super nervous and you go up and say hello to the girl and the hello comes out, like your voice is stifled. It, it, your mind goes off. Like, 
dude, that was fucking awkward. And she can now tell I'm nervous and fuck. Now I'm starting to like shake. Like, dude, these were the thoughts that were going on in my head. This is why I'm trying to tell you. I was not skilled with this shit. This is how awkward I was. Right. So, um, anyway, that, that's just one example of, of an awkward interaction with me. Um, when I was younger, I think I was like 20, we went out for drinks this night. So I think I was like 22 at this point, 23. So fast forward, my girlfriend moves in, family starts becoming closer because she's now the middle piece of the, of the family. So through, I couldn't really talk to my mom or my sister that much, but like my girlfriend became friends with my mom and my sister. So now when my girlfriend's there and I'm hanging out and she's friends with them and I'm there, it's easy for me to interact with them as long as my girlfriend's there. And it was like the family started coming together again. Right. So the family starts, family starts becoming closer. Eventually it gets to the point where my girlfriend moves in since she was already here all the time. She lives with me from like age 23 to 24. And we start fighting even more. Cause like, I don't have any fucking alone time. And I started getting really big into music. I was like obsessed with rapping. I was obsessed with rapping. I was really, really good at rapping, like really good. And like I said, same thing with video games, same thing with like magic. I was big into magic when I was really young. Anything I got into that I was passionate about, I became fucking dominant at that topic, you know? And like, like working out, I've been lifting for like fucking 12 years at this point. I'm in a really good physique. I, I do need a beat, Nick, uh, send it. Um, actually, on the video I dropped today on the YouTube, my song is at the end of the video. If you, if you, anybody, if anybody watched the fucking video I dropped today, the credits is my song. So you can hear what I sound like on the beat. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, I started getting really big into music, started rapping a lot, um, turned my downstairs into like a, a music production area where I was recording my music. So my girlfriend lived upstairs. We shared a room. Uh, I do, I still rap a little bit, bro, but I want to get really big into it because I know if I put the time into it, I could take it over. I pro like, dude, if I could take over being a date, if I could take over YouTube dating in six months, like I know, I see, I already know how I would take over YouTube, uh, hip hop, you know, it's the same thing. And I already have the following in place. I already have enough people that fuck with me. Um, what the fuck you was that song? That was legit fire. Balo John. That is me. Yes. That's my song, brother. Uh, yeah, at the very end of the credits, it even says Kyle Froon. It's called Everybody Riding. Everybody Riding with the crew. Um, so, yeah, check out the song if you want. I would love to, at some point, make a transition into, into music. If the Patreon and the income I make off of this is high enough and I could quit my job, I would love to just do those things, honestly, because I'm still very passionate about music. Anytime I'm at a pregame, I love to rap and freestyle. It gets me into a great social flow. And gets you super improvisational, super witty, super quick. I literally think I am the quickest, most witty dude, partially contributed to my freestyling skills. Because it's like, um, you know, if I can think of rhyming words on, on, on the spot, once the theory's in place, I can think of, you know, the same shit with, with lyrics or with game. It's the same shit. I'm very quick on the spot. So um, all that happens. Um, what's the email? Super professional. Ballo John. Um, yeah, exactly. Ballo John. The problem with the problem was back then when I was making music, I had the skill in place. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the swag and I didn't have the women, which is like important things when it comes to making hip hop. Obviously, <laughs> it's like it's like unconfident social. You know, what it was like I could spit a dope freestyle. But then when we were out at a party, the first time I ever spit a freestyle for the party, I remember I was drunk. I ripped the freestyle. I instantly left the room. Nobody saw this. I left the room, ran to the bathroom, and puked in the fucking toilet because I was so fuck. It was the first time everybody had been looking at me. And although I, I dominated, I'm sweaty. Exactly, bro. But there was no vomit on the sweater. <laughs> it got into the toilet. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> um, oh, that's cool that you make beats, Matt. Um, yeah, we can talk about all that at the end of the lecture. I don't want to get too off topic. And the email... Um, I'll type my email in here. This is my email. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got really big into music and I still want to fucking do music by the way. And I think I'm going to dominate music, especially once the following is in place. Now that I have the game and the knowledge and the social circle and the social media influence and like, dude, I could really be on just a whole 
like I, I, the lane that I see is like crazy at this moment. That's really what I'm thinking long term. But first, I need to keep going with pickup, um, obviously, because money, money as well as passion and the whole lane for that is is first. So anyway, back to the topic. Um, girlfriend moves in. I'm making music. Didn't have the swag. Going to the gym a lot looking better, getting more attention from females. I'm at a delivery job and I'm going to school and I'm starting to get attention from a lot of females. I'm at this delivery job where I'm surrounded by younger people than me. I was the oldest one at the job. I'm like 22, 23 at this point. And I'm surrounded by like 18, 19 year olds, male and female. And I was naturally in a higher position at, at work because I was like working there for several years at this point. And if you watch the previous lecture, I had the female boss in love with me everybody knew who I was at this point at the job because like I said, I was very good being social in environments that I was comfortable in with strangers. I was not that good. So I was getting a lot of attention from girls, like hot girls. Really. I remember in particular, there's two really hot girls that worked at this restaurant that were super into me that I never got with because I just, I had no idea about game or anything like that. And I just kept building the attraction because that was all I knew. I didn't know how to escalate things further to like a meetup or I was in a leader and I didn't know how to escalate. I didn't know how to flirt and make a date or any of that shit. I just knew how to build value in the environment, you know, because that was safe. It's safe to build value in an environment. It, what's a little risky is starting to go a little bit direct with the girl. At that point, there's a little bit of a transition. Once that happens... Nick, Nick feels my pain. It's like, it's like, it's cool. And, and that's where the skill set comes in. Because once you can learn how to do that very, very, very subtly, it's not as risky, you know, and you learn that there are ways to do it without just saying, Hey, I really like you. I want to take you on a date. It really just starts with just holding a little bit more eye contact and maybe just pausing a little bit more between your words. Don't type it, Brendan. Um, <laughs> uh, and that's a little bit off topic. Um, so point being, I was at this job. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to keep progressing because otherwise it's going to be another six hour lecture like last week. <laughs> it was six hours, by the way, it was six hours and 15 minutes. The recording saw about four hours of it, but it was six hours and 15 minutes. So at this job, didn't, wasn't closing anybody, but, but started to learn how to build my value in the environment. And I, I didn't know why I was building my, my value in these environments. I just thought it was because I was somewhat good looking. I, I didn't know all of the theory behind social proof and leader of men and all of this other shit, you know. Um, but now I see why it was all working. It was all working into my favor greatly, greatly. And being, I was naturally a little social in that environment. So I was like, we'll talk later. Put a shirt on. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, all of this was working in my favor. And it was getting to the point where I was starting to get very high attraction from girls. And I was starting to resent my actual girlfriend a little bit. Now, keep in mind, I had a hot girl that I was going home to every night and fucking. Hot girl, you saw her. You saw what she looked like when she was 24. This is that time. This is her in her peak. She was living with me. This girl was naked in my bed every single, naked in our bed every single night, right? Um, but again, it's four years into the relationship. I don't really know long-term seduction. And I'm getting attention from a lot of other women. And I'm starting to build up a resentment with this girl. So whenever things are good with her, things are good. But whenever things are bad with her, I'm always thinking like, like, fuck this bitch, yo. Like, I should be fucking Sammy at the fucking restaurant, yo. She's bad. She's bad. And she's probably, like, equally as hot to my girl. But, like, you take two equal girls, one you've been fucking every day for four years, one you have never fucked, bro, this girl is, like, three points hotter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's, like, naturally, like, uh, automatically she's a 10. Even, even a girl that's slightly uglier. Like, guys will cheat on their girlfriends with a fucking lagoon creature, bro. It's just the fact of new pussy new pussy. It's the desire. It's the lust. You know, it has nothing to do with the love connection. It, it's just strictly lustful. So, um, started resenting my girlfriend. We started arguing a lot more and I was starting to get to the point where th this thought started creeping into my head of like, I don't know if I can be with this girl for the rest of my life. 
and you know, we had been dating for four years. And once you get to like a four or five year point in the relationship, your mindset, even if you're young, your mindset starts to think of like, you know, at least on the girl's end, she's going to start pushing it towards, you know, long-term, like lifetime long-term, you know? And as a 24 year old dude, when you've been fucking the same girl and you're getting attention from all these other girls, you're starting to get a little bit of resentment for this girl, even though you love her and you haven't been with that many girls, you haven't seen this kind of attention before. And she's talking about lifetime. You're not necessarily on the same page. You're not naturally. I'm like, cause I'm not going to cheat. You know, if I was cheating on her, it's, that's one thing, you know, like, and that's why I get why a lot of guys cheat, but, that was just never in my ethics. So for me, that was never part of the question because at the end of the day, me personally, I could never spend my life with someone just with them knowing, having a, uh, a false image of who I really am. You know, if someone's going to be with me for my life, they're going to really accept me for who I am, the brutal, honest truth. And if they can't accept that, then they can't accept me for who the fuck I am. Thus, why would I, why should I be with them? You know, if you can't accept me for who I am and you don't love me for who I am, that's okay. Go find the dude that you can, you know. I will go find the hotter, better girl that will love me. If it takes another five, ten years, so be it. I will grow a shitload in the process. And when you're old and wrinkly and you see me with that stunning fucking girl, we'll know it was worth it, right? Okay, so th that's kind of my thought process. That should be somewhat of your thought process as well, depending on where you're, you're at in game and where may, you may be struggling. I, I don't really know everybody's age group in here. I, I, I should have taken a poll before the, before the le lecture started. But, um, but this, is a, this was an issue I was struggling with at like 24, 25. How do I stay with this girl that I am in love with? But how do I fulfill this fucking lustful side of Kyle that wants to be a player and wants to go out and just fuck girls and experience like a one night stand and pick up girls and take over venues and travel to new fucking states and countries and fuck exotic women and live a life that is only accepted as like rock stars and hip hop and athletes and shit. Like that's what I wanted. I think that's what everybody, everybody wants that, you know? Everybody, like everybody, it's easy to say like, yeah, well, you know, I mean, deep down, I want like a wife and kids and I want a family. Bullshit, bro. If I could tell you, you could drop all of that right now and, and travel the world as an icon, fucking the hottest women for the next decade, bro, you're really going to take that one good girl, bro. And even if you take that one good girl in two years, you think you're still going to take that one good girl? Get the fuck out of here. Get off the fucking lecture if that's your mindset. Unsubscribe. I'll refund you from Patreon right now if that's your thing. Like, type your name down there. I'll send you the fucking 10 bucks back, you know? Um, it's just not true. It's not true. And the only reason I say that is because I experienced that side of it. And from 20 to 23, I was convinced that that was how it needed to be. And the only reason I am so extreme on the other side of this thing is because I've lived out the other side of this thing, guys. Like I've done the five-year monogamous relationship. I've done it. I've done it to the point where it was probably at a point where in a year I could have proposed and it, it would have gone through and I could have been married with a kid right now. I could have taken that route. I so easily could have taken that route. And I've gone to fucking six weddings in the last 18 months. 2019, I've been to fucking four weddings in 2000, second half of 2018, I was at three weddings. So it's to the point where I don't even want to be at a wedding anymore. I have another wedding lined up for spring of 2020 that I am not even like, dude, the last two weddings I went to, I showed up as the fucking bride is walking down the aisle. Cause I just don't give a fuck anymore, dude. Like I really don't. And they're all my friends that I grew up with. Ironically, these are all the kids that I was hanging out with when I was with my girl. They all went on to do that life. You know, I was just telling you like so easily. And, and why is that that everybody does it? It's because it's, it's the comfort zone. It's the brainwashing society. This is the way it needs to be. If you're a good man, you know, don't, you know, don't be a dog. You know, a real man would man up and ask her to marry her. You know, a real man would only have one girl. 
a real man, you know, when are you going to grow up? You're still in the club. Like, when are you going to grow up? Dude, I'm about to be 30, and I'm telling you, these kids, my, my friends that are 30, <laughs> yeah, they're so grown up that they're fucking old already, bro. Like, they're, like, they're too grown up. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're too fucking grown up. Like, they literally have, like, half of them have gray hair. And they all have kids. And I'm just, in my mind, I'm like, like, dude, what is your life? Like, your life is already boring. Like, what the, f what is your life in, like, five years from now, bro? Like, I feel bad for you. And then, we, and then towards the end of the night, they start getting drunk, telling me how much they fucking hate their wives. It's like, what kind of fucking life is that, bro? And these girls are not even attractive. These girls are not even attractive. Not the shit on, you know, my friends from, you know, I'm not going to say any names out here, but, um, like, if, if they're already looking like that, like, how, yeah, and they're in their, like, late to mid-20s, like, dude, how, how are they going to look when they're, like, late 30s, early, early 40s? They're not going to get hotter, bro. These girls are not going to get better, okay? Any girl that you're seeing, she's either here. If, if this is the rise and the fall, She's already here. She may go up a little bit more, right? She may go up a little bit more. If you're on this lecture, assuming you're like 19 and up, I don't think there's any, anybody in here younger than that, but 19 and up, bro, like they're, they're, they're here. Maybe they'll keep rising. Maybe if they're a late bloomer, if they were like chubby in high school and, you know, they started getting to fitness when they were later on, they'll keep going, you know? But dude, they're not gonna get hotter. They're not gonna get hotter. And, and a woman's look is like the majority of her asset. Obviously, you want a physical connect. Or obviously, you want a, a, a mental connection, obviously, you know. But you can find that same mental connection, if not a better connection, with a hotter girl. And maybe it sounds mean, um, but it's not mean. It's not mean because, like, it, it, that girl, that girl that, that was my girlfriend, you saw what she looked like at 24. You see what she looks like now. Like, you <sighs> You'll probably see what she looks like in five years from now because we'll be on Patreon 5.0 or whatever the fuck we're on <laughs> or, or whatever we're on. We're on some like virtual meeting where we're all just like in the same room together. And, um, <laughs> and dude, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I know what her mom looks like. Yeah, her mom's a tr like her mom's not bad looking, but like <laughs> her mom is also not a fucking 28 year old stunning model you know what i'm saying like if, if i had the choice between her mom at 43 and the 28 year old which one are you going with i don't care if you're 35 i don't care if you're 40 even if you're 40 dude you can if you're 40 and you're on point with all your shit um if you're 40 <laughs> sorry i'm reading these comments if you're 40 and you're on point with your shit as a man you, I mean, dude, like these guys from RSD are still picking up 21 year olds and 18 year olds. First off, not even that you need to go that young, but I'm just saying, dude, like me as a 45, 40, 45 year old dude, um, it's not unreasonable for me to pick up like a 28 year old or a 30 year old and have her as my girlfriend. And that girl will be stunningly hot and she will pick me over anybody else in the venue. Why? Because my resources is like 100x everybody else. My game is 100x everybody else. Maybe I don't look as young as everybody else, but that's okay. I'm still like well maintained and my resources and everything else is just shitting on everybody. You know, so it's really not just the looks, it's everything. RSD parody video. Uh I don't know about that. I like I, I I'm getting off topic. I'm going to stop looking at the fucking stop engaging with these irrelevant chat comments. If you got relevant chat comments then then type them in. Um, so let me get back to the timeline. <laughs> uh, it's, it's easy to get off topic. I mean, it's all relevant, but, um, cause, cause here's the thing at each point, like these side rants are kind of like things I was struggling with at these age group, at these age periods. Right. Um, but now that I'm further on in my life, I'm explaining to you guys the reality of these struggles in these different times, you know, I, like, as I'm telling the story, I'm telling you guys my mindset in the moment, but then the side rant is like the reality of it five, 10 years later, you know? So, um, forgive me if I'm getting a little bit off topic, but I think it's all beneficial information. If you ever see yourself settling down many years from now, like when you're 45, um, 
Hard to say, dude, because like five years ago, I was in a monogamous relationship considering marriage. You know, three years later, I'm thinking single life. Year and a half later, right now, I'm in this like pickup journey, coaching journey, potentially trying to become a fucking rapper journey. Like, I can't even tell you where I'm going to be in two years from now. Like, I can't tell you where I'm going to be at, at 45. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't even want to think about that. When people ask me that, my answer is like, dude, I can't even tell you where I'm going to be at. Um, I could tell you my five year or like my, you know, two, three year goal, which is like, it, it, and it doesn't include women, you know, ironically, you ask me what my three year goal is. It's not about women. That's the, that's like the main part of it. And it's, that doesn't mean I'm alone on an Island. I mean, the goal is something other than women because the girls will be a byproduct of that goal. No matter what your goal is, the women will be in place as long as you are successful and you have the game theory and you build your lifestyle off of those things. The women will be a byproduct of the success of that goal. You know, um, Dan Belzerian is a prime example of that. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. Um, side rants. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle Hosen appreciates the side rants. <laughs> cool. So, um, okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> How far are we to this? Yeah. Okay, we're like an hour and a half. Um, all right, so let's let's move it along. Actually, real quick, John says, so a little deep here. You're talking about how these girls are peaking with their looks like now. So doesn't that mean they fertil their fertility is peaking too? You want high quality kids right now. So do you plan to have kids with someone a lot younger and more in their prime? If I were to have kids, yes. I I would say Again, I don't even know where my mindset is going to be in a couple of years from now. But in this moment, just like five years ago, in that moment, I was considering marriage and all that. But in this moment, I would argue 10 years, five to 10 years from now, I am with. So, so I would probably be somewhere from 35 to 38. And I would most likely be with a girl that's 28 to 32. And she's still she is still definitely um, capable of having a baby at that age. I mean, my mom is 59 and I'm 29. So she, yeah, my mom had me at 30. So she's doing just fine. And, and dude, the girl, I just, the girl that I'm still obsessed with, I'm not obsessed with her anymore, but this girl that has been on my mind for like a month at this point, uh, she was 31. She was 31. But give me 10 years to fucking level up and, and get my game really on point, my social circle, my status and everything. I'm just like, 10x what it's at right now and that that 31 year old who ended up kind of curving me although we did have sex but like I didn't get her obsessed with me you know because I'm competing with millionaires and celebrities um I will have that I will have a girl of that caliber I'll have a girl of a higher caliber why because I'm already attracting a girl of that caliber where I'm currently at thus I can always re-attract a girl of the same caliber whatever girl you have gotten in your recent years, you can always reattract that same caliber. If not more, because you've already learned what you fucked up with that same girl. Thus, just from learning that experience, you're already slightly up on that one. You know, you've already been through this experience. Thus, you're already capable of getting here. You know what I'm saying? And as long as you're studying this shit and you're going up, you're really capable of like up here, you know? So I'm not mad that I lost that girl. I mean, am I a little bit mad? Yeah, it sucks. It was such a, a, a couple subtle tweaks and I would still have this girl in my life, which, which does hurt. At the same time, I learned in, invaluable lessons from those experiences that will allow me to attract the hotter girl. And in two years from now, when I'm with the hotter girl, I'm just like, this is fucking crazy. You know, it would all make sense. Just like when I went through my initial breakup, and I couldn't see myself getting past that initial girl. I couldn't see past that first girl. Actually, let's get to that. So eventually we get to a point where the attraction was no longer there. I, my friend sends me a vi an RSD video of Tyler, two hour Tyler rant. I don't, if any, I don't know if everybody's here has watched RSD, but RSD is real social dynamics. There's this guy, RSD Tyler, who's, I think he just turned 40, um, like redhead, kind of long beard, chubby dude who knows a lot about games He's been gaming since like, uh, 2000. Um, and pretty much I watched this free tour talk from Tyler and he started going into all these in-depth topics of game. And I was super intrigued. 
Um, and I was like, what the fuck is this? You know, like literally like, what is this? I was super intrigued. I was caught up in it. I didn't understand it, but I was intrigued. And I kept watching the videos. I kept watching the videos and I started to discover game. I was like 25 at this point. I was still with my girl, but I was like, what the fuck is this? And I started to learn a little bit of theory. And I was like, dude, this shit makes sense. Like, what the fuck? This shit makes sense. I always thought like, it was just because I was super shy. But like, I'm, I'm analyzing all of my previous failures throughout high school and through college and all these times that I, I had women that were interested in me and I just never got with. And I was like, it was all starting to come together. Right. And I just started diving deeper and deeper into pickup. It's probably just like anybody that's in this channel right now. At some point you discovered game and you were like, dude, this is crazy. Right. Like the first time you figured out what game was, you were, you were, maybe you're just figuring out game right now, or maybe you're yet to figure it out. I mean, if you're on here, you've discovered game at least a little bit. And once you've kind of discovered it, you're like, this is fucking crazy. You know, cause think about before you knew about game, it's like, you're living unconsciously, you know, you're, you're living unconsciously up until that moment. And then you go back and you start learning the theory. And as you learn the theory, maybe from my lectures or maybe from other infields that you've seen it, some of it just relates to you with previous interactions you had and previous failures you had. And you're like, Oh fuck dude, that reminds me of, and that, that makes sense. Why, I, why I lost that one girl, why I lost that one good girl that was really into me. And it was all because I wasn't confident enough or I never made the fucking move. Fuck, dude, I'm watching Kyle's escalation video. I should have just made that move. Why did I make that move? You know? Um, so I started learning game, but I still had a girlfriend. <laughs> so, but I was obsessed with game. I even bought a product by, from some no-name dude who, who's not even around anymore. I don't know what the fuck this dude died or whatever the fuck. His name's Andy Yosha. He, he, he was the original owner of daygame.com. Um, and now it's owned by some other dude named Yad, but they're not popular on YouTube. Uh, I, I don't know what the fuck happened to them. I don't know, but I spent like 300 bucks and bought this product from them. And it was essentially the whole product was like, um, it just talked a little bit about attraction, a little bit about comfort and a little bit about seduction. And, and that was the whole fucking, uh, sorry, I just got a phone call. Yo, bro, I'm gonna have to call you back. I'm still lecturing. Actually, I'll send you the link if you want to hop in. I'll text you. Um, yo, actually, could somebody, um, does anybody in here have my cell phone number or could somebody, uh, could somebody, I'm going to type my cell phone number in here. I don't care. What the fuck. Could somebody text me the fucking link to the lecture if you could? Um, uh, anyway, so I'm on the, where the fuck was I? I got to stop answering these phone calls because it's fucking distracting me. Oh, so I bought this program, right? I bought the program. And it was just attraction, comfort, seduction. It, it was really just like a bullshit course. And um, yeah, Brandon, can you text me the link to the lecture, bro? If you could. Um, I put my number in the chat. No, don't, don't put the link to the lecture in the chat. Text the, the lecture link to my cell phone number, if you could, somebody. Um, so yeah, I bought that course. I started studying game and I was getting intrigued. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Blah, 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 blah. Summertime came, we started going out and that coach was offering, oh, here's the thing. I started spending all this time studying the infield, but I could not find a way to approach a girl. So I've been studying theory for like three or four months at this point, but I, I could not approach a female, could not approach a female at all. Thank you, brother. I'm going to send this to my boy. Hopefully he'll jump in. Up in, we're live. Um, yeah, so I, I could not make an approach at this point, bro. Could not make an approach. I had studied pickup theory at this point for like fucking three, four months. And I was like, okay, so this is how you would open. Okay, this is how like a conversation would go. But I didn't have the balls to go up and say hi to a girl and I couldn't do it. Could not do it. And the dude that I bought the product from offered me, he offered me, I got an email. I was on his email list, right? He offered me a deal and he said, I'm currently doing free student infield breakdowns for anybody that wants to participate. We may use your footage in our newsletter and use your footage towards a breakdown. So I was like, cool. If I sign up for this, 
I'm going to be forced to go out and approach. So I emailed him and I was like, hey, I'd like to participate in the free student infield breakdown if possible. He then contacted me back and said, sounds good. Meet me in New York this Saturday at 3 p.m. And I was like, holy shit. I don't think I could do this. <laughs> that was literally what I was thinking. I was like, I don't fucking think I could do this, bro. But I had already committed to it. I had already put all this time into studying the theory and shit. I was like, fuck it, dude. Let's go. Let's see what the fuck happens. So, oh, Brendan, I got you. Thank you, brother. Um, so I remember I took the bus into New York this day. And I, rem I still remember, dude, I'm driving. I'm riding on the bus going into Manhattan. And my heart is fucking beating because I know inevitably I'm going to be forced to like approach with this dude once I meet up with him. And um, so we get, I, I get into the city, uh, meet up with him. He was pretty smooth. I'm not going to lie. I, I wonder if he was really that smooth or if I was just that antisocial back then. I would like to see him face to face right now to, to like – look him dead in the eyes and, and, and square up with this dude to see, I don't mean square up, but like square up in a sense that like, once you've been gaming for a while, you could pretty much look any dude like in his eyes. And if you hold eye contact for like two, three seconds, you could tell what level he's at in terms of game. Like anybody on this lecture, if you just met me in person and I just stared at you for two seconds I could kind of get a vibe of like where your level, your skill level is at. Iron. It, it seems weird, but I promise you, or or at least through conversation, I would be able to tell like, okay, he probably struggles a little bit here and here, and he's probably pretty good at this, and he, he probably struggles in this part. Like it's, it, it sounds weird, but Kyle Hostin says, doubt you could read me, bro. Turn your fucking turn your turn your screen on right now. Let me see what you look like, bro. Um, I mean, more so in person, obviously more so in person, but yeah. So anyway, I meet this dude out. Keep in mind at this point, I'm 25. I had been studying theory at this point for like three months. I had never done a cold approach up until this point. Right. And now I have this dude that is pretty much, he was like the pickup coach at the time. I had just took a bus into New York to meet up with him for this free infield recording. He puts the mic on me. I'm so fucking nervous, dude. And he's like, okay, you ready? And I was like, yeah, sure. He's like, okay, go talk to that girl. And it's just like some like pretty cute girl that's just walking down the, um, she's just walking down the street. And I, I was like, okay. And his theory at the time was like, if she's walking this way, you want to like walk a, a like 10 feet, five, 10 feet in front of her curve and face her square up, give her some room and confidently stop her and be like, hey, excuse me like with like 10 feet. So I went in front of her, stopped her or like tried to stop her. And um, she then proceeded to not even acknowledge me and walk completely by me and completely blown out, completely ignored, uh, did not say one word to me at all. And then he then came back over to me and he's like, welcome to the game. <laughs> that was literally what he said. He said, welcome to the game. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, it's initiation, bro. He's like, everybody gets blown out on their first approach. He was like, you know? So I was like, okay, I guess he was like, but dude, you got to smile. That's what he told me. He was like, you got to smile, bro. He's like, you've, you've got this like fucking murderer face on. Nick says, I'm trying to see this video. I wish I could find this video, bro. I, I tried so hard to find this video. They never posted it anywhere. I wish I could show it on the channel. Cause it would be so beneficial to show you guys where I came from, where I'm at. You know, it would be great to see the fucking improvement over. That was, um, I think that was 2015 summer. So, or maybe spring, like five years ago, roughly. To go from like that to where I'm at in five, you know, four, four or five years. Um, I wish I could find that video, but I, I, I can't. If I, come ever, if I ever come across that video, I, I'll, I'll be extremely grateful. I should try to reach out to him again. Uh, anyway, so I do that. He says, welcome to the game. Right after, he's like, dude, smile and, and like square up more and, and be more confident. He's like, tell me a little bit about body language. And he's like, all right, go approach that girl. Go in, I open that girl. Same result. Gives me a couple small tweaks. Talk louder. You're still not smiling, bro. He's like, bigger smile. He's like, laugh before you even face her. Go in, I approach another girl. Same result. Right after, he's like, go and approach another. He's like, go talk to this girl. Same result. 
He's like, go talk to that girl. Same result. My first five approaches, complete blowout. Complete blowout. And it's because, honestly, it's just because, although maybe my body language is lacking a little bit, it, it really had to just do with my nervousness. You know, I'm, I'm so fucking nervous still. Maybe after four or five of them, I started to calm down a little bit. And I think on my fifth or sixth approach, I got the girl to, like, she was walking and then she just slowly stopped walking. And then she was talking to me, walking, walking, and then kept walking. But that was like progress, you know? Next approach, girl completely stopped. Next approach, girl stopped and it was like a 30 second conversation with like an awkward goodbye. Next approach, starting to build a little bit of momentum here. I, I just banged out like 10 approaches in a matter of like 30 minutes. So I'm really not that nervous anymore. You know, you're not going to get nervous. If you, if you just got blown the fuck out five times in a row, you're really not that nervous anymore. You're not, you know, like the best way to get in the state, honestly, is to get blown the fuck out repeatedly. You would think like, because it, it's weird. You walk into the club and you're like a little stifled. You know, if I, if we, if me and you walked into the club, you're like, yo, there's a hot girl over there, yo. And you're like, yeah, I saw her. I'd be like, yo, yo, you should go talk to her. Like, <laughs> you wouldn't want to go talk to her. I mean, maybe deep down, like on a, on a biological level, you would want to go talk to her, but you're going to feel this initial resistance. I probably would too, honestly. If I walked in with my boy and he was like, yo, dude, there's a hot girl over there. You should go talk to her. In the back of my mind, I'd be like, damn, he's, he's right. But up front, or, or I, I would probably be like, damn, like we just walked into the venue. Yo, can I chill for a minute? Let me get a drink, you know, or let me do something, right? Like that's what like my mind, that, that's instantly what I would be thinking. But the reality is if I just went up and actually got blown out or she was like, I'm not interested. And I said, interested in what? Uh, you know, I was just come over and say hi and keep talking. She's like, I'm really not interested. And I was just like, oh, okay, it's all good. You know, I get, I get it. I'm, I mean, I'm not looking for anything either. I just want to have your nights going. And I just kept the interaction going until I got fully rejected. I would walk away from that interaction with a little bit of social momentum. And if I went and did that with two other girls, I'm telling you, I would be on fire. Like right now, if I went and got rejected by several women, I, I would really be on fire because the only thing that's holding you back is really your own resistance. Um, and and, and the, the reality of it is the reason why you have that resistance is because on an instinctual evolutionary level, think about it, if you were in a small tribe and you went up and talked to somebody in the tribe, typically a hot girl, and the hot girl that's in the tribe is typically associated with the king right? So if you go up and you talk to the hot girl uh, on a biological level, that's telling you like, if you get rejected, the king is going to find out and the king is probably going to kill you. So your life is actually at risk. That's why you're actually nervous to go up. And that's why you have approach anxiety. You're af and that's why we're afraid of rejection, because we're afraid that someone of higher status is going to find out and we're going to get removed from the tribe. But the reality is in modern day, if you go up and get rejected, especially if, if I walked away from the interaction laughing, I was like, okay, no, don't worry about it. Have a good night. And I walked away with a big smile on my face, went back over to my boy, what's good, homie? How you doing? Does anybody even know that happened? Nobody even knows that happened. You know, nobody even knows you got rejected. So, so the reality of it is if you're going out, um, I forgot how this was, I'm a little bit off topic right here, but it's, it's still another valuable point, which is like, over time, if, if, if you just can embrace the rejection and, and understand that the rejection is kind of like a part of it, you could get success very quickly. You could get success very quickly. Instead of dancing around, avoiding, walking on eggshells, looking for the safe approach, which I do too, guys. I really, I do it too. I really do. I could be, I could be pushing it harder too some nights, you know, like I'll walk into the venue sometimes and I'm not going balls to the wall. You would think, oh, international dating coach, fucking 60,000 subscribers. I'm, this dude's slaying pussy. The first girl he approaches, he's probably fucking in the bathroom. No, dude. Honestly, no. I mean, look, if I've been going out consistently, yes, I can be pretty dangerous. But, like, I didn't go out two weeks ago. I stayed in. I worked the whole weekend. My boy just moved to Charlotte. I didn't go out that weekend. So 14 days went by without me doing an approach. We walked into the venue on Friday night. Yeah, I was feeling a little bit, a little bit, you know, I, I felt it a little bit. I wasn't like, 
I got to get out of here. I, like, I wasn't feeling like that. But, you know, I'd be lying if I said I walked into the venue on fire. That, that's just not the case. And I, and I was not opening everybody at all by any means. I could have definitely pushed it harder. Friday night, um, here's what happened. We walked through the venue. It was downpouring. There was, in my mind, there was one girl who was moderately attractive. And I ended up approaching her friend. And through her friend, by talking to her friend and engaging the less attractive friend, got point, pointed to the girl I was actually really more attracted to. Um, by like kind of t- talking to her about talking about the girl I was into to the friend, got her to like easily open. And then she came in, started talk, started conversing with her, found out she was actually Palestinian, used that to my advantage. And then when she was guessing my ethnicity, I just presented my Armenian side. And she really like connected with the fact that I was Armenian. It's weird because like Middle Eastern people, I know I tend to notice that like Middle Eastern people will like find a correlation any way they can. If I honestly, if I told her I was Italian, she would not have been as attracted to me. But really I introduced myself as I'm Armenian and Italian, which I am. I was not lying, although I am mainly Italian, you know? So I'm, I'm always calibrating my presentation. And that's not the only reason she was into me. It was because I was social. I opened the friend. I was loud. I was joking. I was like, how the fuck are you guys even standing here right now? The speaker is right above your head. Like literally, they were, we're in a crowded, loud as fuck basement. But again, I'm talking so loud that they can still hear me in the basement. And I'm not talking in their ear. I'm talking so fucking loud that I'm just standing here calm, but they can still hear me. And then in a a venue like that, when you can talk like that, like it conveys a lot. And I'm, and I'm laughing and I'm talking to the friend. I'm, I'm pointing at the girl that I'm really into. And I'm like, Oh, is this, is this your friend? Blah, blah, blah. And then I put my hand out. She comes over. I was like, Oh, what's your name? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, wait, what's your name? It's too, yo, how are you guys standing over here? It's so fucking loud over here. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we just like to dance, this and that. I was like, you're not Latina, are you? Because you kind of got that like Latina look. Because she looked, um, what was she? She was Palestinian. So she looked like, um, she almost looked like she could have been Peruvian or like Uruguayan. They almost have like a similar look. She's like long, dark hair, almost like an olive skin or almost like a Hispanic skin color. But But in hindsight, she she did look more Palestinian, but in the dark basement, you can't fucking tell, you know? So we talked for a little bit. I told her I was Armenian. I'm being a little challenging and joking to her. And then eventually my boy was there. So I kind of pivoted away from her abruptly and just started socializing with my boys. And then I told him, I was like, yo, it's too fucking loud down here. I can't game down here. I really can't. So I told them I'm going to go upstairs. And then I went back over to the girls that I was into and at that point, Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas came on. And every girl fucking loves that song. All I want for Christmas, you, baby. So, like, every girl's going crazy to this song. While she, I went up and I was like, I was like, yo, we're going upstairs, by the way. It's too fucking loud in here. And then she was like, but she was really into the song. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll let you hit your, I'll let you hit the solo. Hit, hit the solo first. And, like, if you guys want to keep talking, we'll be upstairs. So then I go upstairs with my group conveying kind of non-neediness. I could already see that there was a little bit of attraction. If, if I didn't see that there was that attraction, I wouldn't have encouraged them to come upstairs yet. I would have just stayed there and kept vibing, right? But I felt that it was at a certain, my, my intuition told me that it was at a certain level that it was accurate for me to do that. The only reason I have that intuition is because I've gone out and gamed and gamed and gamed, you know? So go out, get those reference experiences. But anyway, I tell them we're going upstairs and, um, Long story short, we end up going up there. Fucking 15 minutes later, she walks by with her friend. And I made I knew she was going to come up there. Because the only way you could exit, they're in the basement. So even if she was just going to leave, I knew she was going to end up um, walking, at least walking by me to exit. So I'm in a position where I knew she would leave. Or if she's just going to come hang out, she'd come hang out. But I, I knew, so with that in mind, I knew she was going to be leaving soon. Or at least appearing soon. And I had a couple male friends there. Maybe one or two of them were opening girls in the area. So I just jumped in on their conversation and started talking to the girls that they were with. Because I knew that this girl was going to be walking by at some point. And I don't want her to see me standing alone at the bar. I want social proof. I want her, if she's going to walk by me, you know, although my communication and everything is already conveying I'm, I'm that dude, I want to like prove it on other levels as well. I want everything in my favor. 
And so, you know, fast forward 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes goes by. She walks by and I saw her out of the corner of my eye because there's not that many people in the venue. The second I see her, I actually pivot slightly away from her and over engage with the people that are like in the opposite direction, you know, which I was already talking to. I'm going too in depth with this, this breakdown, but, but long story short, she walks by. I didn't talk to her. She walked by the next time she comes around. I put my hand out smiling. She grabbed my hand and I pulled her in. And then I was like, I know you were walking around looking for me. Don't lie. That's how I like reopened it. And, and she was denying it, but she was like, no, I was. And I was like, yo, are all Palestinians like fucking, I, I forgot what I said at that point, but like, that's how I reopened the conversation. And then I started vibing and flirting with her that way. Truth be told, I actually was a little bit too um, feisty and challenging. Too much. Like, literally, I was too much. I, like I said, I had, at this point, I hadn't gone out and gamed in, like, two weeks. And I over-pushed it, you know? Because she had a sweatshirt around her, her waist that was covering her butt. And I thought the reason that she had that was because she had an amazing ass. Usually, girls with really nice asses will, will cover their ass with the, sweat, with the sweatshirt. And then throughout conversation, throughout teasing and challenging her at some point, I was like, oh, you are Palestinian. So obvious, like, look at your hair, this and that. Um, and then we were talking about how I'm Armenian and Armenians are related to Kardashian. And she's like, I look like, Car I look like a Kardashian. I was like, I could tell by the hair. And she was like, yeah, well, not only the hair, the face too. But she was like very quick to like throw that in. And I bursted out laughing because it was almost like a, it was like a try hard cocky statement saying like, I look like a Kardashian. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, so I bursted out laughing and I was like, I was like, Palestinians? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I don't know. I don't, do they have the ass too? I'm not sure. And she took it, she took it way too sensitively. Because I was kind of challenging her about whether or not they had the ass. Because I thought she had a really nice ass. But apparently she has a not not that nice of an ass. And she's insecure about it. So she overre she didn't overreact. But a girl with a really nice ass, that shit would have hit perfectly because you know, she knows she's got it, you know, so it, it would have, I played it, like, here's the thing, dude, my game is honestly catered to, like, eights, nines, and tens, more towards, like, a nine or a ten, when I'm aggressive and feisty like that, it's catered toward a really confident woman, and some of these, some of these girls that aren't super hot, they, they actually get offended by this kind of shit, but that's the same reason it works on the nine, because no other dude has the balls to say it to the nine, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really going on a side tangent here. But that was my night. So I ended up over-escalating. She walked away. At one point, I calibrated before, before I lost her. I was like, no, I, I, I got her back by saying, like, listen. I was like, yo, calm down, relax. I was, I was talking about Palestinians in general. Don't take it personal. I can't even see your butt. You got the sweatshirt on your face. Or on, not on your face. I got the sweat, you got the sweatshirt on your ass. Like, can you, can you calm down? Can you calm down? Like, relax. Don't be, so, don't be so aggressive. That's how I calibrated. I didn't wait until she said, fuck you, and walked away. I could tell the second I told her about the ass thing that it was starting to get to her. And the second I see that, I calibrated by saying, I was like, yo, I was like, look, I could tell it hit way too hard. You know, if it wasn't so hard, I probably would have just laughed and changed the topic. But I could tell it hit her on a deep, on a deeper level. So instead, I, I really had to calibrate and actually apologize to her and show her because up till that point, I was just being too cocky and too, too unobtainable. And I had to show her, I was like a little bit relatable, you know? So I, I, I was like, listen, I was like, yo, relax. I was like, I, I didn't mean it like that. I meant Palestinians in general. I can't even see your butt. You got the sweatshirt over your butt. Do you have a butt? That's literally what I said. By saying all of this shit, dude, like, uh, th like guys, this is how I'm able to have sex with a girl on the first night because I can have a conversation like this. You know, if you if you're not comfortable talking to the girl about her butt, you think she's gonna be comfortable with you putting inserting your penis into her vagina and you can't even talk about her butt? No, like if you're a, if like you guys you're going in being like way too nice. If you're try if your goal is to like oh, it's like how do I create attraction? How do I create attraction? What do I say to create attraction? You know, it's like, you got to be so fucking comfortable with your conversation 
the girl's as comfortable as you're comfortable. As, as as comfortable as you can allow it, that is as comfortable as the girl will become in that in that conversation. So if I can joke and I have no problem talking about whether or not she has a big ass, she will equal it and I show her that that's okay and she's not judged for it. That's the thing. You got to be able to show her it's presented in a way that's not judged, you know? And especially with the hotter women, guys won't even be able to bring these conversations up. So the fact that I can do that separates myself very quickly. Plus, I'm kind of saying it in a challenging way on a more attractive girl, really separates yourself very quick. So ironically, I get her back into me. She is really into me. And, um, and now it's at a point I'm leaning back on the bar and she's like, re she's talking into my ear. We're talking five, five minutes goes by. And to be honest, I fucked up the interaction. Not even, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I fucked up the interaction. And I didn't, um, like I said, this was my first real interaction in like two weeks. And I, I was, here's the thing. Like when you get into this fun, challenging, cocky, funny asshole vibe, it, it's a, it's kind of like addicting. Like it's fun, bro. It's fun. It's fun pushing the girl away, having her chase you being this guy. It's fun. And the, the problem was at some point I really should have just um, I really should have just pulled pulled back all of that and and really just got to know her at that point I needed to move more into like qualification more of a get to know you and be a little bit relatable all of that initial stuff the way I was acting is great to create that attraction in a nighttime venue at some point though you got to pull back and be like no, like in all seriousness, though, no, like I'm just having fun. I'm out here and, you know, I'm partying with my friends. We're just in a good mood. It was actually my friend's, um, his mom just opened a restaurant tonight and we were there for the grand opening. We were there all fucking evening and then we were just pre-gaming and I'm out here right now. I'm just, I'm in a really good mood. Sorry if I was like being a little too much, but um, I'm actually, I, I don't say this often, but I'm genuinely intrigued about you. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't If you say that in that moment, okay, now this dude has just become relatable. I went from this playful asshole identity in the bar to this dude that has value, but he's intrigued to get to know me. Now that the value's in place, it makes sense why she would want to get to know me. Before all of that, if I just opened her and said, hey, um, I'm curious about you, she'd be like, I'm not curious about you. Who the fuck are you? Get away. The value is not in place yet. I need in a nighttime loud venue bar, the value and attraction needs to be created first. That's why I come in like that. Where I failed was I didn't flip the switch and become relatable. And I was pushing her away too much. And at one point she said something and I was like, I was like, yo, don't worry. She was looking for her friend. It would have helped if her friend was in the area because then she would have wanted to, to stay in the area. But she was genuinely looking for her friend and her friend wasn't around. And then she started moving away. And then to avoid me over chasing her, and I was still in this too much of a pushy frame. I was like, yo, go find your friend. Go find your friend. Go find your friend. And then eventually she went and found her friend. And she was like 10 people down the bar from me. But now we're in a position of like, neither of us wanted to be the dude, the person that goes back to the other person because it had been too, too challenging on both sides. Although the attraction was there, it was like, I set this frame of like, we're both, no, neither of us wanted to be the lower person, you know, and that's where I fucked up. I should have either before that happened, I should have pulled back and just got to be like, oh, I'm, I'm genuinely curious about you. Look, you're fun. I really like your vibe. You're super feisty and sassy. And I feel like that's why we're like, kind of like bumping heads, but I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of like actually enjoying it. But, um, I genuinely want to know you other than like your name and the fact you're Palestinian, you know, like, I don't know. Tell me something about you. That would have been fucking gold, bro. That would have been so money right then. Oh my God. I wish I could go back and just say that. And I'm so mad at myself for not saying that. I'm really, I'm really mad. I actually wrote that down in my notepad. Wrote that. Wrote, I'm still doing fucking field report, bro. You guys should be doing the same shit, by the way. If you're going out, go back and analyze your interactions and figure out where the fuck you're messing up. And then, you know, next weekend when I go out, I'm going to look at that and be like, when the traction point has been reached, calm the fuck down and be relatable and get to know you, you know? And that, that, that's my goal for next, if, if I don't go out till next Friday, that, that's my goal then, you know? So, but point being, I'm always learning. Do, do I close every time? Absolutely not. Absolutely not.
I've, I've failed way more times than I've closed, but it's still a good thing. Like it, it's, I'm glad, I, I'm glad it happened. It's a learning experience. You know, it's a, it's a great learning experience. Um, so that was, that was what happened over the weekend. And that was the only girl in the venue I was really into. We showed up there really late because of some long story I'm not going to get into. Um, I'm going to get back to the initial lecture. I just wanted to tell you guys my, my weekend, one interaction from my weekend. Uh, it was probably somewhat insightful, but point being create the attraction. And once the attraction has been reached, then it's okay to go into that kind of comfort slash get to know you talk. But me personally, the higher you can build that attraction in the beginning, the better, the more she's going to want to get to know you and the stronger the connection is going to be when you do move into comfort, you know, because the higher my value is now, when I say I'm curious about you, it doesn't come off so thirsty because I've been so challenging and so pushing away at some point when I do make that switch, it's genuine. It's genuine. And now if I actually make a connection with her, it's strong because I've proven that I'm social. I have social proof. I don't give a fuck about you. At least not yet. At least not until, at least not until it's earned, you know? Um, so very, very insightful things, I think, you know, for everybody on this lecture. But let's get back to the initial um, part of this lecture, which is, I don't even fucking know it anymore. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about my journey through game. So <sighs> where the fuck was I? Brendan, where was I? Do you know? I mean, I'm trying you, to were ta- you, were ta- you were talking about like maybe marrying this chick, t- going into like, okay, being more open to like having multiple partners. So you were kind of somewhere in there where you were like trying to get out of the frame of like, oh, okay, yeah. the conservative. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Before I jump back in there, let me just see what the group chat's saying. Um, uh, Nick says, just getting over the nerves unless I'm wrong. Yeah. A lot of it is, I mean, it's also theory as well, but yeah, initially, to, to make that first couple steps, getting over the nerves. John says, yeah, you just instinctually think getting rejected a bunch would make your nerves worse and lower your ego, but it doesn't really. No, it, it doesn't. If anything, it shows you, dude, I, I got rejected and fuck, I'm, I'm still okay. It's actually showing your, you're, you're training your brain that it's okay to get rejected and that nothing bad happened from it. That's really what it is, you know? That's all it is. By the way, I don't know if my, my friend Sly's on this, but but Sly, if you're on this lecture, fucking show your face. I don't know if that's you or not. It just says user's iPhone. But you could turn your video on if that's you. Um, yeah, my guy. Yeah, why are you hiding? <laughs> you don't need to mute. You can unmute if you want to unmute, but you could just stay muted if you want to stay muted. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, dude, the, the blowouts, honestly, it just it trains your brain to show that it's okay. And that's not, it's not a fucking big deal. If you get rejected, if anything, it's like, dude, you can keep opening. Nothing bad's going to happen. Keep opening. It's not a big deal. You know? So, um, Kyle says so fucking true. Yes. Uh, Kyle Hosen says, I love it. John says, I feel that laugh my ass off. I'm way too cocky challenging sometimes, but it's fun. That's a good save. Yeah, John, that's a good way, but you got to calibrate it and you got to save it before it's, it's too, oh, slice that lifetime. <laughs> hey my guy <laughs> well, that's funny as fuck um nobody understands that though anyway so yeah that's a good save you got to calibrate in that moment before it gets too before you push her too far and it's gone find out you're starting to lose her due to be being too challenging and and pull back and just let her know like the situation that that's a good way to phrase it to get her back uh john says bro i do the shit with the journals for sports, but never thought of it for game. Well, I guess game is a sport of sorts. Yes. Kyle Hosen says, Palestinian girl. Yes. Nick says, that's smart. I fucked up bad Friday night. I built some attraction and it was noticeable because when I left, she came back to me and we both wanted to hang out, but she left me on red after being a little too pushy trying to hang with her over text. Yeah. So you need to create that connection stronger in person initially. You know, you built up the attraction, but without the connection in place and the qualification in place in the initial interaction, and you like, if, if all you have is, a, if it is attraction and a phone number, it's not going to go anywhere because later on, when you're not in the picture and you're, and she doesn't see you, the attraction isn't there anymore. And you're just a phone number. You know, the attraction is only temporary. That's a chemical. The connection is a memory, you know, like think about anybody you've ever had a connection with. It's still there. Right. Um, but with girls, it's like the attraction is 
comes and goes with stimulus. The connection and that emotional feeling, that, that's what stays. That's how you reduce the flake, and that's how you get her back out. Um, so, yeah, you, didn't, you, you created the attraction enough to the point where in the moment she was like, yeah, I'll give you my number. Yeah, I want to see you. I kind of want to fuck this guy. But once you leave and that, attract, that attraction's no longer there, what is she really left with? Nothing. And that's the same reason that that girl that I saw over the weekend, she's not thinking about me right now. She's not thinking about me. In the moment she was, but dude, girls have like ADD when it comes to stimulus. If, if you don't have her heart, a couple days goes by, she doesn't give a fuck about you. Like there's this girl I've been thinking about for the last like fucking two months, bro. Dude, I've, I'm, I'm curious if I ever even crossed her mind like one time in the last two months. She crosses my mind like every fucking hour of every day. <laughs> Guys are different. Girls, you need to get that emotional connection. All right. So, and la last one, Matt says, you were talking about when you were with RSD doing infield and that's when the report comes in. I, I don't know what you're saying, Matt. You got to clarify, unless those are two different comments. Um, I was, I was never with RSD, by the way. Oh, I, okay. Um, the rapport, yeah. I was talking about like after the attraction. Yeah. Yeah. That, the, after that, she's left with nothing. So that's where the rapport would come in. Right. Right, right, right. And that's when I was saying, um, I would have pulled back and said like, look, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I think I'm doing a little bit too much, but I'm genuinely curious about you other than the fact you're Palestinian. Sorry. I'm just like, I'm in a good mood tonight, but, um, I don't know, like, tell me something about you. Who are you other than, you know, you're Palestinian, but like, who the fuck are you really? You know, something. And dude, listen to the way I say that. I'm not, it's not a formal interview. It's, it's showing the girl that she can be real with me. You know, I'm not saying like, hello, I'm Kyle. How are you doing this evening? No, I'm saying it in a way that's like, look, I'm a cool ass dude. There's no judgment. Like, yo, what did I say exactly? I said, I was like, who the fuck are you really? <laughs> you know, that's going to give the girl, um, it just shows her there's no judgment and she can just let it out. You know, because like, everybody is just waiting for that permission. You know, everybody's waiting for that permission that 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 um to just be themselves. You know, because like everybody knows who they really are when no one's around and there's no judgment. So if you can present that to the girl that there's no judgment, like, oh, who the fuck are you really though? You know, like honestly, you know, like I get you. Look, you're a cute Palestinian girl, but like I don't know who the I don't know who the fuck you are. You could be just like crazy. You know, but I'm not gonna lie. You got a good vibe. You got a good energy. I think I'm having a little bit too much fun, but I'm genuinely curious about you. Like, who the fuck are you? That shit will hit. Promise you that shit will hit. I wish I could have said that shit in the moment. So anyway, let's go back. I'm not going to take any more chat questions because I'm, I'm, we're getting super off topic and we're at like two hours at this point. Okay, so where were we in the timeline? Um, got starting to get into the game. Did a couple approaches with this coach. I finished that day off after, after I did like 10 approaches, I got to a point where I was able to stop a girl and have a friendly conversation. And at the end of the conversation, I asked for the number and she was like, no, I'm sorry. It's okay. That was like how the last interaction of the day went. I did. I never got to a point where I was creating an extreme amount of attraction, but I did get to a point where I was in a social flow. I could open with no pressure, no more nerves and create an interaction. And I, was, I wanted to keep going. He came up to me. He's like, I think we got enough footage for today. And my mind was like, fuck, I feel like I'm just getting started. Because like the first like six were like blowouts, you know? And then I finally was getting people to stop. And then he was like, all right, I think we, get, I think we got enough for today. So I took the bus home. But I was super proud of myself that day. Because keep in mind, up until that point, I had never done an approach before. So I'm going home. I just banged out 10 approaches. I learned a lot. I was in a social flow. I was hyped up, you know? But once I got back to my town... I kept studying and shit, but I was still like afraid to go out and approach that much. I, like I never went out and did day game or anything like that. Over the course of the winter, I would go out. I was still with my girlfriend at the time. And that whole winter into spring, I started studying game like religiously. I first started, I found out about Todd, found out about RSD, studied everybody, studied a shitload of theory while with my girlfriend still. So like when things are good with my girlfriend, I'm cool with it. But when every now and then when we start fighting, I'm like, yo, fuck this, yo. Like I'm, I'm trying to go out and game. I'm trying to get my, my game up, you know? That's what I was thinking. So spring, summer, springtime comes along and the group of kids that I told you about previously that I was going out with, um, 
the 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 leader of it, like Justin and, and a couple of my other friends, he was like, yo, uh, we should get a shore house for the summer down in the, in Jersey Shore. Like we could walk to the clubs. There's fucking jam-packed parties like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every weekend. And we can all live out there, you know, and all my friends were down. So we booked a shore house for that summer. So I was souped. I was souped. I was like, dude, I'm going to be gaming. Um, I'm going to be gaming a shitload. Elliot says, yeah, best part of living down the shore. Yeah, exactly, dude. Memorial Day to Labor Day. Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's what you fucking live down the shore for. Um, so the whole spring and some, uh, whole spring and winter, I'm just studying game. And I'm, I'm not going out and approaching. I'm still with my girlfriend. But we get the shore house with my boys. And, you know, through Justin and a bunch of other friends, we start throwing a lot of parties at the, at the house. And I'm starting to become more social. I'm finally starting to like game a little bit, if you will, if that makes sense. Like I'm starting to like really focus on my eye contact. And for the first time in my life, I'm having girls tell me, you, you have a really intense look about you. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, well, what does that mean? Like, I thought I'm just holding like good eye contact. But the reality of it was, it was like, I was pushing myself to try and hold good eye contact. Because prior to this, I didn't have good eye contact. It was unnatural for, for me to hold eye contact with a stranger. So now I was literally forcing myself to like try and hold eye contact. And when you're trying to hold it, the girls feel the energy. It doesn't matter about your eyes looking at their eyes. It's about the feeling that they feel during the eye contact. And when I'm feeling like I need to like struggle to hold the eye contact, that's what was provoking two or three different occasions. These like girls told me like, you got like a really like intense stare about you. In hindsight, it's a good thing. If you're struggling with eye contact, the next step is forcing yourself to hold eye contact, you know, cause you need to get comfortable with it. That, how do you get comfortable with it? You push it to a point that is uncomfortable and you push it to a point that is uncomfortable over and over and over. And as you keep doing that, eventually you get comfortable. There's a new comfort level, you know? So I started to get better with that. I started closing a couple girls that weren't cold approaches, but like they were at the house for like parties. So me and my girlfriend got into a big fight at the big, at the beginning of summer, pretty much provoked by me because I didn't have the balls to break up with her because I fucking love this girl. But at the same time, I wanted to go out and game and I couldn't cheat on her. So I pretty much provoked a breakup, but she had to like create the breakup. So like we weren't together, but we still liked each other. But at least it gave me permission to go out and game. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just not, I'm not, I wasn't a cheater. So, so over summer, we're like, me and her are on and off. But every time we're off, I'm, I'm, I'm going out. And I think that was the first summer I started fucking women, you know, since, since before the relationship. Um, so I remember, I think that, that summer, like in the first half of the summer, I closed like two girls. So this is like almost a year after I did that, that student breakdown with that no name coach. This is like the following summer. Uh, it's like June of that summer. I, I, I think I closed like two girls between Mar, uh, May and June off of the house parties and stuff. Fast forward, July comes around and I paid $1,500 to take a one week course with Todd. And over, the week, over that one week, we did day game and night game, uh, four sessions of each, plus lecture at Todd's, plus drills and a shitload of approaching so I really gained a lot of momentum and I was starting to actually get into like a, a, a decent grasp of what game was, you know, a good understanding of what game was. And then the second half of summer, I started going on like approach frenzies. I wasn't closing a lot, but I was starting to become a guy that was going out and opening 10, at least 10 girls a night, you know, like I would, you know, granted my friends were all partying at the shore house. So I was getting wasted but I was going out drunk and opening like at least 10 girls a night. And I was getting very good at having an interaction, creating attraction, getting an understanding of what attraction was, getting blown out a lot, but learning how to go up, show some intent at some point. Um, pr prior to this, I would go up and interact and I would get a lot of, um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, it was, it was great talking to you. Nice to meet you. You know, take care. But you know, there was no attraction. After taking the course and after kind of like learning how to show a little bit of intent and kind of being a little bit direct, 
I was starting to create attraction, but I wasn't closing a lot because I wasn't leading and I wasn't creating comfort, but I became this attraction guy. I became this like, you remember I just told you the, how the interaction went over the weekend? I started doing a lot of that kind of stuff. It was like, I was like too cocky and too challenging. And I had a lot of fun doing that, but I wasn't, those guys don't get laid. Like I said, like I went out Friday, I didn't get laid. I didn't get that girl's number. And, and I, I told you exactly why that happened, you know, but, but, but back then, this is 2016. I didn't know why I just thought like, fuck, I don't know what, I, like I was trying to figure out what it was, but in that, in that time period, in hindsight, it was like, okay, I'm clearly creating attraction with some of these females. However, I'm failing to recognize certain points when I could be escalating physically and certain points when I should be calibrating and switching into more of a comfort type of vibe. I was failing to realize when those points were. And I was so focused on creating attraction, learning how to flirt. Because th these were things I had never experienced in my life. So to get those things and to kind of get girls created attraction, it's kind of self-validating. You know, it's, it's cool. It's cool to go out and talk to a stranger and get a cute girl like flirting with you. If you've never done that before, like it's fucking fun. It's fun as fuck. Honestly, like I said, I lost the girl over the weekend and I'm still losing the girl. You would think by now, like I would fucking, you know, this dude's a fucking, you're watching a master at work. Like, you don't, you would think like, I wouldn't fuck up. Right. Um, but the, the reality is like, it's so fun sometimes that like, I still get a little bit caught up in it. You know, because after you fuck so many girls, bro, like does another lay really make that much of a difference to you? Honestly, like in, in the moment, I'm not thinking like, I need to fuck this girl. You know, that's kind of, that's probably why the reason I lost her. But anyway, um, so the rest of the summer, I think was my first actual cold approach pull. I met this girl out at the venue. I don't remember the open, but I actually, I ran into my boss from the restaurant that I was delivering at there. Who was like 35 friendly, funny, social, natural, extroverted dude. He was there. I was talking to him. There was a crowd around him since he's natural. And since I was his employee, I was a delivery driver for him. He's buying me drinks and my status is going up, but I'm vibing. And I'm, I'm like fresh off of Todd's one week course. So I'm going to, I'm interacting with everybody, you know? And I got this girl super into me to the point where we started making out in the club, start making out in the club. It's almost the end of the night. We go for pizza. We buy the pizza and you know, we can walk to my shore house, which is right down the street. So we walk down the street and you know, my friends are having a party downstairs, but we don't even make it home and we're making out in the middle of the street. And I brought her behind this car. I was about to fuck her right there. Like it, it was on. Um, but anyway, we were almost at the house. I remember making out and fucking throwing the pizza like into someone's fucking backyard. Like I didn't give a fuck. You know, I was like ready to smash. Um, <laughs> Nick's like, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> so we, we end up walking back to the, uh, um, we walk back to the shore house. I bring her upstairs, escalate straight to sex, straight to sex and fuck this girl. And that was like the first time I had ever done that shit. And it was awesome. It was fucking awesome, dude. It was, it was really a, um, it was an eye-opening experience. Although I feel like we kind of pulled each other. Uh, actually, to be honest, I don't really know. That was like, I was super drunk this night. My boss was feeding me drinks. I barely remember. I can't even remember what she looks like anymore. Um, so that was, that was that night. That, that, the summer ended. And I got to be honest, once the summer ended and we moved out of the house, I started really missing my girlfriend, like a lot. Keep in mind, we had been together for fucking like four or five years at this point. And yeah, a one night stand is fun, especially if you've never done it before. But like once you move back home and you're out of the shore house and you're not going out and gaming like six days out of the week, you're not gaming. And, you know, you have a lot of alone time and you're not on your purpose and you're just like at a delivery job and you're smoking a lot of weed. Like, dude, you missed your girl, you know, like it's, it, it was in my DNA. She's in my DNA. She's a part of me at this point. She lived with me for a fucking year and a half. We've been dating for four years. Yeah, we were on it. We were broken up at the time, but I still fucking wanted her. I, I mean, yes, I wanted, I had this urge to keep gaming, but I still wanted her. I still loved her. We didn't break up on like bad terms. We broke up because I wanted to game, you know what I'm saying? And I was gaming. But the problem was I was comparing every girl that I had met to my girlfriend. And no girl off of a first impression 
is going to compare to a five-year relationship. It's just, it's impossible. It's impossible. What you need to do is compare the first impression to the first impression, you know? It, and, and if you could do that, then it would be a fair a trade-off, but you can't do that because when you think about the first impression, you're going to correlate every other memory and your feelings to the girl. So it's like, I was comparing every girl that I met to my girlfriend and no first impression is going to be able to top a fucking four year experience with another girl that you still love at the end of the day. So moved out of the shore house, still wanted this girl. She started talking to this kid and that's when I really wanted her back. Once I felt like I was losing her, came fucking crying back to her. Um, but ironically, since I kind of broke, broke it off and she knew it was because I wanted to go out and meet other women and all of this shit, she's kind of lacking the validation from me. Her attraction for me is still very high, which is the same reason that any girl that gets cheated on by her man, she is still attracted to her man. If you think about it, any girl that's ever been cheated on by her man if anything, she's probably more attracted to her man. I mean, yes, she, unless she was already like on the, unless it was already on the way out and she was looking for a reason to end it. But like, you can't really get any bigger of a fucking shot to your ego than knowing your man went out and fucked another girl, right? Like, like how, do, like that's the most unvalidating thing you could do as a boyfriend if you think about it. And that's the same reason that most guys, um, it's the same reason that like most guys that cheat actually have the girls like really into them because they're not so needy because they're not so like conforming to the girl, you know, it, it's almost like the girl knows she can be replaced a little bit. And that's kind of why the attraction is there. It's kind of a mind fuck, you know, because you would think that by being faithful and letting the girl know that she's the only one and this and that, like it would really confirm everything and solidify it. But ironically, it doesn't help in terms of attraction. To, to mother nature, that means fucking nothing. It means fucking jack shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so by me wanting her back, I was actually able to get her back very quickly. All I need, uh, you know, I, I came crying back to her. We got back together. I got what I wanted. And ironically, by getting what she wanted, is like once I had her back, I was like, you know, month went by, two months went by, everything was great. But then, you know, I, I'm still learning game the whole time. And I already opened this door into pickup. It's like, it's, it's almost like once you swallowed a pill, bro, it, you can't fucking go back and forget everything that you just experienced. You know what I'm saying? Like the, you can't, it, it's just like, once you're in the matrix, bro, you can't, you can't go back to living a normal life, dude. You just can't, you can't because like you could try. And I was trying to, and, and dude, it's, it's sustainable for a little while, but it's sustainable until it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's like at some point you're like, okay, but like, you know, what about that other life? <laughs> like you can't just forget, you can't just say goodbye to all of that. And like forever, at least not that early on, you know, like when you're still intrigued and you, and you feel like you're still improving and you feel like there's, there's so much that's still unexplained. It's like, if you're Neo and you just got into this matrix, dude, it literally is a matrix. Like literally when I say we're, we're, we're a small, we're maybe like 3% of men. If that, like we're literally in a matrix guys. And the more, the deeper you dive into this shit, the more and more you're going to see everybody else is on the outside of the matrix. And it's, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. But at the same time, it's an easy way to build your confidence up. Once you, once you learn as much as I know, like a lot of guys are like, damn, how are you so confident? Yes, a lot of it is from the reference experiences and stuff. But like, I would also argue that like, it's like, Jesus, if you know as much theory that I know, and you spend so much time studying this shit, like, how could you not be confident knowing that less than 0.1% of men know the amount that I know about female attraction? How could you not be confident knowing, you know, like I wouldn't even say one out of a thousand. I would say literally the amount of knowledge I know on this is Jesus Christ. I don't know. I would probably say one in a million. Honestly, I, I think, I think I'm being fair to say one in a million. There, let, hold on. Let me do a calculation. There's fucking 3.5 billion people, 3.5 billion men. Um, one out of a million would be, that would mean that there's 3,000 other men on the planet that know what I know. 
uh, there's probably more than that. There's, actually, I don't, I don't really, I really don't know. But I, anyway, I'm not going to get caught up in this. But I would argue I'm like one in a million in terms of theory because I really, dude, you, you got to put in five, at least five thousand hours studying this shit if you want to know the amount of theory I know. At least I would even argue ten thousand hours. So, um, anyway, um, where the fuck was I? Oh, Brendan, where was I? <laughs> you're, you're muted. Fuck. Does anybody know where the fuck I was? Uh, okay. So not, like I said, you're basically finishing up how you were, you, you know, with your girlfriend and you're trying to really break away from the like relationship thing. Oh, okay. That's how and she's more attracted. She's more attracted to you now that you're. Okay. Okay. So I, okay. Thank you, thank you. All right. So I, so I get her back. We're back and everything's cool for a couple months. And then at some point, um, I'm like, cool, got her back, been fucking her, everything's cool. However, I still want a game. You know, it's like January at this point, and my boys are like, yo, are we going to book another house for this upcoming summer? Because, like, you know, we got to book it now. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. I'm trying to, like, double up on what I did last year, you know? So we end up booking the shore house for the following year, and I keep everything cool with my girl until, like, April comes along. And then once April's around, the same bullshit happens again, bro. Like I was like, it's summertime. I want to, I want to work on game. And yes, I fucking love this girl, but I can't be with this girl for the rest of my life right now. And and I'm at a point where I want to keep improving at this shit. So, you know, we never became official throughout that winter into spring. And then when summertime came, I kind of just let her know that like, you know, I'm going to keep doing my thing. And at that point, she hit a breaking point and was like, okay, well, this is fucked up and this is unfair because I can't keep hooking up with you and fucking you if this isn't going anywhere. If you're not going to commit to me, then like we're done, you know? So it was the beginning of summer and it hurt, but at the same time, it was what I wanted at the time. It was what I wanted at the time. So she started, um, what the fuck happened at this point? Oh, fuck. I, I just realized I had the timeline fucked up. I had the timeline fucked up. I actually hadn't taken the course with Todd yet. The, the summer before this was when I did the infield breakdown with the instructor. This is the point. Now that my girlfriend gave me this ultimatum and was like, if you're not going to commit, we're done. She, we stopped talking and she started talking to some other dude. This is when I took the course with Todd for the first time. This year, I went out and started approaching a lot. Started approaching a lot. I took the, took the course with Todd, started approaching a lot. And um, I still didn't pull. I still didn't pull, but I got better at opening and I got better at socializing. Pedro, what's up, dude? Welcome. If you're, if you're just joining in. Welcome to the chat, brother. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I still wasn't pulling. But... I, I was at a point where I was now I was at a point where I was going out and I was attracting women. I was getting phone numbers. You know, at this point I probably had like maybe 10 lays throughout the course of like the last year and like the two or three before my girlfriend, um, probably 10, maybe less eight or nine. I don't, I don't know what it was at exactly, but you know, nothing crazy. You know, I, w I wasn't pulling actively. Half of those lays were off of like social circle and, and, and bullshit like that. Um, but my game was getting a little bit better. I was comfortable going out and opening, I was opening way more and I was creating way more attraction than I ever had. Um, and I was starting to get consistent phone numbers, but I wasn't going on dates or anything like that. So that, that's how that summer went. And then guys, the same bullshit happened at the end of this summer, the same bullshit happened at the end of the, the previous summer. My girl, I, w I was comparing every girl to this same girl and we went no contact the whole summer. And I was really starting to miss her at this point. I was really starting to miss it. Boss says, welcome, bro. You got you to watch the beginning. You're like fucking, bro, you're, th you're three hours late. You got, you got a lot of catching up to do, but it's all right. But, but welcome. We're, we're talking about my journey in game. And the point that we're talking about right now is I'm at age 26. Currently, I'm 29. But the point in the story, I'm 26. And um, I'm starting to get more in a game. And I'm pretty much starting to break up with my girlfriend. So pretty much my girl, we, we didn't talk that whole summer. I was approaching the whole summer. Summer ends. I want her back again. But at this point, I, go, you, I was thinking I would be able to get her back again. 
you know, but at this point I go back to try and get her back. At which point she tells me, don't, I need my space. I'm talking to someone and it's going really well. So out of respect of him and out of respect for my emotions, I need my space. Don't reach out to me. Don't talk to me. Goodbye. And that shit crushed me. That shit crushed me because it was cool going out and gaming and shit. But like in the back of my mind, I, I kind of knew I still had this girl in the palm of my hand, you know? And that's kind of why I was still doing all of this shit the way I was. But once I wanted her back and then she removed that, it, it, it's almost like there's like, dude, there's this power dynamic going on this whole time. It's like someone's always chasing somebody, you know? And it was like, when she was chasing me, I was cool with it. And I would still keep going out and gaming. But then at some point she stopped chasing me. And then I started getting more into her. She stopped pursuing me as much. She kind of pulled back, started getting more into her. And then I stopped approaching so much. And my feelings for her kind of strength. And she started seeing somebody else. Now I started really wanting her. Started really wanting her. And thus she didn't really want me anymore. And now I'm starting to become that needy dude. And now she's telling me, you can't have me. Now I'm really, really wanting her. And this is where I fell into this downward spiral. Summer ended. This is summer 2017. It's like August 2017. She tells me, don't talk to me. I'm talking to this kid, Chris, and it's going really well. So I need my space. Don't talk to me. Guys, I then spent the next six months trying to get this girl back. I didn't talk to anybody else. I went into full beta. I was so determined to get this girl back. I was like really working on myself. I did everything that she would want me to do. I did, like when we were dating, she started complaining that I was smoking too much weed. She started complaining that I was like too much in a game. She started complaining I wasn't in the church enough. She was complaining that, um, what else? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what else, but I started doing everything that she would have wanted me to do, even though we weren't talking. I started going to church by myself and like posting it on my stories. It was like shit that I would never do. I was going to church by myself. <laughs> I was going to church by myself. I was like reading all the time, which is cool. I, you know, I'm, I, I encourage reading, but like, you know, I feel like all of these things were out of reaction, out of trying to get her back. And I wasn't dating. I wasn't gaming. I was just thinking about her. And guys, I wrote her this letter. I wrote her this letter. 32 pages long. 32 pages long, I typed out a letter to her, trying to get her back. Double space, so I guess 16 pages. But 32 pages. Like I said, anything I've ever done, I do to the extreme. I'm not even joking. I'm not, like, when I said that statement, dude, like, I wanted her back. I was obsessed with that. And anything I've been obsessed with getting back, I've gotten back. I pro or anything I've ever wanted I, I pushed myself. I spent from August until like January trying to get this girl back, even gave her this whole fucking letter and like really did all of this shit. And even though I read the whole fucking letter to her and she was like a, uh, um, in love and she loved it, she was still in love with this other dude. You know what I'm saying? And by me being like beta and weak, she's not in, like you would think like that, that was everything she ever wanted. It was every, that was everything she ever wanted, logically, on paper, no pun intended, but literally, that, that was what it was. And ironically, by giving that to her, you would think that, that that's, that's what all it would take to get her back. And I was so sure that I would have her back, you know? But guess what happened? Fucking nothing. She then proceeded to drag me through the dirt over the next two, three months, keeping me around as on the back burner while she was still dating this dude. And I was obsessing over her, thinking... Okay, it's only a matter of time before she sees what's going on. No, motherfucker. At the end of the day, she's getting piped by this dude every night. She's out there getting piped by this dude every fucking night. And I'm home alone crying, telling myself, I almost got her. I almost got her. Because I'm listening to her words because she's still hitting me up. And as long as she knows that she's still got you in the palm of her hand, and she's got your balls fucking squeezed. It's not attractive. It's not attractive at all. So I spent from August to like January, February. And then February finally came around and it was Valentine's Day. And I had finally gotten to this point where I was like, eventually 
you'll hit this point where it's like you'll hit a threshold. There's only so much pain you can suffer. You know, there's only, there's only so much pain you can suffer before your body tells you, okay, it's actually causing me more pain to try and get this girl back. You know, like, uh, like by trying to pursue this girl is actually causing me more pain than the potential benefit. And I, I had passed the threshold and I, eventually I hit this point where I was like, I'm done. I'm done. It's, it's, I, I saw her act. I stopped looking. I stopped listening so much to her words and started looking at her actions. At the end of the day, she was still with this dude six months later. You know, I reached out to her on Valentine's day. We had a talk and I just, I reached out to her just to tell her, um, Hey, listen, you know, I came to the conclusion that I've been kind of foolish for chasing you for the last seven months. And ultimately I think I just need to let go of this idea that I have of you and me in the future. And I've been obsessing over it and it's not healthy. It's not healthy at all. And I I need to come to terms with the realization that you're with this other guy. And I don't know why I haven't accepted that. I've been failing to accept that. I don't know why, but it, I, I guess I've just been in this painful denial and my ego and everything has blinded me from the fact of what the fuck the reality is. But I can finally see it and I can finally say with confidence, I need to let you go. I need to let you go. And I genuinely mean that. And that doesn't mean that I don't love you, but I need to do this for myself. And I finally acknowledge that and I've come to terms with that. So I'm actually just calling you to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had an amazing time with Chris. And I genuinely mean that. And I just wanted to say goodbye. You're not going to hear from me for for a while. And I'm going to be working on myself. And guys, this was not out of a reaction to try and bait a reaction out of her. This was genuinely what I felt in this moment. And that's the point you need to hit. You need to get to that point, you know, that point. Um, <laughs> um, so you need to get to that part. And once you, once you hit that point and you can genuinely say that to the girl, I said goodbye. She was crying at this point, ironically enough. <laughs> so fucked up. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, I gave her everything she wanted before this on paper. She didn't want me back. Finally, do all this. Say goodbye. We hang up the phone. I go no contact with her. Go no contact with her, right? It's February. I think it's Valentine's Day. So it's February. My boy that I met at um, the course with Todd over the summer, this guy, this guy, Rob, Schwartz Rob. You've probably seen him in some of my infields on YouTube. His name's Schwartz Rob. You see him. Um, <laughs> I met him at, at Todd's course. He was like, yo, dude, RSD is having this like winter summit in Miami. Or, or yeah, winter summit in Miami at the end of February. I don't know if you're interested, but like we could rent a uh, Airbnb in Miami and just go out and game like five days in a row. It's in like two weeks. We could drive down. I was like, fuck yeah, that's exactly what I need at this point to get my mind off this bitch. You know, it was like a month. It was a month away. So like I let three weeks go by. We went no contact. And then finally me and my boy drive down to Miami, go to RSD's fucking winter summit, spend the next four nights going out gaming. A game wasn't that good at this point, guys. Like, I didn't pull the entire week. Um, I don't even think I hooked up with anyone. I think Schwartz Rob actually pulled and closed (coughs) on the last night. (coughs) Hold on. Schwartz Rob pulled and closed, and I was sitting outside the B&B on the stairwell. FaceTiming. You know what it was, though? I met an amazing woman while I was out there. I met an amazing woman who was like 35, who, who had an amazing connection with. She was beautiful. We didn't fuck. But I had, I'm, I had an amazing interaction and connection with her, and it really got my mind off of my ex at the time. So a month had gone by, a month and a half had gone by. I wasn't thinking about this girl anymore. We went no contact. I'm in Miami. I had this amazing fucking night. It's the second to the last day there, and I'm with Rob. It's daytime now. Rob closed the night before. I just went, I just went to the beach and meditated for the sunrise, feeling great. Got a nice little tan going posting some shit on my story. I'm driving over to Publix. If any of you guys have been to Florida, you know they're like Publix is like the shop right or like the Walmart over there. And um driving to the driving I haven't I haven't my mind is finally off of this girl. My mind's been off this girl for like a week now. I'm feeling fucking great. I'm driving to Walmart. My phone goes off. I look down at my phone and it's my ex calling me. I was like what the fuck? 
Like literally, I like I pulled the phone out of my pocket. I was like, I'm driving. I was like, what the fuck? Like, it's so weird. Like, why are you calling me? What the fuck? This is what I've been wanting, but like, why are you calling me now? I don't even want to fucking talk to you anymore. I, I mean, I still want to talk to you, but like, fuck, part of me doesn't even want to answer. I didn't answer the phone call. Keep driving. She texts me 10 minutes later. Hey, just wanted to let you know I've been thinking about you. And I hope you're having a really awesome time in Miami. And I really want to talk to you. What the fuck? <laughs> Guys, this is how females, this is how male to female dynamics work. I'm so glad I went through all this, by the way, because goddamn, this is fucking... Although this bitch fucking dragged me through the dirt. I mean, granted, I, I dragged her through the dirt a lot as well. We dragged each other through the dirt. But that's the same reason me and her are so mentally strong at this point, honestly. Because um, the back and forth is just crazy. The back and forth power dynamic over the course of a year and a half. And the lessons learned through all that is just crazy. So she calls me up. I answer the phone. Or she texts me. I text her back. She calls me again. I pick up the phone. I start talking to her. I start talking to her, I start getting like really excited because I'm not really over her. You know, it's only been like a month. Um, I start getting really excited. It feels really good to talk to her. All these chemicals are being released in my body. It feels really good to talk to her again. Um, she goes, yeah, I really want to see you again when you get back on Monday. I just need to handle some things before I can meet up with you. Referring to, I need to break up with my boyfriend before I can hang out with you. And I'm getting all excited. I was like, fuck. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. I was like, yo, do that and then call me. And I'm showing way too much interest. In the back of my mind, in hindsight, I should have been playing this shit way more skeptical, way more challenging. It's like, bitch, you just dragged me through the dirt for eight months. And the second you call, I'm at your fucking every beck and call. Like, you want to meet up? Yeah, sure. Tell me what time and day. I'm there. That's not how it should be, guys. Like, you're the fucking man. You're the fucking prize. This bitch just clowned you. He's reaching out now and, oh, you want to meet up? I should have even picked up the phone for like five phone calls. And then finally, I should have been like, this is how I should have answered the phone. I think I've, I've said this on a different lecture. Either you say sorry and we have something to talk about or I'm hanging up the phone call right now. What do you mean? Eh? That's how I should have handled the fucking, that, you, want to, you want to get a girl back in your life like a fucking boss and have her on your terms? That's how you answer the phone call. That's how you answer the phone call. But instead, I answer the phone call. Hey, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, oh, I'm great. Start spilling every 15-minute conversation about everything I've been doing. Like, you know, I'm so excited about all this bullshit. Blah, 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 You know? Her attractions, meanwhile, her attractions just going down, probably. You know? Why, why was her attraction so high to me? Hmm. Let's see. I just told her I'm done talking to you. I'm going to be going out and fucking other girls, and I will never pursue you again. And we went no contact. Six weeks later, she calls me. That is why she is attracted to me. You need to follow that. You don't go back. Just because she calls you, that doesn't mean you go right back into being a fucking soft-ass beta motherfucker, which is what I did. You know? And I had to learn the painful way, which you're about to find out about. <laughs> so... I answer the phone call. Yeah, I just got to figure out some things with my boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'll call you up on Monday and let you know what's up. Monday comes by. I fly back. I've been thinking about her nonstop for the rest of the Miami trip. Fly back Monday. Monday goes by. Don't hear from the bitch. Tuesday goes by. No call, no text still. Wednesday comes by. Now I'm, like, fucking panicking. I don't know why I'm panicking, but I'm, like, panicking. I'm, like, what's good? She should have called me by now. She said Monday. It's, it's fucking Wednesday. Like no text, nothing. Like, what's up? I got to reach out. I got to fucking prove myself to her. I got to get this girl back. Beta ass fucking mindset, bro. Wednesday, I reach out, question mark. I reach out, question mark to her, dot, 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 question mark. She goes, hey, I'm sorry. I thought I was ready to see you. I thought I was ready for all of this, but it turns out I'm actually not. And I apologize for that. I need to get more in touch with myself and figure out things. I'll talk to you soon. Fucking shout it. Gun to my fucking heart. It's like, what the fuck? And I'm right back to square one where I was like six weeks ago. It was like everything. I, I had let go with this bitch. I was like leveling up, leveling up, leveling up. She sees me getting away. She's like, wait, come back. Okay, I'm coming back. 
uh, I don't know. I'm good. But now I'm back down here still. And she's not with me. It was like fucking annoying, bro. It was painful too. It was fucking painful. I felt stupid as fuck. I was like, why is this fucking happening? I don't understand, yo. If I could just chill with this girl one time, if I could just fuck her one time, like all of these emotions will come back and she'll know that we're meant to be. She'll know we're meant to be. This was my thought process in that moment. I was like, I just need to see her what one time, you know? So she says all that. Um, I don't reach out. I wait. Oh no, I think I said some butthurt message. Um, I sent some message like, okay, well, just so you know, um, I just had an amazing week in my, it was a little butter. It was like, just so you know, I had an amazing week in Miami. I met this beautiful older woman that I had a great connection with. And you know what? I feel stupid for trying to meet back up with you. So you know what? Don't hit me up again. It was kind of butthurt, but it was kind of in the right direction, but it wasn't really what needed to be said. You know, um, what really needed to be said was the, the moment she reached out again, either you apologize or I'm hanging up the fucking phone right now. What do you mean? Eh, hang up the phone. She calls back. What do you mean? I, yes. I, this is, she's like, Kyle, this is real. What are you talking about? Yes. This is realer than you'll ever fucking realize. Hang up the fucking phone. She calls again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Like, what are you sorry about? Sorry? That, no, no, that's, that's not even what the fuck it is. Listen, I need you to understand something. I've been trying to, to see you for like fucking months now. And you just reached out saying you're going to see me. And now you're bailing. Like, this is so, this is stupid. Y'all like, honestly, I'm just, I'm done. Don't call me again, unless you're dead serious about hanging out with me. And if you don't ever, if you're unsure about it, then honestly, like, just don't call me. Okay. I'm cool with that. You know, I wish you the best. Like something like that would have been way more boss, way more boss. And I, and ideally you don't even do that. You know, what's really boss is you go out and you find a fucking hotter bitch. And then you fucking post her on your social media. You get a hotter bitch to fall in love with you and let that girl see it. You know, that's, that's the real way of, of doing it. And you could be like, oh, well, that's manipulative. That's deceptive. Dude, I, I tried the other way. I told you the other way. I told you what the fuck happened when you do the other way. You know, I'm not saying this because, because I'm a cold hearted dude. I'm a fucking nice guy, guys. I'm a really nice guy. I'm too nice of a guy. I got fucking beat to the ground because of it, you know? And now a couple of the friends that see me now are like, dude, I don't know. I think you're being a little harsh to these girls. I, I, I don't know. Like, it sounds like you're testing them a little too much. You're, you're kind of being an asshole. And, uh, you know, I have a sister, bro. And that, that shit's not okay. It's like, all right, dude, come see me in two years when the girl you love shatters your heart because you were too much of a fucking nice guy and you lost her respect over time. And then you'll hit me up. Dude, I don't know what I should do right now. Like, She's fucking saying she doesn't know how she feels about the whole thing. And I, I, should I stay with her? It's like, yeah, bro. Where were you in 2019 when I was fucking telling you this shit, bro? The, thing, the, the reality of it is you don't learn until you've been in a painful situation. You really don't. And, and, and half of you guys listening to this haven't felt that pain yet. And I, even though you're watching this lecture, you still haven't felt that pain. You know. So maybe this will be a little bit eye-opening. I'm hoping you'll be able to catch yourself a little bit earlier than I did because at this point we're a year and a we're a year and a half into this bullshit guys I've been in the fucking mud for 18 months up until this point 18 months of struggling yes the pain was good and it forced me to go out and learn game but it was fucking torturous man fucking torturous you don't know what it's like like constantly pursuing a girl that's chasing another man that's still giving you hope that you think you got it and your bait ass mind is like, I just got to keep trying harder, you know, fucking horrible position to be in. So anyway, um, I tell her all this butt message thing. I said, don't reach out again. That was, that was, um, right after that was like beginning of March, a month goes by, she reaches four weeks goes by and reaches out again to me in the middle of April and is like, Hey, just broke up with my boyfriend because I really want to see you. And I'm dead serious about wanting to see you. When can we meet up? And again, guys, I go back into this fucking soft mindset. Again, not that I'm like, blah, 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 blah. But like, the problem is, I'm just, I'm so focused on the words that she's telling me. And every dude is going to do this. And, and it, it, dude, it, it's hard 
to see past it when you have a beautiful girl that is showing really high interest in you verbally. It's hard to see past the fairy dust. I still this still happened to me this year with a new girl. The girl that I was telling you I've been thinking about for the last like fucking two months. The the 31 year old. Um, she was showing such high interest in me, but she flaked on me two times in a row. And I've never had this hot of a girl show this much interest in me. And at the same time, still flaking on me. I was like, what's going on? But at the end of the day, guys, stop the, the words from a female. <sighs> It's like, that may be true in the moment, how she's feeling, but it's literally only in that fucking moment. You know, like as a guy, when you say something that you're feeling, like it's, it's a little bit more than just 30 minute temporarily. You know what I'm saying? Like if I say like, yo, I fuck with you. Like, it doesn't mean I just fuck with you right now. And then like an hour later, I'm like, yo, I know I said I fucked with you like at 10 o'clock, but like it's 11 o'clock and I'm in a different mood right now. And now that the music's playing loud and I, I see you now, like I don't really fuck with you. As guys, it doesn't work like that. But as a girl, like the attraction can be there <laughs> and then the attraction can not be there. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you got to look at her actions and stop listening to the fucking words that she's saying, dude. And, and, and ironically, you won't, so, sometimes you won't learn this shit until you learn it the hard way. So if you have felt this shit, I feel your pain. Um, and it is painful, but be glad that you went through that pain because there's a lot of poor motherfuckers out there that I see that are getting married right now that have never felt that pain. I told you, I've been to six weddings in the last year. None of those six have felt that pain. And although I'm at that wedding and I'm smiling and I'm having fun in the back of my mind, when they're at the altar, I'm like, you sad motherfucker, you sad motherfucker. Part of me wishes I had enough confidence to fucking stand up at this wedding and call you out on your fucking pussy bullshit, you faggot. Yeah, I grew up with you. Yeah, we're boys. Yeah, you are my boy. You are my boy, honestly. Like, you are my boy. I grew up with you. I have so many memories with you. You're my boy. But, but I swallowed this pill, bro. And I'm in this matrix, bro. And I can't get out of this matrix. And I'm at this wedding on the other side of the glass looking in at the wedding. You know, I'm on the, I'm in the wedding, but it's like, I'm in a glass tank at the wedding, like looking at the rest of the wedding. And I'm just like, all right, I got to pretend that I'm feeling the same way everybody else is feeling about how beautiful this wedding is. You know, it's tough. It's fucking tough. It's really tough. Actually, as you get older, you're like, you'll see guys, you'll see. And maybe some of you guys are there right now, or maybe you guys aren't even there yet. Maybe you guys go back to this lecture in like a fucking six months from now when some girl crushes you, you know, and, and then, and then you realize, and you're like, fuck dude, I already watched this shit. What the fuck? I already knew this. I already knew this. What the fuck? You would think that, but like, dude, I already knew this. I've already had the YouTube run. This girl still got me. This girl still got me because there's always a hotter girl that's showing more interest and she's validating you on a level that no other girl has before. There's some part of this beautiful girl that is fulfilling a side of you that no girl has done previously. And when that happens, guys, you're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked. And I don't mean literally. I mean metaphorically. You will not be getting fucked. You'll be, you'll be getting fucked by your left hand and your right hand with some lotion. That's what will be happening with your tears as lubricant. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so you, you keep fucking you you keep fucking up in new ways, but ideally you're fucking up with hotter and hotter women. At least in my from my experience, that's what has happened. I've been fucking up with higher quality women every time. And if I look back, the girls that I fucked up on, they're girls that I'm not even sweating anymore. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you get over your old girls. How what, how did I get over my ex ex? Because my ex is hotter than my ex ex. How did I get over my ex? Well, I actually ended things with my ex because I eventually got into this alpha frame. So let's just keep it going. Um, sorry, I get so passionate on these sideways. There's just so much pain and emotion caught up in some of these things. You know what I'm saying? I can't, can't help but turn this into a four-hour lecture. You know what I'm saying? This will be a, I'll be doing this till the fucking sun comes up. It'll be a part two to this shit. God damn it. Um, so 
April comes around. She's like, yeah, I want to see you again. I ended things with my boyfriend, this and that. I go back to being this kind of soft guy. But now I'm like, okay, she's actually serious. She ended things with her boyfriend. We're, you know, everything's good this time. Now I just need to fuck her. And like, you know, it'll seal the deal and, and get her back. Get her back. You know what I'm saying? Boss's iPhone says, I know you went the hardest fuck at the gym when you got your heart broken. Dude, I went hard in every aspect. But we're not even at the heartbroken part yet. <laughs> let's let's wait. If you're shedding tears already, let's wait. So it's April. Um, I, I'm thinking, you know, she's like, you yeah, know, I broke up with my boyfriend. I really want to see you now. He was actually getting too aggressive. He lashed out one night and fucking flipped out and pushed me. And I fell back over a chair, this and that. And he's unstable. He's too controlling, this and that. And he was, dude. He was. I knew the guy. I knew the guy. And I knew he wasn't right for her from the get. But the thing about controlling guys is that um, they actually come off dominant at first. So controlling guys can make a good impression for like the first six months to a year with a girl. Controlling like uh, if he's controlling in, in like a dominant way, it's good until like a year has gone by and then he starts becoming needy because he's trying to do, control this girl too much. And eventually she starts losing attraction. And once she starts losing the respect for him, he gets into this chasing frame. And that's pretty much what happened with this girl is that although this dude was dominant from the beginning, once he, was, he became overly invested, he started becoming butthurt and needy and controlling. And that's when her, reaction, her, her attraction started losing for this guy. And and now I'm, uh, where am I? I'm non-reactive. I'm not reaching out to her. I'm, I'm self-improving and I'm out doing my own thing, not pursuing her. So we got one dude that's needy. We got one dude that's not reaching out at all. Now she reaches out at some point. Once, once her attraction gets dips down to a certain point, I go back into being the soft guy. And I, I start talking to her over the course of the next two weeks because my birthday is April 27th. So at the beginning of the month, we start talking for two weeks. And now it's like April 15th or so, and we're discussing what we're going to do for my birthday. And I'm thinking, great, we're finally going to have a time to go out, spend an awesome night in the city, get drinks, end up back at my house, birthday sex, smash, got that shit on lock, happy birthday, Coach Kyle. Welcome back, motherfucker. But not even Coach Kyle. Welcome back, Beta Kyle, I should say. Um <laughs> Welcome back, Coach Kyle, or welcome back, Beta Kyle. Um, <laughs> so we keep talking over the next two weeks, and, and it's funny because we keep talking, and she starts throwing in these little comments throughout conversation. Yeah, Chris called me up apologizing the other day and says he really wants another chance, this and that. In my mind, I was like, why are you even bringing that up? You know what I'm saying? Like this and that. It's kind of weird that she was even mentioning that. I was like, oh, did he? I was like, oh, that's what's up, blah, blah, blah. You know, asked her, asked her a little bit about it. She was like, yeah, he was like begging me to come over the other night and talk, blah, 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 blah. Um, but we just kept talking. And I'm, I'm just focused on my birthday. I'm just thinking like, yeah, I can't wait for, for, this, for this day to come along. At the end of the day, dude, I should have been looking at her actions. Like she really wasn't hanging out with me that much. And she, she even told me she met up with Chris because he, he wanted to apologize to her and shit. So it's like, look at her actions. She's really not chilling with me too much. She's telling me she's excited for the birthday, but like, what are her actions? I'm over pursuing her in this moment. And she's chilling with Chris. <laughs> what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But I'm blinded by this fucking fairy dust. It's pussy powder bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Pussy powder, I should say. Um, it's fucking fairy dust. Um, so it's like a week before my birthday. We were supposed to hang out. We didn't. Oh, no, we did, but she brought her friend along during the day. We had a brunch, and she ended up bringing her friend along, and it became super friendly because her friend was there. But I was so desperate to hang out with her. I was like, I don't care if your friend's here. Like, like just come, you know, bring your friend. doesn't matter. Like, I just want to see you, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, the, you know, once the friend was there, I was just acting super friendly. Thus, she was feeling friendly. I wasn't feeling attracted. I wasn't showing any attraction. I wasn't creating any attraction. In hindsight, what I should have done was been like, even though the friend is there, you guys, you got to find a way to at least make it clear that you're still like man to woman, even if you're not going to make out or anything like that. Like, I mean, ideally you only hang out with the girl in a place where a romantic man to woman situation can happen. 
unless you guys got good game. I didn't have good game at this point, but, uh, and I was so weak and, and in reaction to her, you know? So it was like, once I had, once I hung out, I was just super friendly the whole time. I didn't create any attraction. What I should have done was been flirting with her, even if the friend was there. And at some point I like, pulled her off the side and be like, fuck, yo, I, I, I know Brianna's here, but like, God damn it. Like, yo, like let her go home. So like, I could just like be with you for a little bit. You know, like you're looking like good as fuck right now. I should have said something. I should have said something, you know, create some kind of an emotional spike, create some kind of attraction. Look at her with those quote unquote Kyle eyes, like build some kind of attraction towards her. And I wasn't doing that. I was just so grateful to have her around. And I was, th I, I couldn't wait to, for, to see her for my birthday. Th that's all I was focused on. And so they hang, we hang out. It was all friendly. They leave. Everything was like, nice guy. Ha ha. See you later. Fast forward. It's the day of my birthday. It's my birthday. We're going into the city to hang out. And I'm expecting to go out, have drinks, have a nice dinner, come home and fuck and make up and everything's going to be great. And I'm so excited to do it. She pulls up to my house. I'm dressed up. Literally, I'm dressed up, ready to go. And there's a sliding door to my back, my back, the, the back side of my house. There's a sliding door that you can get in my house. So she parks on the, there's a basketball court in my backyard. She drives up the driveway, drives onto the basketball court where she always parks and then comes up to walk up to the slider door. And I'm standing in the room waiting for her to walk up the door all excited and i see her get out of the car and she gets out of the car and she's already crying she walks up to the sliding door and she's fucking crying and even as i'm telling the story right now i feel not that i'm about to cry but like it's like i feel the the feeling like if if, if the if i hadn't told this story so many times i would literally be crying right now like literally i could feel myself like not that my eyes are even watering, but like, you know, that feeling when your eyes are about to water, like those neural pathways are being triggered right now. As I'm telling that story, she got out of the car and she's crying as she's walking up to the fucking slider door. And I'm just like, Oh my God, I already know what the fuck's about to happen. Like why was she, there's only reason, there's only one reason why she would be crying. You know what I'm saying? Like there's only one reason. And I'm like, I don't even want to open the slider door. Like I'm looking at her on the other side of the glass. And I'm just like, not that I'm sitting there that long, you know, in my, this is all going on in like one fraction of a second, but I'm just like, now I'm like panicking in my mind and I'm like getting fucking scared and I'm like sad and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I open the slider door and she's all like, I don't know, just imagine you had to like tell somebody that like their fucking parent died, you know, or like, imagine like you had to go, imagine you had to go deliver the news that like someone's wife died and you're like knocking on the door to the husband's door. like. That was the vibe of me opening the slider door. It was as if she was about to tell me someone just died. And literally, she was the one that died. She was about to tell me that she just died. Or technically, she's telling me that I just died in her mind. Um, so she comes in, and I can already, she's like, she's, she's kind of beating around the bush. But I mean, like, dude, the vibe is so awkward at this point. It's like, we go into the living room. She's like, we need to sit down. I'm, I'm already crying. <laughs> I'm already crying. I mean, I'm not like literally crying, but like my eyes are already watering. Cause I'm just like, just tell me, you know, j just say it. So I could go fucking like, kill myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's literally like what's going on in this moment. And she, it, it's crazy. Cause like literally her entire demeanor flipped. Like, like a week before that, she was like, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Like a week before this one night, I, I met her out when she was drunk and she like confessed all this stuff and was saying like, when I see, when I think about you, like I see you at the altar. I see you, I, like, like saying some crazy shit, saying some crazy shit. And this is what I'm talking about. I was caught up in this fucking fairy tale, yo. So caught up in this fucking fairy tale, right? So, so fast forward, we're here, we're sitting down and she's just like, I don't even know how to say this. I, I, I don't even like she's almost as shocked as I am because on paper it would make sense that she would be with me at the end of the day mother nature doesn't give a fuck about any of that that means fucking nothing it means nothing it means nothing guys <laughs> mother nature only cares about the laws of nature and how attraction works right and at the end of the day if you're not following that 
It doesn't matter how sympathetic the story is. The girl will literally be crying as she's breaking up with you. As you can see, the girl is crying as she's breaking up with me. <laughs> it like, doesn't even make sense if you think about it. It's like, I'm so sad. I don't, I don't know how to say this, but I can't be with you. It's like, it doesn't even fucking make sense logically because girls aren't fucking logical, right? Girls are not logical, guys. So this is what happens. She breaks up with me. Essentially, and this is what she says, you know, it's just like, and this is how she, this is how she justified it through her breakup, which keep in mind, girls are just going to justify it logically after the fact, based on how they're already feeling emotionally, you know, her emotionally mother nature was telling her to go with Chris because at the end of the day, Chris was being more attractive and I was just being weak and feminine. I was, I was so in my feminine and girls are not attracted to feminine energy. They're, they're, they're attracted to masculine energy. And the same reason that I was able to initially re-attract her by being on my purpose, by working on myself, by not reaching out, by not being pursuing, you know, by, by doing m me, you know, and, and that's how I attracted her. That, that's how I, that, that masculine energy is what drawn her in. Problem is now I'm in my feminine and, and she doesn't know why. She doesn't know why she's not attracted to me. Because literally, she, she is even saying, I don't know why I feel like this. She doesn't even fucking know why she wants to be with this guy more than me. But she wants to be with this guy more than me. And it doesn't even make sense to her, but she wants to be with this guy more than me. This is how fucked up this situation is. It's crazy. So we sit there, we're crying, this and that. And this is what she says to me. And you know what it is? It's just like Chris was so quick to change and and apologize and all that. And I just feel like with you, I spent like a year and a half and it, it took so long for you, you know? And I just feel like he was so quick to change. I, I feel like almost obligated to give him another chance. That's what, that, that's what she was telling me. And, and finally, so we're sitting there. And at, at this moment, guys, it, you know, before I was saying, eventually you reach a threshold, I had finally, finally hit my breaking point. Like finally, it was like the the ultimate dagger. It was like if this was my heart, and she was like slowly chipping at it and chipping at it, and it had been completely spidered, but like the glass is still intact, but it's just been like it's shattered, but it's still all there, and it's still like in the shape of a heart, right? But she's just been chipping. At some point, the fucking glass just shatters. You know what I'm saying? And it just completely crumbles, and that point finally came at this at, in this moment when i realized at this point i had been re chasing spent fucking 10 months trying to reattract this girl crying pursuing conf conforming my entire life to her you know and ultimately to realize that this other dude is still in the picture it's almost as if i have no other choice but to let her go because i can't even fight for her anymore knowing that this dude is still there because even if i were to have her I can't be with her knowing that this dude is there. I can't because it's too, it's too 50, 50, you know what I'm saying? And if you really wanted the girl, I, I came to a realization of like, okay, you actually have to go with him because the only way I could ever even be with you is if you went with him and it actually took its entire course and it fully ended and you fully healed. And by somehow we met each other later on in life when we were actually fully healed from the situation. That's actually the only way that this could work. And eventually I came to that realization. And it was so fucking painful. You know why it's so painful is because if you're with the girl for five years at that point, she's literally so, she, she's a part of your DNA. She's a part of your DNA. She's so connected. And so like, you know, you know, the fucking you know what a DNA strand looks like? Like she's like one of the four strands, like RNA and fucking uh, my, bi my biology shit. It's like RNA and all the other fucking NAs. I don't know what the fuck it is anymore. But like literally, if you, you know what the fucking bi biological shit looks like, she's so wrapped into your chemistry at this point that literally you're crying because you have to kill part of yourself. Like half of your identity is from this girl. I'm 25 at this point. I've known this girl. We've been together since I was 20. The majority of my mature adult life is based off of this girl.
before this girl, you know, remember, remember who I was before this girl, you know? So everything that I've grown with from this girl, I pretty much need to kill that person. Literally, I need to kill that person. That's how I became quote unquote alpha. It wasn't because like, it wasn't because I was born alpha and I was a natural and I was fucking all these girls. It was more like, okay, well, you need to die. And the only way to survive is that way. You know, I was, I was forced at gunpoint, essentially, to take the other route. I mean, I had two options at that point. Take the other route or literally like suicidal, depressed, emotional, just drug addict, ruin my life and just like pity, pity myself, like poor me for the next five years while my life goes to shit, you know? Th those are my two options, you know, because being with her was no longer an option. So, um, Jesus Christ, I, I, I cried so much that day. I mean, the, the breakup talk was like five hours of just crying between both of us. And ironically, dude, the last two hours of it was me just telling her that she needs to go with that guy and that I can't, I, I can no longer be with her, this and that. And you know what the fucked up thing was? Dude, by the time she was leaving, because once I hit that threshold, I actually started becoming alpha. I actually started becoming alpha once I was like, okay, well, you actually have to go with him. I, I wasn't talking like this. Keep in mind, I had just been crying for like four hours. But like, I was literally telling her essentially is like, you actually have to go with him. You know, I, you know, in the beginning, I was begging and, and first hour is like, why this now I don't understand. I, don't, I just don't, I don't get it. You know, first two hours, but third hour is like realization. Fourth hour was like, I get it now. You actually have to go with him because I can't even have you in my life knowing that this dude's here. So actually the only way to even have a chance of even getting you back is you go with him. You go with him. And ironically, by doing this, I'm starting to be alpha again. And it got to the point where by the time the conversation was over and she was going to leave, she was like, I don't even know who to go with anymore. <laughs> this fucking bitch. I don't even know who to go with anymore. Why? Why is that? Because now I'm starting to go back into this mask. And I still remember to this day, we're sitting in, there's a room right next to this room. There's my old room. Um, my boy Sly was on this, this chat, just slept in there last, last night uh, or the two nights ago. She, that was my old room and we were in there. And I remember at this point, she was literally saying, I don't know why, but I haven't been feeling like this towards you. And honestly, I haven't felt this attracted to you since we initially broke up. Yo, this is such a, like, even as I'm telling this story right now, this is such a mind fuck. Like, cause, cause you, you could imagine what it was like being in this moment, but like, imagine going back and like, uh, imagine now knowing all the theory and it's like, it, it's as if she was like explaining the theory to me from a female perspective in that moment. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy, but it, it just confirms everything about male and female attraction. Uh, she literally is, is ex she's literally confirming mother nature to me. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. It's such a mind fuck, but it's so beautiful at the same time. That's why, that's why I love games so much because it, it, you know, it gets a bad rep. Oh, it's manipulative. Oh, it's all about looks, this and that. It's like, dude, if you listen to this full lecture, how the fuck could you think it's about looks? Like it, like, oh my God, like listen to, <laughs> I can't even talk anymore. Like it, it just, <laughs> oh man. So she leaves, <laughs> she leaves and um, I was destroyed. I was destroyed. This is the worst pain I felt since my dad died. Remember, we, we talked back in the beginning. I was telling you guys, like, in the beginning of the lecture that at 12 years old, um, I told you, like, a fucking full year went by when my dad died where I was waiting for a day that I could think about my dad without fucking crying. And I think it took about 10 months. 10 months every day. Thought about it, cried. And then finally, at some point, there became a day where I was able to start thinking slowly every day. The pain resided 0.1%, 0.1%, 0.1%. 1 when this girl broke up with me, it wasn't as long, you know, cause I mean, 
I had 12 years with my dad since birth, you know, and it, it was way stronger. But um, I would say, Jesus, for, I would say two months, I cried every day. Cried every day for two months at this point. And I, I, I dude, I knew a decent amount about pickup theory. But th the problem is, dude, like pickup theory doesn't teach you the shit I'm teaching you on this lecture. This is not pickup, guys. This is not how to get laid in a four minute poll. Like this is, this is not that at all. This is not even pickup. This is like, this is like this, this is the talk your dad never gave you. You know what I'm saying? This is really the, <laughs> this is the talk your dad never gave you. If I ever have a son, like the birds and the bees talk is this talk. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the title of this talk. You know what I'm saying? Matthew, this is a great first lecture for you to be on, brother. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the Patreon, brother. <laughs> so, um, I, Nick says I never even had that talk. You know, so my mom gave me the talk because I told you my dad died at 12. But my mom gave me the talk when I was like 17, 18. I was like, Mom, I already know this shit. Like, stop. You know, like, it's awkward. Don't talk to me about this. Stop. You know? <laughs> so, um, 60 days goes by. Kyle's crying. <laughs> Kyle's crying and crying and crying. April goes by. Remainder of April goes by. I cry. May goes by. I cry. Oh, actually, no. It wasn't two. It wasn't 60 days. It was like 40 days. It was April, end of May, and then beginning of June. Here's the thing, guys. Like, after three, four weeks of just like crying, um, after, keep in mind, I'm already in the matrix at this point. So I know on a deep level that. The only way to get out of this is like, you got to climb your way out of it. You, you Like sitting around and crying. Yes, it's good. I encourage any, anytime you were feeling sadness, like dude, express the feelings. You know what I'm saying? One thing I, I failed to, to mention at, at one part of this lecture is like, I told you guys, my dad passed. I never went back to the graveyard. Every year, my mom and my sister would go back to the graveyard. Every single year. Every single year. On my dad's birthday, 7-Eleven, it's fucking tattooed on my arm. If you ever see the dates on my arm, it's, that's the birthday and my death date of my dad. 7-Eleven, every year, my, uh, my mom and my sister would go to my dad's grave and put, put roses there, and then they would light a candle at the house. And every year, they would be like, we're going to the grave. Do you want to come? No, I don't want to go. For like 10, 12 years, I didn't go. Because I, as I was explaining at the beginning of this lecture, like, I just buried all of that emotion just kept burying that emotion. I never expressed it. The good thing, and, and I learned how to express emotion through this girl. I told you, for some of you guys that joined the lecture late, this girl was living alone. Her family lived in another state and she was very in contact with her mom and very good at expressing emotion. And by dating her for five years, she really forced me to get in touch with my emotions. She showed me Although it was annoying and I fucking hated her for it for like the first two or three years, she slowly knocked down the walls that I had built back up after the death of my dad. And three years into our relationship, um, this is, this is, what year was this? Let's see. 2016. This is on my IG still. Went back to the graveyard. First time. 2016. He passed away in 02. 14 years it took me to go back to the grave. 14 fucking years. Jesus Christ. And she was the one that was like, we should go. You've never been back. It's time. It's fucking time. You know what I'm saying? And she was right. She was absolutely right. So point being though, when I went through the breakup, I didn't suppress that feeling. Anytime you guys are going through pain, anytime you guys are feeling pain, guys, like go in and, and dive into that pain. Don't ignore the pain, you know? You got to feel it to heal it is like the saying. And I truly believe that you want to feel it so much that you become numb to it. And that doesn't mean that you stop doing everything that you're doing. Be on your purpose. You know, but anytime that, that, that pain comes in, acknowledge it, acknowledge it and, and be like, why am I feeling pain right now? Why am I feeling this pain? I'm, okay. Look, I'm feeling sad. Why am I feeling sad? I'm feeling sad because this happened. Okay. Let me dive into that pain. Thinking about all the fucking, thinking about all the memories that triggers the pain, which is typically the best memories. 
because that's going to make you the happiest. But thus, you then think about the loss of that memory. And it's like, for some reason, you think of the, the loss of it as that it's gone and that you can no longer feel that, that good feeling in that memory. But that's not true because the memory is still there. So it's like, why are you really feeling the pain if you think about it? I don't know where I was going with, with that deep thought, but that, that was like something that was going on in my own mind that I just had to like bring out. Um, but, it, but it's really true though. And when I felt that deep thought, it was like, I, you wanted to go through and feel it so much. And eventually you want to correct the thought, if that makes sense. It was like, okay, yes, my dad died. My dad died. And I've cried and I felt so much fucking pain for it. And I've come to terms with that. And I can freely express that. And I got no problem talking about that. I could clearly, I, I mean, I could host a four hour lecture on the death of my dad and, and not cry and not feel sad and not feel like depressed. Why is that? It's because I've come to terms with it. It's because I've, um, I've kind of reframed the thought. Because if that wouldn't have happened, X, Y, and Z would have never happened. And I'm not saying, thank God it happened. But at the same time, I'm accepting the fact that it happened. I'm accepting the fact that this girl, the relationship with me is done. It's done. I need to come to terms with reality that that is the reality. Okay? It doesn't matter what the fuck's going on in your mind. I saved, I saved this quote today that I saw. and It was pretty powerful. It was like, the only suffering is caused in the past or the future. And thus, it is only caused by your memory or your imagination. Thus, all you have is the present. Any suffering is, is self-inflicted. And again, it's okay to suffer at first. You need to feel it. You need to feel all of that. You need to go through all of that. And, but at some point, at some point, it will no longer be suffering It'll, it'll start to become a, a self-acceptance. And, and once that happens, that is a, at a point where you need to start to reframe it. Example, this girl that, that um, I stopped talking to like two months ago, I learned so much from that breakup. Not even a breakup, we weren't even dating. It just goes to show you, like, I was so caught up in this. We weren't even fucking dating. <laughs> but I had this thought, I had this future planned out. I had this whole thing, I was so excited, you know what I'm saying? But, um, I'm okay with it. Yeah, do I still think about it? Of course I still think about it. Would I go back and change it if I could? Honestly, no. Honestly, no. Because from that, from that, I, really, I, I had this drive in me right after that to start releasing more videos and to get better at my game and start studying lectures and learn from all the, the things that I fucked up with from her. <laughs> I, guess what happens one month later? The channel goes from 1,000 subscribers to fucking 20,000 subscribers in a matter of like 10 days. I finally came to terms with it a little bit. And the fucking channel takes off. And it was the same thing. So, so rewind back to my girlfriend. I cried for 40 days. I finally came to terms with it and I started going out. And what the fuck happens? I start approaching a lot. I start approaching a lot. And I meet this fucking beautiful Colombian girl who was like my ex but literally just a hotter version of my ex. Now, granted, I don't think she had the same personality that my ex had, my ex ex had, but she was significantly hotter. And when you're going through a breakup, a hotter girl always feels good. <laughs> like once you've gone through the pain and everything, you know what I'm saying? I don't mean like, you know, like you don't bury your pain in the new girl because at the end of the day, once the second you nut, you're going to still feel that pain. But once you've cried enough and once you've felt that pain and once you've healed um, and you can go out and you've accepted that and you're moving forward with everything, it's, it's okay. Like everything is just okay. And you start to realize that everything's going to be okay. And I think I've shown you this, this other girl that I fucking um, was, was dating for a while. Um, I think I showed you guys in the last lecture. She's hot. She's fucking, she's hot. Um, Hold on one second. I'll, I'll pull up this. Uh, um, let me find a really good picture. Like some, some of these pictures she looks really good in. Uh, let me find a good one. She kind of looks like 
it's funny because I think she kind of looks like um, the first girl. This is her. This is her right now. But actually, let me find. Let me see. Let me see if I can find a video of her. Uh, this is her like speaking French. And shit. She kind of lo looks like. Uh... Hey, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find a video. It's her. She's hot. She's hot. She's got like double D's. She's like fucking five one. Um, nice cute Hispanic accent. She's Colombian. Um, this is her right now. I mean, we're talking two years ago. Honestly, I think she looked a little bit better when I was with her. Um, that's one more picture of her too. She, I, th I think she looks pretty fucking good here. She looks pretty good. You know, she's cute. If you saw her in person, you'd be like, damn, who the fuck's that? Like, I remember when I saw her at the bar, I was like, Oh, actually, just just by the way, the, the way the initial interaction went, I'm walking through the bar and she's sitting down on the couch in the corner and I'm walking by and I look over and I do a fucking double take. And I was like, holy shit, who the fuck is that? I mean, you know, she's not as dolled up in, in those pictures. Like when you see her out at the bar with like dim lights and she's really dolled up, like, you know, I told you I was excited to bring out my first girlfriend. Like this girl was like, like, dude, I really felt like the man at this point. You know what I'm saying? So. um. I, I looked at her, did double takes, and she's sitting on the couch on the side of the bar, in like on the other side of the table. I took a double take. I took a step, and, and my my feet planted. They didn't keep walking because my body was like, "Nah, dude, you got to go and approach." But my mind was like, "Ah, oh, fuck, yo, I got to go and approach, but I don't want to. Like, it's a fucking really hard open, but I should go up and talk to her. I should. I did like a triple take, and and my mind was like. Let's just go talk to her. Let's just, let's see what the fuck happens. You know, let's just see what happens. And thank God I fucking manned up for that one second. You know, it's, I, thank God I made that micro decision. You know, you're going to have, you're gonna, you guys are going to be faced with a lot of these micro decisions throughout your life, you know, and ultimately your life is going to be the culmination of every answer to those micro decisions that you've ever made. Really, that, that's, that's who you are today. You are the combination of every decision you've ever made, you know? And every time you say no to that challenge that you're presented with, that, that difficult situation, you're at the gas station, the girl holds the door for you and you go in and, you know, you're like, oh, thanks for holding the door. And you're like sitting in line behind her. You're like, fuck, I should say something right now. Like, it's probably a good time to say something, you know? She held the door for me. You know, like, we made good eye contact. I gave her a little head nod and... You know, she didn't say anything, but like, fuck, I should at least say what's up. She's walking out right now. I can easily just go over and just be like, hey, excuse me. Yeah, I, I, I just liked your look. I, I don't even know what to say, but I, I liked your look. I want to say hi. Fuck, it might be kind of foolish. Should I just go do that? I could. Ah, I'm feeling this fucking nervous feeling. And whatever you decide to do in that moment, those decisions, those decisions, that is what makes you who the fuck you are today. You know what I'm saying? The sum of all of those decisions up until this point is who the fuck you are today. Let that sink in. You know, I could have so easily not went up and opened this girl on the couch. Double take, triple take. Fuck, she's hot. She's sitting on the couch. The table's in between. It's going to be so awkward when I go over and talk to her. Like I'm going to be standing on the other side of the table. Oh, dude, who's that other female there? Oh, fuck. That's like definitely your female friend. Who's the other? Is that, there's a dude nearby. Is that her boy? Is he with her? Oh, fuck. That might be like confrontational if I go over and say what's up. No, no, I can't do that. Should I go over and say what's up? Fuck. Oh, I don't know. This is all going through my mind in a, in a fraction of a millisecond. Eventually, I'd, in, this is all in the fraction of point 0.1. This is all going through my mind. Eventually, fuck it. Hard left turn, straight line to her. Walked up with a big smile, put my hand out, reached over the table. Hey, what's up? How you doing? She looks over at me extremely shy. What? <laughs> I started laughing. I actually don't know how the whole, in the initial open went, but I started talking to her. Got into a better mood. Was like, yo, you're super short, aren't you? Let me see how tall you are. Got her to get off of the couch and stand next to me. Because she was like 5'1". Oh, no, no, excuse me. She's like fucking 4'11". She's like 4'11", with like double D's, really cute face, nice little butt. Uh, she's like 100 pounds, you know? But she had heels on, so she looked like 5'2", five 5'3". Five get, her, get her off of the couch, vibe with her, blah, 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 blah. Got the attraction up a little bit. Yo, let's take a shot. 
I know you're not drinking. I'm not drinking either. Let's take one shot. I'm driving. Look, I'm DD. See these keys? I'm DD tonight, okay? I'm only taking one shot tonight, but I kind of want it to be with you because you got a good vibe. So let's take one shot. Let's go. Walk over to the bar. I'm leading. You know, I'm not coming off so thirsty. Look, I'm only taking one shot tonight. Uh, value's already in place. Attraction's already in place. Suggestive lead. She's a shy girl, but the attraction's there. It needs to be my fault. Bring her over to the bar. The bar's only like fucking 10 feet over at this point. Walk her over to the bar. We take a shot of Patron. Talk to her over there for two minutes. It's really loud in here. Let's go outside and, and get some fresh air and talk. I can hear you better. It's summertime. The door was like right there. We walk outside. We go to the smoker section outside. I'm moving locations, guys. It helps build comfort. Helps build comfort. Helps make it not seem like it's so much of just a pickup. You know, all of these things are very powerful. Very powerful in the long run. Um, in hindsight, because once I leave the interaction, she's going to be thinking, she's not just going to be thinking about the interaction at the table. She's going to be thinking about, okay, we were at the table, we were at the bar, we were outside. And I also brought her outside to get her away from her friends and get a little bit more close to her. We didn't make out. I could tell there was a little bit of resistance and she needed more comfort. So we kept talking, we kept talking. I'm flirty, I'm flirty. I'm sprinkling in a little bit of flirtation throughout the conversation. And then, um, we bring her back inside and then I sit down on the couch with her. Now it's just me and her sitting down on the couch. I said, what's up to the friends. I was super social with the friends, won them over. And now I'm just vibing with her for a solid 10 minutes. And eventually her friends have to go. So we, we already discussed meeting up at a sushi place that was like right down the street, maybe later on in the week. And while I was figuring out her availability, we exchanged numbers. We get off the couch. She puts her jacket on. She says, I'll talk to you soon. Light kiss good night that she initiated. And she left. And I was like, whoo, I'm the fucking man, bro. Let's fucking go. Literally. I then proceeded to go on a rampage in the club because, like, dude, you, you, you number close and kiss close the hottest girl and just set up a date. It's like every other girl in the club's like, you know, like, go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck, honestly. So now I'm just, I, I go on a rampage for the rest of the night. I don't think I pulled actually, but like, I was just like opening everybody being super social, um, made out with this other girl I remember. And there was this other girl that I've always seen that I've still been wanting to, to hook up with that I, to this day, I still haven't hooked up with another Colombian girl. Um, another Colombian girl that, I mean, this is years ago, but ironically, she just DM'd me like two months ago, but she's like on and off with this dude. She's back with him right now. She's the, she's the kind that like, the dude will be on the IG for a while and then suddenly he's gone. And then like two weeks goes by and now she's back on the IG. You know what I'm saying? Like she DM me when he wasn't on the IG. I didn't, I didn't push super hard because like I just didn't. And, but like now he's back on the IG. It's kind of funny. So I'm just waiting. You know, that dude is like beta Kyle, like way back that I was telling you about, you know? So it's like, it's just a matter of time before he's too, he can't keep the attraction up long term, you know? He can't keep the attraction up long term. And once that shit's low enough, some fucking alpha's coming in and snatching that bitch. And and that's how I've done it with a lot of these girls that I mean, not that I fucked that many girls with boyfriends, but anytime I've gotten with a girl that had a boyfriend, it was always he was on the way out. He's weak as fuck. He's he's in a position that I was in. But he doesn't know it yet because he's younger than me. You know, when I come around and I, I just, I know all the motions. I've, I've played this game. You're not going to play me in my own game. This is my game now. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're dealing with the grandmaster of chess in this game. You're fucked, bitch. You're fucked. And he's fucked. But not, metaf not literally. He's metaphorically fucked. You're literally fucked tonight. Um, so anyway, <laughs> cheers to being on the other side of the story now. <laughs> <clears throat> so so tati her name was tatiana so tati we exchange numbers we go on a date the next week we go on a sushi date we hook up like two three days later uh we end up she ends up coming here we go out for for food but we just take the food to go and we end up eating back at my house and then we escalate and it leads to sex and from there on out we proceed to be hanging out once to twice a week um, you know, casually going out, getting food, going on hikes and having a lot of sex in my room, in the car, on the hike trails, we fucked everywhere. Like it was, it was awesome. 
It was hot. It was awesome. She was super into me. But from the moment I met her, I was portraying this idea that I'm seeing multiple women because I had just got out of this relationship and I was not even, it, it was kind of in my favor in, at this moment. It was almost as if, um, it was almost as if I wasn't fully healed and even ready to be loved again. You know what I'm saying? Like right now guys, like I'm actually kind of craving a connection. If I, you know, sounds fucking weak. I was like, what a pussy, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, dude, I want a connection. A connection's fucking dope. Connection's dope. I mean, yeah, sex is great too, obviously, but I got all the sex. I mean, I still want sex, but like I want a lot of sex and I want the connection, you know? But at, at this point in the story, I'm really just, I, I, I'm not really craving the connection because I just got my heart broken. So like I'm dating, but my heart's not really in it. And it's kind of helping me lay down this frame of like, you're not going to be exclusive boyfriend and girlfriend with me. You know, and it was kind of portrayed from the beginning because I studied a shitload in that since the breakup for 40 days, I was just studying and studying and studying. I was starting to understand the masculine and I learned everything that I had just fucked up on with my ex. And I started to realize everything that went wrong. Like I said, you know, I was really into pickup. I was getting into pickup. I mastered the pickup. But at this point, once the breakup happened, I was so hurt and in pain about the relationship that I started studying the relationship stuff. And I really just started studying masculine energy, feminine energy, and long-term seduction and long-term attraction. And that's when I started to master that shit, which is completely different from pickup, guys. That's why the majority of this lecture is like, yes, it is pickup. It's, I'm giving you guys everything right here in this talk. It's literally like life. It's life. It's life game. You know, it's not just pickup. It's not just relationships. It's everything. Um, but, but at this point, I, I really studied the long-term aspect of this shit. So when I dated Tatiana, I really laid the proper foundation without giving her the wrong expectation. But I played everything perfectly. I still made it presentable to her. I made it relatable to her on a level that was still... Um, on her level, that, that was still, it wasn't too out of her perception, you know, it was still acceptable from her, from her view. You know, if I want if I would have straight up told her, look, I'm not just fucking you, I'm fucking other girls. That, that's, that's too far out of her reality. She can't accept that. No girl's going to accept that, you know, but if it's, if it's more on a, something subtle, like, um, yeah, I got to have a relationship. I actually lied to her and told her the relationship ended way long. I actually said the relationship ended nine months before and that we haven't really been talking since then we haven't had sex since then because if i told her yeah the relationship ended three weeks ago and i've been crying every day since then i actually cried tonight before i came out and met you like you know like you, you don't got to be that honest you don't got to be that honest i wouldn't have gotten her if i if i was that honest you know P pick up and seduction this is something you guys gotta understand it's a performance art and that sounds devious and manipulative but Guys, if you can't accept that, get the fuck off the Patreon. Seriously, pickup and seduction is a performance art. It really is. And yes, especially at first, it's going to seem like it's not you. But I'm telling you guys, you do it long enough, the theory gets instilled into you enough, you get enough success with it, it will become part of you. It, like, it's not even a performance with me anymore. It's like, how else would I act? This is the successful way to act. Why the fuck wouldn't you act like this? You know what I'm saying? It's like, why wouldn't you? The only reason you're acting that way, I mean, you're still performing, you're still acting, but you're acting based on the way you were taught, based on the way society taught you growing up and brainwashed you to act. And everybody's acting. Every motherfucker you ever have talked to in your entire life is acting. Everybody is. We all have a mask. Even on this lecture, you have a mask as a certain student. You know, I have a certain mask on right now as the instructor. I mean, yes, it's a lot less because I'm being extremely vulnerable right now. But like, point being, we all have been taught to act a certain way. And the only reason I'm acting this way is through pain and learning. And, and you guys are going to be the same way. This is, this is the learning side of it, right? So it, it, it just goes back to, it is a performance art and you better fucking believe that. And you better believe that. If you go back to watch the pickup uh, in the gym, school and work, that it, that's a performance, bro. That's a performance and you need to accept that.
you're acting a certain way, time to act a different way, a more attractive way, a way that's actually going to get success and make you the alpha male. Okay. So anyway, I get Tatiana, start dating Tatiana. Everything's going great. I like her. She likes me. She likes me more than I like her, which is how it should be. She needs you. You want her. That's how it needs to be. She needs you. You don't need her. You want her. That's how it should be. For, for the true masculine and, and feminine energy to be perfectly yin and yang, that's how it should be. Because ultimately, for the masculine energy, his main goal is his purpose, to go out and dominate life and penetrate life. Yes, he is penetrating the woman. He's penetrating everything. The girl's job is to be receptive, supportive, nurturing. I'm going to do a whole lecture on masculine and feminine energy, but I'm not going to go too far into that tonight. But essentially, that is what it is. And if it's done correctly, the girl will be obsessed with you. And that's literally what happened. Tatiana became obsessed with me. She literally was calling me her addiction. She confessed her love to me four months into the relationship. She was pushing and testing me to become exclusive with her. And I never crumbled on that shit. And I never gave into that shit. And I said, look, you just see me as a fuck buddy and you're never going to want to be with me and this and that. And I know you're seeing other women and how could you do that? This and that, blah, 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 blah. I said, look, I don't see you as a fuck buddy. I see you way more than that. Way more than that. You know, I really, I re Tati, if, if, if it was about sex, I wouldn't even call you. I could go out and get laid every night if I wanted to. It has nothing to do with sex. I fucked you 100 times. I don't need to even fuck you anymore. Literally, like, if it was about pussy, I wouldn't even fucking call you anymore. Like, do you think we would be out on this hype trail? Like, what, like if this was about pussy, why would I even bring you out here? Why would I be spending money on dinner dates with you? Why would I do any of that? I could just call this girl and have her come to my house and fuck me tonight. I don't even need any of that, okay? I'm here because I want to be here because I genuinely like you, and I like the way how I feel and we feel when we're together, and I know you fucking feel that too. I know you feel that same fucking feeling. And when you, just, when, you, when you talk to the girl about the feeling and you say you know she knows that fucking feeling and she knows that feeling and you know that she knows that feeling, that shit fucking hits hard, guys. That shit, that shit hits really hard, especially when it's truly there, you know? And I said, I know you fucking feel that shit. And I know you feel that shit. And that's the same reason I'm still here with you. And I'm not going to lie to you. You already fucking know I'm out. Yes, there are other girls. Are there other girls I'm dating like this? Fuck no. Fuck no. You think I give a fuck about those other girls? Because I don't. Not at all, Tati. Not at all. I'm here because I want to be here with you because I like you, okay? And that's not going to stop. And none of those girls don't mean fucking shit. But if you got a problem with that, then you need to get the fuck out of the car right now. And I'm dead serious. And I am dead serious. Get the fuck out of the car. I don't want you to go, but if that's how you're going to be, then you got to get the fuck out of the car and don't say another word. That's how you handle the talk, by the way. That's how you handle the talk. I can't always deliver it like that, but you got me at the right moment right there, and I'm so happy that was recorded because I'm dead serious, guys. That is exactly how the talk needs to be handled with a certain type of girl. And you better be ready to, to do it like that. You know? And it's going to be fucking weird doing it the first time. It's, it, you might not even be able to do that. Honestly, you're not going to be able to deliver it like that. Um, the timestamp, uh, <laughs> four hours. <laughs> I think it is four hours. <laughs> yeah, so just fast forward four hours into the lecture. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Yo, Isaac, what's going on, dude? You got this fucking Christmas light going on. I'm about to have a seizure over here. This shit been going on for like three hours, bro. Anyway, I'm in a good flow, so let's keep it going. Um. And so, dude, that's how you deliver the talk. And to be honest, I didn't even handle it that much of a boss with her. Because it was the first time I had had that talk. I knew all the theory behind it, but that was way softer than how I just delivered it. I wish I delivered it how I just delivered it. Because if you delivered it like that, she's like, holy shit, I'm, I'm here with the king right now. You know? I mean, granted, you're going to calibrate in the situation. For some girls, that may have been a little bit aggressive. For other girls, that actually wasn't aggressive enough. So you really need to calibrate with the girl you're with. You know, Tati's a little bit more, Tati was a little bit shy and a little bit insecure. She was beautiful, but she was still shy and unconfident. Because, I mean, dude, she's fucking four foot 11. 
you know? How, how confident – you're four you're foot 11, 100 pounds. You're like a fucking ant in the world. And your whole life you've just had dudes hitting on you trying to fuck you. You know, how confident – you know, and, and she, she moved here from Columbia four, three, four years before that. That's why she's like that. Pedro, I need, I need – Shoulders like yours, bro. Dude, get lean, bro. That the only reason my shoulders look like this because I'm I'm lean. This all goes back to the talk earlier. I'm working on my diet. I'm trying to get down to like an impressively lean physique. You guys should do the same. And yeah, I mean, yeah, work work out your shoulders, obviously, bro. But it it it's all in combination. So, game, fitness, health, diet, pain, <laughs> pain, pain is a part of it. Goals for 2020 pain <laughs> i'm not even joking you my boys that's on the lecture right now just got a tattoo uh saturday and i was like dude why do you want this tattoo he was like well part of part of me wants the tattoo but this is what he told me he said i just want to feel the pain <laughs> that's only what he told me and dude the, if you've ever gotten a large piece of ink done on your arm there's a subtle truth behind that statement there's a subtle truth behind that statement you want to feel the fucking pain. Why is that? Because pain ultimately results in strength. So let's just keep it moving. Otherwise, this is going to turn into a fucking 10-hour lecture. Um, I'm trying to keep this under my previous six-hour and 15-minute lecture. So, uh, <laughs> um, so kept, the, kept the relationship alive with Tati. I was still, this was summer of 2017. Intermission? No, I'm in a roll. I'm on a roll right now. If you gotta go piss, go piss or whatever you gotta do. Um, but no intermission right now. I'm gonna do intermission at the end of the lecture and then we can just talk after the recording's done. So um so keep going with Tati, seeing her once or twice a week for the next uh what did we date for like the first six months was pretty much smooth. I think after four or five five months in, we went on a vacation together. We traveled to uh to Vegas. To San, then we went over to San Diego, and then from San Diego we went. Um, where did we go from San Diego? We went from Vegas to no, we went from Vegas to L.A. to San Diego to, uh, and then we drove down the the coast of San Diego. We pretty much hit the whole West Coast. You know, um, I'm trying to find this. I was gonna show you guys a quick video of us in in uh, out there while we're out there. Let me see where it is. This is her. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So this is her. Um, we just got off the airplane, I think, or we're taking some kind of shuttle to uh, to like the next stop. This is so. This is her. Like, this is her while we're. Um, hold on. Let me put it on the back. You can see her. This is her. This is her. We're like on a train, about to go. We're going from like. We're going somewhere, but dude, she looks good. She looks really good. I'm on a fucking vacation with this girl. I'm fucking other girls at the same time. This girl's in love with me. Um, so all of this is going on. Um, what the fuck happens after that? We keep dating. Where did I fuck up? I fucked up by being a little bit too cold with her. In hindsight, I should have been... Guys, if, if you're going to be in this like open relationship with the girl... You got to kind of, how do I say this? You got to kind of balance. There's like a wave that you're riding. You're riding this wave of boyfriend and player. And you're, it's a fine line, right? And you got to literally ride the wave and calibrate to the girl the entire time. You know, if you really want to keep the girl, um, if, you, if you really want to keep the girl throughout the whole thing, you can't be too much of a boyfriend. Otherwise, she's going to start to want to push way too much towards exclusivity, and eventually she'll end things. But again, if you're too much of a player, there's not going to be enough of that connection. And ultimately, it's going to lead to a breakup because she's going to feel like she doesn't relate to you. So at some point, we broke up. But she was, it was more of like a test when we broke up. She was like, we went to New York one day, and we were coming home from New York. And on the way home, she provoked this fight. She invited me to come out. To, to meet her friends and I dismissed it, but I didn't know it was so important to her that she wanted me to see the friends. I really wish she would just communicate it to me that she wanted, that she really wanted me to see her friends, but she failed to communicate that to me. And, um, 
I didn't, I didn't know it was so important in hindsight. If I knew it was that important and she would have told me that I would have made the extra effort to go meet them. But it was the end of the night and it was the end of the evening in New York. And she was like, Oh, do you want to come out? You want to come out tonight? You want to come out tonight? My friends are out. I was like, uh, nah, Tati, I had a long day. I'm just going to stay in. And then she just started getting mad and silent. And I was like, we're driving home from New York. And I'm like, what's up? And in my mind, I know what's up, but like, she's starting to be a little childish about it. And she was like, acting weird and I just called her out and I was like hey listen I don't like the way you're acting right now if there's a problem you got to speak up about it sitting like sitting there in silence and not acting like not talking about it uh that's not okay with me and it's, it's kind of fucking childish so like what's up you know like kind of talk to me guys this is how you're gonna have to be with a girl this is how you're gonna have to be with a girl you need to be able it's not a 50 50 partnership. Like you literally are the King. She's the queen. She's below you. You need to guide her. You need to show her what's okay and how to act when she's with you. She needs to learn when she's with you. You need to fucking be able to teach her. And if you can't do that, you don't fucking deserve that girl. Okay. And if you're not at that level, then fucking study and get to that level. Okay, whatever that means. That means put in the fucking time. That means go out, get your heart broken. That means go out, make the fucking mistakes, become needy, over pursue, over escalate, under escalate, become too friendly, become too much of an asshole. Do whatever the fuck you need to do to get that experience. Okay. So, so what happened? I, I pretty much, I didn't show enough comfort to her. And eventually we're driving home and she goes, um, well, this isn't okay, blah, 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 blah. And I said, listen, like, I didn't even know that this was a problem. If, if you would have just told me that this was a problem, I, I, would have, I would have had no problem meeting your friends. However, your lack of communication, if you're going to keep being like this, I can't be with you. Because if you can't communicate with me at the end of the day, it's just not going to work. And I really like you and I want to make this work. But if you can't communicate with me or at least make an effort to, then, then this is over. She comes back with her fucking Spanish attitude and was like, well, I guess it's over then because I'm not going to change. Keep in mind, we're driving home right now. I got like 20 minute drive still. And I'm driving home right now and I'm in my mind and I'm not even responding to her, but I'm in my mind and I'm like, oh man, do I fucking break up with this girl? Do I break up with this fucking beautiful girl right now over nothing? Over like some dumb argument? I'm really trying to like keep it calm, you know, keep it calm. So I don't respond. I let three minutes goes by and I'm just like driving. I'm just like, driving along, smile on my face. A couple of minutes goes by, get myself back into a good mood. Start joking with her, get her laughing. And I say, I say look, blah, 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 blah. She goes right back into it. No, fuck that. No, fuck that. You want to do this, this, and this? It's done. It's done. And I'm driving. I'm just like, God damn it, bro. Do I really fucking end this right now? Because it's on me. It's on me at this point. She's like saying it's over. All I need to do is confirm that it's over. And she's being so out of line that I'm just like, ah, man, the only way she... It's either I cave in and accept like her frame or I end it. And in that moment, I was like, She's too out of line. I literally need to either, it's either I walk away and she comes back and apologizes or it's just, it's done, you know? And, and, I, and I tried several times to make it work. She was very stubborn about the whole fucking thing. Granted, it was my fault that it got to that point. However, once it's already at that point, this is what needed to be done. So we're almost at my house now. I'm like coming down the hill to my house. She's telling me it's over, it's over, it's over. I start laughing. She's like, what's so funny? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're right. We had a good run and I'm going to miss you. And I truly mean that. I'm going to miss you. Like, you know, fuck, we met in what? End of May. It's November now. Fuck. So we spent like six months. Like, I don't know. I'm, you know, we had a lot of memories, you know, that hike trail, all those hike trails. And like, I don't know, like, I don't know who else I'm going to eat sushi with, you know, I'm going to fucking miss you, yo, I was just laughing, because I was just thinking about a couple of good times that we had, you know, that's all, I'm going to miss you, yo, I genuinely mean that, <laughs> that's, that's what I told her, when, in a moment when she was fucking heated and screaming and, and was looking for a negative reaction out of me, that's what I was telling her, 
she starts getting soft. She starts getting soft and is like, she starts changing her demeanor a little bit. But keep in mind, at this point, I'm pretty much home. Like, I'm pulling into the driveway. I'm going up the driveway, and I'm about to go into the garage. And she's starting to soften up when I start saying all this shit. <laughs> so I pull into the garage. We, I, I pull into the garage. The garage door's still open. Her car's parked in the driveway. And I was like, okay. And I'm, I'm saying goodbye. This is our farewell. It's over. And she's a little soft now. And she's like, can I have a hug? I was like, absolutely. Absolutely. I want you to fucking miss me, mother. And this is what I'm thinking in my mind. Absolutely. We hug. I feel the fucking feelings that I don't necessarily feel with a random person that I'm hugging. It's only, it's, it's certain feelings you only feel like if you've actually connected with the girl on like, you know, you've been with this girl, you fucked this girl a lot of times that like you really connected, you know, like when you hug the girl, it's like, there's like this chemical energy release that just like, I can't describe it. But if you felt it, you felt it, you know, you hug this girl. I'm feeling this fuck. It's, it's, and we know it's goodbye too. So it's even more there. And we're moving away. We're looking at each other and we kiss and she breaks away from the kiss and just opens the door. She opens the car door and then instantly gets out the car and starts walking towards the back of the car towards leaving the garage. So I open my door and we both walk to the back of the car. And I'm waiting to see what she's going to do. So we're walking to the back of the car and she doesn't say a word and walks into the driveway to go to get into her car, trying to provoke a, a reaction of me. You know what I'm saying? Like she, we kissed, she, she, she broke away and got out the car and was like, you know, that was our farewell. And she wanted to get me to like, wait, don't go. You know what I'm saying? What do I do? <laughs> I know what beta Kyle would have did. Wait, don't go. <laughs> what do you mean? No, I'm gone. No, come back, Tati. No, I didn't mean it like that. No, Tati, what are you doing? No, I'm done. I'm done. Text her, wait, no, no, this, hold on. Can we make this work? That's what Beta Kyle would have did. At this point, I was Coach Kyle Jr. <laughs> She's walking out the garage. The second her foot touched the pavement, I pressed the closed garage button. <laughs> I did not say a word. She walked out the garage. Instantly, the garage door started closing on her. <laughs> and I began walking inside. And she then was stuck walking to her car crying. And I kid you not, I came in this door fucking laughing. I was... <laughs> I was laughing. I mean, part of me was a little sad, but part of me was fucking laughing because I was like, I think even out loud, I was like, bye, Tati. That's literally, I think, I'm pretty sure I, that's what I said because I knew that this bitch had no idea that that was coming. She thought she had that shit, and I was like, nope. So what happens? Month goes by, no contact. I never reach out. She didn't text me that night. Didn't text me for a month. Thanksgiving passes. I posted a picture on my IG after Thanksgiving. She DMs me. Hey, Kyle, saw the picture on your, on your IG. Just wanted to wish you and your family a happy Thanksgiving and tell your mom I said happy birthday. Cause she got, she got pretty close with my mom at this point. That's another thing, guys. If you really want to get the girl invested, like find as many anchors as you can. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't just me. Like she really liked my mom. She really liked my dog. She really liked my house. Like she was, she loved my bed. Like, I mean, like the more anchors you can tie to the girl, the more investment and the more attachment you can get in the girl. You know what I'm saying? So she reaches out. Uh, on the on the excuse of like, hey, wish your mom happy birthday. But actually, the reason why I'm calling is because um, uh, you still owe me five hundred dollars from our trip to for to the West Coast. She guys, by the way, she paid for the entire vacation. She booked both of our flights to San Diego. She booked our room at the Bellagio. She booked 
the bus tickets from LA to Vig to, to San Diego, the, the rental car that we drove down the coast of San Diego in, the Airbnb in San Diego, like she paid for the entire the entire vacation because she was obsessed with me and in love with me. And it wasn't a problem that we were still dating, but once we broke up and two months has gone by, suddenly it's like, oh, by the way, I'm just reaching out because, um, you know, I was going over the numbers and you actually owe me 500 bucks, which is funny because it was never discussed when we were dating, you know, as long as I was dicking her down and she was feeling great, everything was cool, but it's like, oh, we're not talking. Oh, by the way, uh, it, it was $500 that I spent. So I'm going to need that money, you know? So she reaches out saying that, um, yeah, I don't know if you want to work out like a payment plan or, or what, but, um, let me know your thoughts. Hope all is well. I'm curious how you're doing. This is all I sent to her guys. The following day I sent her a screenshot of the Venmo payment from me to her in full. I, I Venmoed her 500 bucks in full and I just sent her the screenshot and I said, I'm doing amazing. Thanks. And that was all I sent. And I didn't reach out after that. And she didn't respond. I let it sit. Month goes by. Nothing. Beginning of December now. No response. Or, or no, no contact either way. December 23rd or some shit. December 24th, she texts me. Miss you. So probably like four weeks, five weeks goes by. She texts me, miss you. I think eight days later, I sent her an emoji with my tongue out. Like winking, smiling with my tongue out. Eight days later, I responded with that. That's all I sent her. Month goes by. Mid-January, or end of January at this point. Nothing. <laughs> Beginning of February now. Keep in mind, I'm still no contact with my ex, the, the initial Colombian that went back to Chris. I have not spoken a fucking word to her this whole time, but I've, but I've put Tatiana on my IG. I'm still studying game. I'm still going out. I'm dating other women at this point. I'm closing actually pretty consistently. Once me and Tati stopped talking at, um, me and Tati stopped talking. When did we stop talking? Like, like mid-November. Dude, December, I went on a rampage, and that was when I finally started pulling, like, consistently. I think I pulled, like, five or six girls that month and closed all of them. Um, granted, they weren't the hottest girls because I didn't have, like, that much experience, but I was starting to get more experience with women. I was starting to date consistently, and I was, I was starting to close. So, so now that I wasn't talking to Tati either, I had this, I had this added um, fuel to, to keep going out. So December, bunch of closes. January comes around, more closes. And now I got my friend's wedding coming up March 3rd. And I know that my ex is going to be there. Not Tati, my, my ex, my actual ex, Melissa. I know she's going to be at the wedding. So mid, it's Valentine's Day now. And keep in mind, one year ago to this day, the previous Valentine's Day, I had been crying and I reached out to my ex telling her, I finally had this realization that I can't talk to you, blah, 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 blah. And that was when that initial pain started happening, right? So fast forward one year, she put me through that whole breakup, pain, suffering, crying 40 days in a row, Tatiana, Tatiana dating the whole time, dating this other girl that I didn't even talk about, um, Diana, and maybe like 15 pulls and closes throughout the fall and winter, studying game my ass off, finally emotionally healed, in a full year. It took a year, guys. So one year later, Kyle has, the dark night has risen. Dark night rises, right? One year later. I'm in a way better place now. Valentine's Day. Guess who reaches out? Melissa reaches out. My first ex reaches out to me and says, with a paragraph, um, hey, hope all is well. Just want to let you know I can't stop thinking about you. This is a girl I haven't talked to since fucking, this is a girl I haven't, this is the girl that shattered my heart last April. Hey, just want to let you know, can't stop thinking about you, blah, blah, blah. Um, looking forward to seeing you at your, at the, at the wedding, blah, blah, blah. 
Stotra, what's up, bro? Welcome to the welcome to the lecture. You're you're four hours late, bro. You got you got a lot of making up to do. Go back and watch the lecture from the beginning, bro. Shit's getting we're we're approaching the climax, bro. You you missed a shitload. It's gonna it's all recorded, but but when you get the chance, go back and join. Oh, you been in it? You been in? It? Okay, cool. I can't hear you, bro. Just type it. Just type it. So, um, yeah, this is really powerful. I mean, I I can't even front. Like, I, I wish every lecture would be this powerful, but it's just not, dude. This is this is one. That, this is like really powerful. This is my whole life experience, guys. So obviously, it's gonna be powerful. Um, so where are we? It's February. Melissa reaches out with this paragraph, apologizing about all this shit. Why is that? Because I've been no contact with this bitch for ten months. I ran into her one time, like in October, and I was so in a, such an amazing mood, just flirty with her, joking, sexual, no, um, no feelings, nothing like, how's Chris? Do you still think about me? Because I think about you, which, dude, she, I still thought about her sometimes. I didn't say anything about that. I just kept that light and flirty. I was like, oh, how's acupuncture going on, blah, blah, blah. Never thought you would have picked a profession majoring in penetration. Like, I don't know, like saying like sexual jokes and like stupid shit, you know, just being flirty with her. Um, <laughs> so she finally reaches out in Valentine's Day and is like, hey, just want to let you know, can't stop thinking about you. Hope all is well, blah, 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 blah. Looking forward to seeing you at the wedding. I was like, what? Yeah, you're going to see me and Tatiana. I'm going to get ready to see me with a hotter Colombian. No, I didn't. I didn't say any of that. <laughs> Actually, me and Tati are still no contact at this point. But guess who also reaches out to me on Valentine's Day, guys? Tatiana reaches out to me. The other Colombian also messages me on Valentine's Day. This is, I, you're right, dude. Jump says, or no, who said this? Brandon said, you can't make this shit up. And, and you can't make this shit up, guys. Like, it's, it, it's so beautiful to see this thing come back full 180 one full year later, like uh, to be at a complete low point and to really go through the gutter, rise up through the gutter, fully healed, better than healed, higher place, hotter women, more closes, better game. Got a raise at my job. Um, just every like working on my look at this point, guys, I think at this point I started getting my tattoos and shit too. Um, whole new place in my life. And now fast forward one year. Oh man, it was such a fucking gratifying moment when I got those two texts. Dude, I had the biggest smile on my face that night, guys. Valentine's Day, I'm alone with a huge smile on my face. <laughs> because I got, my, I got the sweet, sweet uh, revenge that I wanted or, or vengeance or justice, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, finally had that shit, right? So, Jesus. Um, so Tati reaches out. Hey, Kyle, just wanted to let you know you were right about everything. The way I acted was childish. I should have been better with my communication. And in hindsight, it was dumb to let what we had go over something so small that could have been handled. And I still want to see you. And at the end of the day, when I think about you, the only part that I remember will be the good times. It was a great message, actually. It was, it was everything I wanted to hear. It was about three months too late, bitch. But, you know, it was a great message. I wish you would have sent that November, like the day after we had the fight, you know, stubborn ass fucking Colombian. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at least she sent the message. I responded to her a week later and said, nice to hear from you. And I accept your apology. I'd love to see you as well. When are you free? That's all I said. Great message, I think. And to Melissa, I said, couldn't tell you. I don't remember what I said to Melissa. Literally, I'm not even thinking of that. That, that, that just goes to show you want to get over to go. You got to attract higher girls, higher caliber women into your life to the point where you're not even fucking thinking about it. Like, literally, I couldn't even tell you what I said to her because I was fully, fully healed in this moment one year later to the point where I was like, I mean, cool. I'll see you at the wedding. But honestly, I don't give a fuck if I see you at the wedding because I genuinely am healed and I genuinely leveled up and I genuinely don't even want to get back with you. I mean, I appreciate you reaching out, but even if you asked me to be your boyfriend right now, go fuck yourself. But we can still be friends. I'll friend zone you. And it's going to hurt for you. So, two weeks goes by, wedding comes along, 
I was part of me wanted to bring Tatiana to the wedding just to fucking shit on my ex. Probably why I like this Tory Lane. I've been listening to this Tory Lane song. I got a flex, shit on my ex. You did me wrong. You not my bitch. Um, those four lines resonate with me very well. <laughs> so <laughs> um, now I know why they resonate with me so well after telling the story. But I didn't bring Tatiana because it's just ego gratification and. At the end of the day, I don't need that. I don't need to walk up with a hot belt because my own life, dude, the way you become so confident and so humble is all of these little successes in life that nobody knows about. I mean, look, yeah, now you guys know about them because I'm on this Patreon with you. But like up until that point in my life, nobody knew about any of these successes. It was like all of this shit was just going on um, on the low. And I was just... Uh, you know, it, it's Valentine's Day. I'm alone. I wanted to like broadcast this to the world, but it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a quiet success. You know, it's a quiet success that doesn't need to be discussed. And it just makes you, makes you a little bit more humble, makes you a little bit more confident about what the fuck you're going to deal with in the, in life moving forward. And just knowing that no matter how bad the situation is, you're capable of producing, turning that around and making a way better result in the future. You know? way better result in the future, which I just proved is completely possible. You know, I went from crying every day, arguably most painful experience in my life, other than the death of my dad to you, you see where we're at at this point. Right. So get to the wedding. Mo Melissa's at the wedding. I'm, I'm feeling great vibing, hitting on game gaming, like two or three girls that I didn't even fucking know up until that point. All my homies are there that I haven't seen in a while, having an awesome time keeping it super light and casual with, with Mel. And, um, and then at some point through the way, she, she pulls me off the side. like, I want to talk to you, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I was like, cool, what's up? Pretty much she just confesses everything that I've been wanting to hear. She tells me everything. I can't stop thinking about you. I've been dreaming about you for the last six months. I don't know why I'm even still with Chris. Like, I still want you back, blah, 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 blah. Um, like, like, I just, I can't stop this and that. And I'm, I'm running like really good game on it. I'm not getting too caught up in my emotion because I'm healed at this point, you know, I'm healed at this point and I'm just being flirty with her. And my, my escalation so smooth at this point, guys, compared to where I was, <laughs> my escalation is so smooth. We start making out. She's still with Chris at this point. She, we start making out. Um, but we don't, we don't fuck. She didn't want to go that far with it, but like it got to a point where we were in, we were in the hotel lobby at like 5 a.m. and like on the couch, and I'm like kind of like fingering her through her underwear and um, just like making out and shit. Tried to get her home. She didn't want to come home. It was cool. I ended up crashing in my car for like an hour and then drove home because I was a little tipsy. So, and then two weeks later, she reached out. She wanted to be cool with me, this and that. And guys, I, I legitimately ended up just friend zoning her because, dude, I missed her a lot over that year. She's awesome. She has a part, huge part in my life, a huge part in my heart. And that's an amazing girl. And we shared five years of amazing experiences. And I want her in my life as my friend. That's, that's what I want, you know, because we can't be together. And I've accepted that. It's because of me, though. It's not because of her. It's because of me. And I've accepted that. So I friend zoned her. We didn't fuck. Actually, we did fuck. We fucked one time. But we were super drunk and it was like two months later and it wasn't like how it should have been. And actually, like, I kind of regret doing it. I wish I would have like kind of pulled back and fucked her like how I really wanted to fuck her and how she wanted it to. But whatever. Um, but we friends on each other. I'm not going to go too much more in depth with my relationship with her. I want to say focus more on myself. Um, but just know that that girl is still um, in my life today. Not so much, but... We talk on a monthly basis. She has a boyfriend right now. We, have a, we talk on a monthly basis. She knows all about my channel. I've shown her every video. I mean, I haven't talked to her in the last month or so, but last time I talked to her, the channel was at like 20K or so. So she, she already knew I was doing well. Um, but we haven't talked in a little while. And she's, you know, she's probably, you know what it is? This is how the cycle goes, guys. Like, she's really into her boyfriend right now. She'll probably reach out at a point when, when, when the relationship starts hitting a rough patch and she sees me doing good and she wants to check in. Last time I saw her, we went out for dinner for her birthday. I took her out for her birthday to get dinner. Her boyfriend knew. Cool. I'm cool with it. I wasn't even trying to hook up. I wasn't trying to fuck. We were trying to catch up. 
I was consumed with this other fucking hot girl that I, that I told you I was, I've been thinking about. Um, and I was telling her all about it. And I was like, I think this is the first girl that I've, I've like been obsessed with, like since I ever dated you. It's kind of weird. It's like weird. She's like, I've never seen you this in this much, like into a girl, blah, 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 which is probably why I lost that girl. Honestly, <laughs> you know, it that's, just goes to show you, it's like why I lost that girl. She's so consumed with it. She's like, you think she's like, put her on a pedestal? You don't deserve her. You really don't deserve her. She wants the dude that's treating her how I'm treating Tatiana. That's what it is. That's what it is, you know? But it's okay. So I learn. I check the next, next girl. Next girl I get will be hotter. Next girl I get will be hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, you know? So it's okay. It's cool. It's okay. It's totally okay. So, so she's still in my life. We don't talk that much. But I'm grateful to still have her you know, as a friend, as a distant friend, but that's how it needs to be. If you know, you guys want to be in each other's lives while she has a relationship, this and that totally. Okay. Cool with that. Um, let's get back to me. Wedding ends, wedding ends. And then, um, my friend, um, what the fuck happens after that? So this is 2000, this is like 2018 summer. I start going to the bar. I make friends with this kid. I met this kid at the bar who lives right by the bar. Made good friends with him. And we start hanging out a lot because he starts going to the bar and he lives right by the bar and he's got a huge social crew. And I start making friends with all of his friends and I start going out with them. And I start kind of like teaching them game a little bit and they see me getting results. And the kid I, I met, Joe, is getting results and everybody's just having fun. So 2018 was great. This is the year I had the most most pulls, most closes I ever had till this point. I think I fucked like, uh, I don't know, at least 30 women in 2018, at least. And that was, and that's like going out twice a night, twice a week, you know, for like, you know, I went out a hundred times probably ended up fucking 30 out of those 100. Um, you know, but granted half, maybe like a third of them, we were going to like really far places. So I wouldn't say I'm batting like 300, but like, Cause here's the thing, like, if, you know, if I go out here and I go to New York, what are the odds that I'm going to close? It's way less likely than me going down the street, you know, but, um, okay. So let's just say this way. I was starting to have a lot of sex. 2018, I was starting to have a lot of sex. First time I was closing that much in my life. My friend was closing that much. I made friends with all of his friends. One of his friends is on the lecture still. I don't know if he's still here, but I see his name on here. I doubt he's still awake. I think he has work in the morning, but says he's on the lecture. Sly, if you're still on the lecture, either type something or show your face. But I'm pretty sure he's passed out at this point because he hasn't been interacting. Um, so anyway, uh, what the fuck happens? I start going out. So 2018, my game just goes to another level. I start getting a lot of experience closing. I start getting a lot of lays. My confidence is going up. All of that's going up. Everything's fucking great, you know? Um, what happened? Oh, 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 by the way. We, I hung out with Tati a couple times. We never fucked again, but we hung out as friends a bunch. And then the vibe kind of wasn't like how it used to be. And I don't know. We fucked for a little while and then we stopped and then it's kind of fizzled out. And then she moved, she moved back to Colombia and then she went to France. She just flew home from France uh, like two days ago. And she DM me like last week and was like, I really want to see you. And I was like, I really want to see you too. Let me know when the fuck you're back in Jersey. I'm trying to see her this week. I don't know if I'm going to fuck her up. Maybe I'll keep you guys updated with that on next week's lecture. Um, but I think next, I'm trying to meet up with her this week. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, if I do post on my story, it's probably going to be with her. If I could get a good video of her, because I want to show my, my followers and shit that, you know, there's cute girls and shit. So um, there's that. What else is there? So 2018, kind of crush it. Towards the end of the year, like October, November, I get an email from Todd V, aka RSD Todd, Todd V Dating, says, um, looking for a assistant coach or coach's assistant slash intern, apply at the link down below. I apply to be Todd's assistant. He responds back and says, you have an interview set up with my wife in a week. I have a Skype phone call interview with Todd's wife or not wife, I don't think they're married, Todd's baby mama, aka girlfriend, I don't know what the exact terms are, but have the interview with her, everything goes good, 
have the second interview with Todd. I was actually a little nervous to go on the interview with Todd. I don't know why, but I was, <laughs> I don't know why, but I was, I was nervous to go on the interview with Todd. Everything went well. He hired me as the intern slash coach's assistant. I then started filming his assistant, who was a guy named Adam. And Adam was living like 40 minutes from me. I started filming him. We went out like three or four times. I filmed him, filmed him three or four times over the course of several months. Um, he's got a good game. He's very similar to me, like build and tats and demeanor. Um, he's actually one year younger than me. and. I think he's cool. He's a cool ass dude. If I was out with him, he kind of looks like my, he would be my brother or cousin or like a close friend of mine. If you, if you saw him and you saw me and him talking, you would be like, okay, these guys are boys, obviously, you know, um, he's cool. And, but the whole time I was filming him, I was thinking like, dude, I could do this. There's no reason why I couldn't be the one getting filmed right now as well. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying he was better than me or I was better than him. All I remember is I was filming him and thinking I could be doing this as well. So two months goes by of that. And then I get a call from Todd saying, um, Hey man, I had a talk with my staff and we saw that the, so, so by the way, guys, I, six months before Todd hired me, I did a testimonial for another dating coach. He asked he's a friend of mine. He asked me to do a fake testimonial for his website, which I did. Um, he did, he, I, I get, did a fake testimony saying this guy, Connell transformed my life. And that, you know, after working with Connell, I got three dates in three days and now my whole life has changed. And Todd told me, if you're going to become a coach for my channel, you can't have that testimonial up because Connell stole a bunch of clients from Todd. I met Connell while I was working on Todd's program. Connell was like a journalist that was also taking the program with Todd. I made friends with him because he was giving me a lot of advice and he was pretty advanced. And after the course was over, he asked me to do the fake testimonial. He helped me out a lot. So I did it. Now Todd's telling me, okay, if you're going to be a coach, that testimonial needs to come down. I said, cool, dude, let me know. And you know, it'll come down. That's not a problem. Two months goes by. Todd calls me up and he's like, Hey, we need to talk. I was like, cool. I was excited as fuck. I thought he was about to ask me to, if I wanted to come on to the next immersion program in San Diego. I was like, fuck yes. I can't wait. Like, I hope, uh, I hope he's asking me to, to, if I could come on to the next immersion, you know, in San Diego and hopefully it's paid or I don't know, even if it's not paid, fuck it, I'm in there, you know? So I get, finally get him on the phone and he's like, Hey man, I talked to my staff about everything that's going on and everybody agrees that it's in my best interest in terms of, you know, like just due to your relationship with Connell and the fact that you guys are so close and, you know, my current lawsuit going on with RSD, I don't want you to take this personal, but I'm going to have to let you go. And it's not because you're not good. It's not because anything like that. It's because I need to protect myself and my own brand. And I don't like Connell. And the fact that you're friends with him is kind of concerning to me. So don't take this personal, but I, before we go any further, I can't have you working for me. So I was devastated. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, Todd, I don't even talk to this guy. Let's just take down the testimonial. Like, like, dude, like, let me get on the fucking, don't do this, you know? Um, but he was like, I, I wasn't begging him. I was just like, it is what it is. I think it's kind of, I, I was kind of humble. I was like, look, man, I think it's kind of a misunderstanding. And I think you're overestimating the relationship I have with this guy. And honestly, the testimonial could be taken down, but at the end of the day, I got to respect your decision. I got to respect your decision, but, um, it's all good, brother. I'm not mad at you. I get that, you know, you're going through this lawsuit with RSD and I, I get you got to protect your brand. So I respect that decision. I don't agree with it, but I respect it. And, you know, you've done a lot for me without you. I, I wouldn't have gotten this far in game. So I, you know, I can't even complain. Thank you for bringing me this far. I was pretty humble with that. I'm pretty sure. And he was humble as well and was like, you know, you're great. I wouldn't have even hired you to begin with if I didn't see potential in you. And if you're ever interested in, in you know, doing more coaching with us, I'd be glad to give you a hefty, hefty discount. Or if you're ever in the area, let us know. We could link up, blah, 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 blah. That was the last time I talked to Todd. That was February of this year, 2019. 
So now I was even more motivated, right? So now I'm studying my, now I'm really on my shit. I'm going out a lot. April 27th, I think it was my birthday. And I go out to film my first infield, which is actually the one day game interaction that's still on my YouTube. I think it's how to get a girl's number. I'm wearing the fucking red flannel. Uh, that was on my birthday of this year. It was April 27th. Did that interaction. We got the whole thing on film. Nailed it. Oh, actually, before that one, the, the day before that, we had a great infield, but the cameraman didn't get the shot. It wasn't recording or some shit. I don't know what happened, but he didn't get the shot. And I was pissed. Next day we go out. I get the better interaction. Launch the channel. Um, and then proceed to go out over the course of the summer and start filming. We didn't even film that much, guys. Every, every infield you've ever seen from me, it was done. like I, I think we filmed infield like eight different times, day game, night game combined eight times you know i built the whole channel off of like one week of recording honestly so um but i spread it out was putting all of it out and then like through the f summer it was, the channel was building slow i think we got up to like 300 subscribers and then this like thing happened on youtube where this documentary was released exposing pickup artists and because of that everybody took down their infield like todd took down all of his infield rsd took down all of his all of their infield like RSD is not even called RSD anymore. Like Tyler's name on YouTube is just, it used to be RSD Tyler. It's now just Tyler. RSD Max is now Max Tornow. And RSD Luke is now like Luke Social or whatever the fuck it is. And Maze is, I, like the RSD is like non-existent anymore. I don't know what the fuck is up with them, but everybody took their infield down. I even took all my infield down because I was like, no, oh, man, I'm about to hit a thousand subscribers. I don't want to lose what I just worked for over the last six months. But I thought about it over the weekend and I was like, fuck this, bro. I put my infield back up. I put up like the, the best like six videos and I took down um, a sh oh, mainly, I, put, I took down all my day game and I took down like my instant dates and all the videos that you see on Patreon. I took them all down and I left up like four or five videos on, on my YouTube. And then, um, I met this girl. I told you I got really into her. I started over pursuing her. I was still going out and gaming, you know what I'm saying? I, and I did fuck this girl, but I learned a lot through all of that. And then we, when we stopped talking, the channel fucking starts taking off. Two, or, two of my videos start going viral like overnight. And I woke up the next day up. I gained 4,000 subscribers in 24 hours. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? You know, what the fuck is happening? And then it went from like, it, no, the first day was two. I went, so I'm at 1,000. The next day I gained 2,000. So I was up to 3,000. The next day I gained 4,000. So I was up to 7,000. Next day I hit 10K. And then the next day I was at like 12 or 13K. And then it slowly started trickling down to like 2,000 a day, 1,000 a day. But I still cruised up to like 20K in two weeks. Dropped the next video. That brought me up to like 30K drop the next video and then that cruised me to 50k uh and that so this is like november now of this year um in terms of game throughout all of this i learned a lot about my own game through recording myself and watching and editing all my video and breaking down my channel and learning how to talk into the camera really helped me in my in-person interactions guys my communication throughout this lecture my storytelling my expressiveness, my tonality, the way I get excited, the way I calm down, the way it gets really sentimental, the way people are like, I'm about to shed a tear, the way you guys get really excited in these good moments. It's all storytelling. It's all, it's all communication. My communication has gotten so strong over this last year, right? It's like every year, a different skill set is building. 2015, I couldn't even fucking open, right? I learned how to open. Then I really struggled with attraction and I just started focusing all on attraction. I eventually got really good at attraction. And then eventually I learned how to build that comfort. And I, I started learning how to create connections and, start, and started to pull. And at the same time, I was dealing with the breakup and understanding masculine, feminine, long-term seduction, long-term attraction, how to, how to create a lasting attraction with a girl and how to avoid over-pursuing and keeping the girl with you, you know? And then 2018, um, it was more learning how to get into open, getting into a relationship on your own terms and 
not making it a 50 50 but making it a relationship that you want and either the girl complies or she could go the fuck somewhere else you know what i'm saying um and so i started getting women while i was still going out and, and and not lying about any of it because i had been in that position before guys i had been in that position of monogamous relationships and knowing what the fuck that feels like and and resentment and desire to be with other women and all of this shit, you know? So that was like 2018 and now 2019 is like, I'm starting to learn about branding, building myself, um, creating, a, a, creating my own brand, you know? Overcoming, getting fired from a company that I saw a big future in and really starting my own lane and exploding that, exploding that while my game's still going up. But I'd say this year, it was really just, it wasn't so much game as well this year. It was more communication and branding and um self-discipline and yeah i guess you could say like building an empire i guess that's what it would be called i mean is this an empire no but i'm building a fucking empire if you look at it i mean dude like sixty thousand people are subscribed to me that's a fucking army man i could fill up a, a massive stadium i was just talking to my boy about this i was like dude imagine like giant stadium sold out all of those people i could stand in the middle of giant stadium all of those people are following me now. You know what I'm saying? That's a fucking, I mean, it's not an empire, but it, 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 we're, we're on our way to an empire. You know what I'm saying? So that was this year. How did my, Rawad asks, what helped me the most to improve my communication? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a couple different things. It, it, it happened over the course of years because communication is a lot of different things. Communication was eye contact. In the beginning of the lecture, I was explaining where I struggled with eye contact, right? Um, and, and I explained how I got better with that over the years, my eye contact, do my eye contacts. It's effortless at this point. It's been effortless. Uh, once the eye contact got good, it was more, it's like every aspect slowly starts leveling up. You got to learn how to be more animated in your, your whole face is anime. Go back and watch this lecture, watch the most powerful parts of this lecture, but don't listen to the story behind the don't listen to the words behind the story. Like go back and watch it from a perspective of I'm watching this story and I'm trying to figure out why this hits so hard. And part of it is the truth behind it. But if it was in a book and you guys were reading it, it wouldn't hit as hard. So I want you guys to go back and focus on why it's hitting so hard. It's the words. It's the, it's the delivery, the way the tonality is bent the way my words pitch at certain points the way i fucking do this with my hands in a painful point in the situation and my face crimples up at the same time and my voice sounds like i'm getting stabbed i'm getting stabbed and my body language shows equivalent to some dude that's laying on the ground bleeding that's why it's so strong right so how do you get it better? You analyze this shit and then you watch yourself and you incorporate all this. I mean, guys, my, my communication is always this strong. If you watch the first hour of this lecture, it's not how it is now. Like, like I, the lecture has been going like this. I mean, it, it's not going to keep going. Yet. I feel like it's, it's probably already peaked, you know, probably around hour four was like the strongest, you know, cause like it can only get so good. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I drank, I drank two glasses of wine too, just to like really help bring it out even more. But as I get in that social flow, the expressiveness comes out even more and more and more. And now this is how, this is what it's like when I'm interacting with a girl in the bar, when I'm in state, like that, it's almost why I prefer the Q and A at the end of the lecture. Because if you're like, Oh, what do I say to the girl? Dude, I, I started the lecture, like fucking hung over out of it and i'm like oh um, shit how would i talk to the girl right now and, and you're gonna listen to how i would talk to the girl when i'm out of state but now right now i'm completely in state so the answer i would give you is so much it's, it's gonna be so much more powerful which is the same reason like an hour ago when uh yeah like one hour ago when i told you how to have the talk with with the girl when she was like you know how to have an open relationship type of frame that's why it hit really strong in that moment. Cause I'm like four hours in, I'm in a social flow. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not drunk. I'm like barely even tipsy, a little bit of alcohol, but the storytelling is strengthening 
because I'm building my social flow and my social momentum. This is why you got to go out and keep having all these interactions to build it up throughout the night. You know, at the beginning of this lecture, I was not where I am right now. But now, guys, I'm like fucking, it's just, it's flowing out. It's just, it's flowing out, you know? Um, so I, pr I think that pretty much brings it up to right now. Closing thoughts on everything is, doesn't matter where the fuck you're at socially. Doesn't matter how old you are. I don't care if you're older than me. I don't care what the fuck you've gone through. You are capable and you are totally in control of your future. You know what I'm saying, guys? Like what you, it goes back to the micro decisions rant that I went on earlier. You are the sum of the micro decisions you choose to do throughout your day-to-day -day basis. The reason I am where I am is because I made to do certain decisions. Anybody on this lecture could be in the same position had they, granted there's different circumstances, everybody is in a slightly different situation. However, you can control your destiny. Whatever the fuck you want to do in life, you can do it. Don't let anybody else tell you what the fuck to do. And that doesn't mean, I don't mean that like walk in tomorrow and curse out your boss and leave, but take a smart approach to it. Guys, I was going to school, I was working a delivery job, and I was studying game. I was antisocial. I had a girlfriend at the time. I was thinking about marrying, but I was still studying game. Okay, so if I could do that, I could lose weight, transform my look, do everything I needed to do to get to this point. Um, there's no reason why you guys can't do the same or even less. Like, I don't even, you guys don't need to take it to the extent that I did it, you know? But if, I mean, if you wanted to, you absolutely could. Or you could do this with whatever lane you want to do it with. If I could make a living off of t teaching pickup, whatever you're passionate about, I don't care how stupid it is. I don't care if it's like playing checkers. Like, you can make a living off of it. There's a, there, chances are if you're passionate about it there are other people that are passionate about it and all you need to do is really just put the time into that thing master that thing and then get your communication on point which it will be if you're gaming enough get your communication half of its communication and the other half of it is really just knowing the theory like and and then branding and and finding the lane for it so um yeah, dude, that, that's how I went from shy, nerd, beta male Kyle to Coach Kyle. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this far. And until next time, <laughs> Coach Kyle, sign it out. Peace. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And quick announcement, by the way, I just released my brand new 12-week mentorship program. So for anybody that's interested in leveling up and achieving their goals with women and dating, click the link in the description, fill out the application, and we'll be reaching out to you to discuss further details. All right, I'll talk to you soon.